Good morning. The meeting of the Committee on Transportation of the Commission on Appointments in the first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby resumed. Under consideration of this committee is the continuation of the deliberation on the ad interim appointment of Mr. Jaime Jimenez Bautista as Secretary of the Department of uh, Tourism. May we invite Secretary Bautista to please uh, take your seat in front. The appointee is reminded that he is under the, his previous oath. May we recognize our assistant majority floor leader to report on the parliamentary. I'm oh, sorry, transportation. Sorry. May I, st I stand corrected. Department of Transportation. May we recognize the assistant majority floor leader to report on the parliamentary status. Thank you, Madam Chair. Meeting number one of the Committee on Transportation was called to order on December 7, 2022. During the said committee deliberation, Senator Alan Peter Cayetano interpolated a point on issues concerning number one, urban mobility, number two, master plan for railways, uh, aviation, maritime, and for the land sector, number three, fuel subsidy to public utility vehicle drivers and its distribution, number four, updates on subways and railways, Number five, the secretary's holding office at CAAP. And number six, the informal advisors of the appointee as secretary of the Department okay. of Transportation. Yes. Senator Grace Paul likewise interpolated on the issue concerning the non-acceptance of credit cards or debit cards by the airport concessionaires causing inconvenience to tourists. And number, number two, the long lines in the immigration counters. The Senate President's chairperson likewise raised his concerns on the non-payment of salaries of some airport security personnel, or OTS. Senator Cayetano manifested that he still has a couple of questions to the appointee. Consequently, the majority leader, floor leader moved that for the lack of material time, the consideration of the deber deliberation of the ad interim appointment of Mr. Jaime Jimenez Bautista as the part Secretary of the Department of Transportation be suspended. Hearing the objection to the motion of the majority leader, the chair of the committee suspended the meeting and resumed today. That is the parliamentary status, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Should the appointee wish to reply further on the issues previously raised upon, you may do so. Secretary, may gusto po kayo yung idagdag? Good morning, Your Honor. Uh... On uh, the issue po of uh, the uh, payment of uh, the fuel subsidy to uh, the tricycle drivers, mm -hmm. no? we have uh, already uh, coordinated with the uh, department, uh, with the local government units. No? Uh, I have uh, instructed uh, LTFRB and the regional directors to work closely with the LGUs. No? And uh, we are expecting po that uh, we will be able to pay around uh, 60% uh, by uh, end of the year, and uh, we will uh, endeavor to complete po the full payment by uh, middle of uh, January 2023. No? Secretary, when you assumed the office, uh, have you had the chance to uh, continue the gasoline subsidy of our tricycle drivers uh, in the past few months that you've assumed the office? Uh, Your Honor, uh, when I assumed office, po, uh, we started uh, paying uh, the fuel subsidy of the tricycle drivers. Po, and uh, in the first uh, few uh, weeks that we implemented this, we were able to pay po around uh, 6,000 of them. No? But uh, nagkaroon po kami ng konting problema in terms of getting more information. No? But uh, as of today, po, uh, we have paid more than 20,000 of them. No? And uh, as I have mentioned earlier, we will be able to complete payment uh, of uh, 600,000 tricycle drivers by January 15 of 2023. Sana po mapadali na po ito. Sa amin lang po sa lunsod ng Bacor, eh, umaabot na po kami sa 5,000. Kung 20,000 lang po yan nationwide, medyo maliit na porsyento kung tutuos yan at kung ikukumpara. 
Uh, good luck, Mr. Secretary, on the 600,000 uh, to the tricycle, the tricycle drivers that we have to give uh, gasoline subsidy to. Okay. Uh, first, before we continue with our line of questioning, um, we would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of our chairman, uh, the House Contingent Chairman, uh, Vice Chair of the Commission on Appointments, uh, uh, Congressman Ramon Guico. Okay. So... Um, we may now proceed with the questions and inquiries for the members from the members of the committee. Uh, since uh, Senator Alan Peter is not yet here, I was advised by uh, uh, our secretary that uh, we will proceed first with the questioning of our uh, assistant, Majority Floor Leader, uh, Senator uh, J.V. Ejercito. Is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with regards to the concerns of Senator Grace Po, no, yung pong inconvenience, uh, yesterday uh, she brought it up in a privileged speech. I um, po yung sa airport. If I may add to the to the list, yung pong mga dapat gawin, kasi we are, ano eh, I hope you understand, Mr. Secretary, we're trying hard to attract tourism because that's a, that's a, probably a low-hanging fruit that will really help our economy. But if it's inconvenient for them, you know, for the fact that the airport is the first and last impression of um, to, of tourists, no, of the country. So, siguro number one na lang po yung pong um, I hope you can consider yung pong uh, I know it's yung, yung yung boots that before the immigration manned by coast guards for the health. Yung po no, during the pandemic, but I think that things are already easing up. Um, it doesn't, ano eh, it it doesn't give a good impression. Kasi you see full um nakaba ano sila uh, fatigues no parang military ang itsura and when you're in a foreigner going there before the immigration yung one health pass it doesn't paint a good picture parang nakaka intimidate so i think that should be um, reconsidered and it is uh, an added inconvenience uh, I, I would think that uh, galing po kami ng ano, parliamentary visit na si Nancy with the uh, SP recently in France ni hindi kami hininga na ng mga documents no? not even the just I think the VAX health card lang yung VAX, VAX card lang will suffice already no? but yun lang po I think um, I think we need band aid solutions we know for a fact that um, yung airport natin is already over hindi lang over 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 its capacity no, um, ang tanong ko lang siguro, Sek, uh, yung pong ano natin, yung airport, uh, yung capacity na iya. So, it's one and a half runway lang tayo. Hindi naman natin masasabing to because it's uh, intersecting. Uh, how many aircraft landings and uh, takeoffs do we have um, for, the journey, for, for, for the day? Ilan ba talaga yung ideal city lang ng iya? And yung actual, ilan po ang uh, ating natatanggap? Uh, through the chair po, uh, uh, Mr. Senator, ang capacity po ng ating airport ay 40 to 44 movements per hour po. No? Uh, and uh, uh, ngayon po ay uh, yan ang ating uh, na produce na mga flights po, no? 40 to 44, no? Although uh, ang capacity po talaga ng uh, airport po natin ay up to 250,000 uh, flights per uh, per year no and uh, based nga po dun sa report ni Senator Po the other day uh, inaabot po ng 277 flights na po per annum uh, in 2019 no and uh, sumusobra na po dun sa talagang uh, rated capacity ng airport no Kaya naman po ang uh, management po ng uh, ating airport uh, working closely with all the stakeholders no uh, working closely po with the airlines with uh, the catering companies with the ground handling companies maintenance companies no para po ma-maximize po natin tong uh, capacity ng airport and ma-accommodate po natin yung uh, uh, more than uh, 40 million passengers po na na accommodate natin nung 2019 no sa ngayon po uh, nag-average na po tayo ng 100,000 uh, passengers a day no although nung 2019 po inabot po yan ng 116,000 uh, passengers per day no 
Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary, because I know for a fact that uh, you mentioned earlier that we already have a master plan. Of course, there is the Bulacan Airport, yung pong new, new Manila International Airport, but that will take a while. No? Uh, medyo matagal pa yun. But I think we need bad aid, uh, bad aid solutions muna tayo. No? Ang, ang problema po dito, uh, Madam Chair, is that... Um, it 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 takes longer sometimes yung pong uh, yung flight from Baba for example to Davao is one and a half hours pero minsan yung pag-iikot ng eroplano because uh, of the congestion it minsan nagiging two, 2 hours or 2 and a half pa no um it's uh, i think something has to be done with that no uh, ang napab because during the pandemic or before the pandemic, uh, Mr. Secretary, the Clark, new Clark International Airport was already being used. Probably you can consider po this one. Um, kaya lang nung pandemic, alam naman natin, uh, bumaba ang traffic, no? yung pong passengers. So lumipat po muli yung mga airlines from new Clark International Airport, Manila. Tapos ngayon, ayaw na po nilang bumalik. I think you came from the airline industry. I uh, we cannot, ano, we cannot allow na iya already na it's already over congested. Na ikot ikot yung mga aeroplano, no? we're wasting time, we're wasting fuel. I think you have to uh, put your foot down and uh, tell the airlines to resume their Clark operations. Kailangan siguro ngayon habang inaantay natin yung new. Manila International Airport in Bulacan, we have to make use of Clark. Sayang naman po yun. That's a 12 billion peso facility, uh, Madam Chair. It's a beautiful airport para rin pong Cebu. No? So, I think people from Valenzuela, Caloocan, north of Luzon, uh, north of Manila, it will be easier for them to go to Clark than go to Naiya. And that will also decongest the Naiya. No? Uh, Terminals, kasi it's over, over talaga yung capacity. Probably, Mr. Sek, uh, I don't know what uh, what do you think if you can, uh, because it's a inconvenience of the passengers and uh, everybody, and lalo na po yung sa tourism industry natin. No? Uh, that's my concern because we can, hindi na uulit yan, hindi na babalik sa atin yan, Madam Chair, ang mga tourists. If uh, the first and last impression that is our airport is really not so good experience. So yun po, Mr. Secretary, baka lang po, as, as we wait for the modern railways, the modern airports um, to be completed, probably you can make, consider using Clark again. Mahati po yun, no? Uh, probably some flights, kasi nga, sobra-sobra na po yung the runways can only take so much. So, air, Naia airports can only take so much. Probably, kung ayaw po nila, eh, pa, kailangan natin obligahin. Kailangan po natin. What do you think, Mr. Secretary? Uh, through the chair po, uh, tama po kayo, Senator uh, JB. No? Uh, dapat po yung mga airlines natin, uh, mga local airlines, mag-operate na rin po sa Clark. No? Because uh, before the, the pandemic, po, there we have many flights out of Clark already. No? But uh, sabi nyo nga, because of the pandemic, kumonti ang pasahero. No? So instead of flying to Clark, uh, they... Uh, concentrated on flying to Manila no but since uh, bumabalik na po yung maraming flight no uh, we have already requested uh, Philippine Airlines uh, Cebu Pacific and Air Asia to start uh, flying to Clark no uh, even po yung mga foreign airlines no uh, in fact i already met with uh, many foreign airlines who are asking for more flights in Manila no? i told them that uh, we will give them uh, even unlimited uh, flights to Clark no para naman po magamit natin yung napakagandang uh, terminal ng uh, Clark Airport no uh, thank you for that uh, Mr. Secretary kasi saya po Madam Chair you have um, the new Clark International Terminal building from 2 million passenger capacity annual ngayon po it's uh, kaya po no 9 to 10 million if even 12 million a year so kung mababawas natin Yung 10 million na yan, maililipat natin sa Clark, we can decongest Metro Manila. No? Kasi it's really bad na ho, Mr. Secretary. No? I, uh, I think the experience namin nila, Senate President Mix and I, uh, before we were able to park, dating namin from the official trip, it, take about, it took about two hours. Well, nagkaroon ng bagyo nun. 
Pero ganun kasama na, ganun na karami ang uh, flights. So I hope you put your foot down. Hindi tayo pwedeng diktahan ng mga airlines. No? I think this is for the good of everybody. Uh, Mr. Secretary, kaya niyo naman yan. Kaya, dahil kayo po ay galing sa airline industry. And I think the traffic is already normalizing. If you can see yung pinakita po ni Center Grace po sa presentation, para hong langgam na po ang naiya uh, one, naiya two and three. No? Pag, grabe po yung ano. Uh, so I hope that uh, you can already obligate them. No, kayo pong secretary, I think kaya nyo po yan. That uh, for the good of the riding public, no, I know that we still have to wait for the modern transportation terminals. No, yung pong na new na new Metro Manila International Airport. Bulakan, but I think for the meantime, we can already make use of Clark. Sabi mo yung Cebu, resume operations mga international, pwede nyo na i-diretso po ron. Siguro isa pang idagdag namin sa listahan ko, Madam Chair, last po yung yung pong seamless transfer from the EO1, 2, and 3, and 4 kasi pag meron hong connecting flight, kawawa po yung mga passengers, especially foreigners. They don't have, wala tayo, baka pwede nyo pong i-diretso. Uh, take note that there's no shuttle services that uh, that would service passengers. You may mga transfer flights from Naiya 1, 2, 3, and 4 po. Mr. Secretary. Uh, thank you po, uh, Senator, uh, through the chair. Ngayon po, there is an existing uh, loop po. Merong, meron pong umiikot na mga bus na doon. No? Ang dadagdagan na lang po namin ng uh, additional bus po para mag maging convenient para sa ating mga transferring uh, or uh, passengers na lumilipat po sa ibang ibang terminals po. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. And li likewise, last um, hearing, you mentioned of the master plan and I'm very happy with that. Uh, Madam Chair, tanong ko lang kay Sek, what do you think is really, what really went wrong in our transportation system in infrastructure development? Why did we fall back? Bakit tayo na pag-iwanan? ng ating ibang mga bansa. Do you think that yung ating pong wala tayong long-term planning, parang ang mga administrasyon concerned for the six-year terms, concerned for the legacy that would le be left behind? And from what I know, Mr. Secretary, planning for transportation and big ticket items takes about 30, 50, even 100 years of planning. Tama ho, di ba? So, In line with that, Mr. Secretary, I, uh, I filed a comprehensive master plan for infrastructure development in the Senate. And I hope uh, uh, gusto ko na makuha ang inyo pong uh, uh, take dito that um, whoever sits as President, Madam Chair, kahit sino po ang President ng umupo, our infrastructure development, our transport modernization, dapat ho may blueprint, may master plan tayong sinusunod for the next 30, 50, even 100 years. So... I hope, ano po ang take nyo? Uh, would you think, uh, would you support this? And I hope that you can endorse this to the palace to make it a priority measure because we really have to do something about our infrastructure development. Marami tayong iyahabol. I, I would say we are 30 to 40, probably 20, 30 years behind our SEA neighbors. Mr. Secretary. <laughs> Through the chair, no? tama po kayo, Senator, no? na kailangan po talagang magkaroon ng uh, long-term planning. No? Other countries po, uh, talagang uh, they plan up to 50 years. No? Uh, yun pong Bangkok Airport na, na nag-operate po a few years ago, it took uh, Thailand uh, 50 years po to, to plan for that airport. No? And uh, ngayon po, nag, uh, nagpaplano na rin sila ng additional airport dahil talaga naman pong lumalaki yung, uh, yung uh, demand for travel. No? So dito po sa ating bansa, kailangan po talagang iplano natin lahat ng mga infrastructure projects natin for airport, for railway, for ports, no? and uh, for roads and bridges po. So tama po, dapat magkaroon ng uh, long-term plan. Mr. Secretary, would you ano, be willing to... Tell the, the president to, uh, to include the comprehensive master plan for infrastructure development and transport modernization bill in our priority measure. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, we will uh, tell po the president that we need to really uh, do uh, long-term planning for all the infrastructure projects. No? Yung building na lang po, Madam Chair, last, no? uh, you know how hard I really fought for the restoration 
of the budget for the railway system and the other infrastructure development no medyo nakat kasi siya because of the ang issue kasi of course this has been always been the issue during budget hearings yung absorptive capacity no um you are always given the budget pero hindi spending but i know that this time around the north south commuter line the metro manila subway system are full blast already so 75 billion po yung uh, that was in the debt that will be used for um for the road acquisition um and other uh, road right of way yung uh, pag transfer ng utilities and others that's the, the that's where the budget will go yung pong jica and adb yung pong sa loan side will be used for the mechanical for the civil works and uh, sa planning so mr secretary just ang ano ko lang siguro uh, siguro for andito lang kasama natin sa house I fought for that because we really need it already for the convenience and for the stimulation of economic growth in the, especially in Northern Luzon and Luzon area. So, ano ko lang po, can you do it? Yung pong ma-restore, although it's in the unprogrammed fund, kaya naman po bang talaga i-full blast natin our North South Commuter Line and Metro Malaya Subway system? Through the chair, uh Kinausap na po namin yung ating mga major uh, contractors po no na kailangan uh, tapusin natin lahat itong mga projects natin on time no and uh, they will support po and uh, hopefully nga uh, makuha natin yung tamang budget para mabayaran natin yung mga requirements natin for uh, the right of way no and for the taxes po kasi uh, yung mga projects natin will be subjected to VAT no which uh, we need to pay to the BIR no but uh, just the same po, uh, we'll see to it na mabayaran po namin yung mga kailangang bayaran, especially dun sa mga right of way para hindi po madelay yung ating uh, MMSP at ang NSCR projects. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, because uh, any delay would cost, we will be um, shouldering the financial charges because these are loan. Kailangan tuloy-tuloy po yun. Kaya nga... Pinaglama namin sa Senado, I'd like to thank my colleagues no, for uh, supporting that the budget for uh, the drills, dahil full blast na po tayo, ay uh, maibalik. Kaya po, yun lang po siguro ang ko sa inyo, Mr. Secretary, make sure that there are no delays, that yung pong budget na makukuha ninyo, dapat tuloy-tuloy po ang road right of your accession, your relocation and everything para po tuloy-tuloy yung projects. Malami po may tutuloy, Madam Chair. Yung inconvenience, yung paggamit ng New Clark International Airport, lahat po. No? Uh, sa lalong madaling panahon, marami pong problema masod. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Jay. We would like to acknowledge the presence of our Representative Johnny T. Pimentel and our uh, uh, representative from uh, Bicol, our majority floor, Representative uh, El Rey Villafuerte. And also online, we have Representative uh, Biron. Uh, next in line to ask questions uh, online is uh, Senator Christopher Bongo. Senator, you're recognized. Uh, good day, Madam Chair, uh, distinguished colleagues, and everyone in attendance would like to convey my uh, support for the ad interim appointment of Secretary Jaime Bautista as Secretary of the Department of Transportation. Madam Chair, our appointee here with us is not a newcomer in the transportation industry. Secretary Bautista has held various uh, executive positions in, uh, uh, in, in our uh, uh, country because of his uh, exceptional uh, leadership. He was uh, largely credited for his significant contributions, which have help improve its uh, services in terms of quality and overall standard. Uh, the transportation sector plays a crucial role in economic development through a dependable and coordinated uh, network of transportation systems, uh, which uh, enables safe and efficient movement of people and goods. It is vital that this post be headed by a highly uh, experienced and uh, technical individual like Secretary uh, Bautista. Madam Chair, as we are all aware, well aware, the DOTR has been uh, plagued with uh, a myr uh, myriad of problems uh, in the past. Uh, we have come to experience uh, hellish traffic jams along major thoroughfares, the absence of a reliable mass uh, transport, uh, transit system, uh, and many others. Because of this uh, quality, quality time, 
with our family and loved ones is being sacrificed and taken away as a result of this agonizing situation. We cannot deny the plight of our commuting public and they deserve uh, better. Kaya naman, the Duterte administration prioritized fixing the long-standing uh, predicament we are uh, faced with and all of this uh, prompted the beginning of the country's golden age of uh, infrastructure. Uh, to date, we have been able to reap the seeds uh, we planted in the railway sector, ito pong north-south uh, commuter railway scene, to become the backbone of our uh, Luzon mass transport system, which will be integrated to LRT1, LRT2, and uh, MRT3. The Metro Manila subway, recently lang po, I have witnessed the lowering of the uh, tunnel boring machine of the country's first ever Metro Manila subway project. Personal po po itong nasaksihan. Along with the president, uh, for, along with the former president uh, Rodrigo Duterte, also the construction of LRT One Cavite Extension and the Unified Grand Central Station, all of this will surely be beneficial to our fellow countrymen, especially in bringing the gaps in the transport sector and will naturally increase uh, connectivity. We also uh, made sure to rehabilitate MRT MRT Three to ensure. Uh, shorter waiting time and consider the convenience of its uh, passengers. 233 airport development projects and 484 seaport development projects all aim at uh, making the lives of the Filipino people more comfortable uh, uh, have uh, been uh, completed. Kaya naman, Mr. Secretary, I appeal to you to capitalize uh, on the gains of the Build, Build, Build program of the previous administration as this can also be uh, used to sustain and to complement the Build Better More program of President uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. to ensure that no one will be left behind in the road uh, towards uh, recovery. Huwag niyo rin po sana pabayaan ng implementasyon po ng uh, Mindanao Railway Program para sa mga kababayan natin sa uh, Mindanao. At uh, unahin po natin, uh, Mr. Secretary, ang kapakanan ng mga mahirap, yung mga... Uh, kababayan nating uh, mga commuters na araw-araw po na uh, uh, pupunta sa trabaho, huwag natin silang uh, pabayaan. Yung mga helpless, yung mga hopeless nating kababayan. Secretary Bautista, you have my uh, uh, full trust and confidence. Maraming salamat po sa iyong servisyo sa ating mga kababayan. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Senator Bongo. Uh, would you like to respond uh, to the statement of uh, Senator Bongo, Mr. Secretary? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, unang una po, nagpapasalamat po ako kay uh, Senator Bongo for uh, the support. No, uh, From the very start po that uh, I took the position of uh, Secretary of Transportation, I already issued a statement that uh, we will continue uh, all the projects that uh, the previous administration has started. No? Napakaganda po nung mga sinimulan ng uh, Duterte administration at kailangan po nating tapusin ito no? para po sa kapakanan ng ating mga mananakay. No? Yung pong itong uh, NSCR po, itong MMSP, yung uh, extension ng uh, LRT1, uh, MRT7, Ito po ay sinimulan ng uh, previous administration no? and kailangan po talaga nating tapusin ito, tapusin ng, uh, uh, at magawa po sa tamang panahon no? para mapakinabangan po kaagad ng ating mga mananakay. No? Tama rin po yung sabi ni uh, Senator Bongo na tulungan natin lalong-lalo na po yung mga mahihirap no? na kailangan... Uh, uh, sumakay sa ating mga pampublikong transportasyon no kasi po uh, ito po ang uh, kanilang paraan para uh, makapunta po sa kanilang mga opisina sa kanilang mga trabaho no and uh, para masuportahan naman po yung kanilang mga pamilya so nagpapasalamat po kami sa previous administration no ako po namin natatapusin namin ito uh, and gagawin namin ang lahat ng aming magagawa para uh, mapakinabangan kaagad ng publiko po itong mga sinimulan ng previous administration. Salamat po. Maraming salamat, Mr. Secretary. We'd like to recognize, to ask uh, a few questions, our Vice Chairperson, uh, Representative Ramon Guico. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Secretary, this is uh, with regards to the province of Pangasinan. Alam niyo po, uh, 
sa ng uh, Alaminos, uh, you have already uh, the land uh, acquired by the uh, DOTR. But until now, it's idle. Alam niyo po, ang Alaminos po, ano, andun yung 100 islands. At uh, ang hirap namin maghikayat ng mga turista dahil from here in Manila, going to uh, Alaminos, it will take you around 2 to 5 hours. So, uh, yung mga turista natin, ano, uh, coming from abroad, Siyempre, wala nang magpupunta doon kung gano'n ang kwan uh, katagal. So, you have, we have already the land. Yan o, oh, nakabayan ho ng mga previous administration yan. So, nagpapatulong kami na yun sa inyo, ano, with regards doon sa, we don't need, the, we don't need the, an international airport. Local lang yan mga maliit lang na na planes para at least ah, masimulan na natin siguro gagad na naman ang probinsya ng Pangasinan paano yung i-respond niya na Mr. Secretary uh, Thank you uh, Congressman Guico through the chair po no? uh, totoo po na merong property ang uh, DOTR dyan sa Alaminos no? and uh Ang gagawin po namin dito ay uh, kailangan po nating tapusin yung uh, feasibility study no uh, para po uh, maitayo natin tong airport no maski mag-operate lang po yung uh, uh, mga maliliit na aeroplano no and uh, siguro po what we can do is we can uh, ask for a budget uh, in 2024 po no uh, kasi po hindi po nakasama to sa budget natin for 2023 no but for 2024 we will include this in uh, our request no so that uh, we can start uh, the uh, development of the Alaminos airport no salamat po ah uh, mr secretary not in Alaminos but also in uh, Bulinao you know, uh, Bulinao, napakaganda rin ang kwandon, ang, ang mga, yung beach doon. So, you know, ang problema, no? Kasi kung by land, masyadong matagal. So, uh, ako yung nagagalak na for this coming uh, 2024, i-include yun na sa budget yan. Dahil, uh, alam nyo, napag-iwanan ng ang Pangasinan. With, with that, uh, Madam Chair, I have no more questions to the Secretary. Uh, I will give my full support to you. Siguro, makukontorb ka na rin ngayon. But of course, yung mga commitment sana, Mr. Secretary, dapat matupad. Thank you. Thank you po. Thank you po, uh, Congressman Guico. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair, uh, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Congressman Gasetaya and Senator Francis Tolentino. Uh, the next one to ask uh, questions is uh, Senator Riza. Good morning. You're acknowledged. Salamat, Madam Chair. Maganda umaga po. Maganda umaga po, Secretary. Uh, Secretary, Madam Chair, simula po ako sa, well, road transportation. Mabilis ang response ni Secretary uh, nang may naglabas ng report kamakaila na problematic talaga ang naiya. Gaya ng sinabi na rin ng mga colleagues ko. Gusto ko pong malaman kung may ganyang kahandaan din po kayo para sa road transport issues natin. Uh, because the public will really appreciate Ano po, the same enthusiasm in the road transport sector, SEC. Naibalita ng mga taga LTFRB, bago pa po kayo na italaga, na ang service contracting at ang PUV modernization ay pag-iisahin. In other words, kailangan daw kontratahin at suportahan ang PUV operators para matapos na ang kalbaryo. So, sangayon po ba kayo na ang tugmang bilang bilis at dalas ng mga jeep at bus kapag rush hour ay hindi natin maaasahan mula sa profit maximizing na operators ng PUV fleets. 
kailangan nga po ba ng incentives at service contracts? Through the chair po, uh, yun pong service contracting po ay uh, kailangan po natin no, para masuportahan po yung uh, pangangailangan ng ating mga uh, operators and drivers po. No? Uh, in the past po, we have... Uh, Uh, service contracting programs yung tinatawag po natin na gross uh, service contracting no ito po yung uh, libreng sakay no uh, na hanggang ngayon ay pinapatupad natin dito sa Ed sa Carousel no so talaga ipapalagay ko po importante po ito dahil uh, talaga namang makikinabang yung ating mga pasahero no uh, another service contracting po yung tinatawag natin na net service contracting of which uh, the government uh, subsidizes uh, the cost of uh, uh, the operations of uh, some drivers po no uh, ginawa din po natin ito nung nakaraan no na hindi naman po libre yung binibigay nating uh, pamasahe no but binibigyan po natin ng subsidy yung ibang mga driver para po hindi sila maningil lang mas mataas no so palagay ko po uh, kailangan kailangan po ito ng uh, ating mga mga travelers po lalong lalo na yung uh, mga mahihirap po na nabanggit natin earlier no kailangan po natin silang tulungan at uh, suportahan no Salamat sec uh, Madam Chair and as a general principle uh, sang ayon po ba kayo na mas uh, mas tama na suportahan yung ganitong mga service contracting schemes or mas optimal ito para sa road transportation system natin mas optimal pa ito kaysa sa profit maximizing opo, na mga operations uh, Opo ma'am I, I support po daw mas importante po yan kaysa sa profit maximization Maraming salamat, Sec, Madam Chair. Yun naman pong dedicated lanes, kailangan din po ba? Uh, meron po yata tayong lampas 30 na bus lanes sa Metro Manila bago pa po dumating ang pandemic. May mga nagtatanong po kung bakit naman EDSA lang daw ang may dedicated bus lanes. Sa Jakarta po kasi may 388 kilometers na sila ng dedicated bus lanes. Through the chair po, ano, palagay ko po kailangan po natin magkaroon ng uh, more dedicated lanes po. Ano? Uh, yun pong ed sa carousel natin, maganda po yung naging resulta. Ano? And uh, pinag-uusapan na po namin sa road sector yung possibility of having uh, dedicated lanes po dun sa mga major thoroughfares like Quezon Avenue, Commonwealth Avenue, ano? uh, yung... Uh, yun pong mga malalaking uh, malalapad na mga kali po natin sa Metro Manila no para po naman mabigyan natin ng uh, mabilis na transportasyon no katulad po nung EDSA carousel na from uh, North Avenue to Ayala is uh, less than 30 minutes no so palagay ko po kailangan gawin po natin to along lalo na sa mga major cities not only in Metro Manila but also in Cebu, Davao and Cagayan de Oro no? That is really something to look forward to sa New Year Sec and in the years uh, after 2023. Other major thoroughfares dito sa NCR and other major cities outside Metro Manila. Baka sa ganung paraan e eh, uh, ma-adapt at ma-apply natin dito sa Pilipinas or sa sa NCR, Luzon and beyond yung mukha best practice model sa sa Jakarta, Indonesia. So uh, salamat po para doon. Uh, moving on, sec, Madam Chair, dun sa paksa ng uh, PUV modernization transition. Uh, narinig na po ba ninyo yung katagang just transition? Ang ibig sabihin lang po nito ay dapat ang mga dating bumabiyahe gamit ang traditional jeepneys noon ay hindi papaalisin. Ano po ang mga uh, naipapaabot nilang kahilingan at alin sa mga hinihingi nila ang plano po ninyong ibigay? Uh, salamat po doon sa question niyo, Senator Risa. No? Uh, ang isa po sa mga hinihiling nila ay sana ay uh, matulungan sila na magkaroon ng, uh, ng subsidy po pag, pagbili ng uh, mga bagong uh, uh, transportation vehicles po. No? And uh, ang ating gobyerno po ay uh, nakahandang tumulong para magbigay ng subsidy. Ho, no? Meron po tayong uh, program to help them uh, 
uh, purchase equipment and we're giving a subsidy of 160,000 pesos per unit. No? And at the same time po, tinutulungan natin silang uh, magkaroon ng financing through uh, Land Bank and uh, DBP. No? So ito po ang isa sa kanilang mga kahilingan. No? Pangalawa po ay uh, sana ay uh, matulungan din natin na ma-maintain yung kanilang mga ruta no? uh, para naman na uh, maging patuloy yung kanilang uh, pagserbisyo doon sa mga ruta na kanilang nakagawian na, na i-service po no. Uh, pangatlo po ay uh, yung pong mga uh, uh, bagong ruta din na pwedeng uh, pwedeng nilang uh, mag-operate po no. So meron po tayong tinatawag na LTPRP po no. Ito yung local transport route plan na we're uh, working closely with uh, the LGUs no para po maging uh, sustainable and profitable yung kanilang uh, mga bagong ruta na kung saan mag-ooperate yung kanilang mga sasakyan. Maraming salamat, Sec, Madam Chair, para sa mga uh, pagtatayang ito, tatlo, uh, hopefully initially pa lang, dun sa mga hinihiling na uh, ng uh, sektor uh, kay Secretary. Lalong-lalo na po yung binanggit ninyong Uh, ma-maintain yung kanilang mga ruta dahil concern nga po nila na baka pasukan yung mga ruta nila uh, ng mga, yun na nga, mas fit maximizing na operators. Uh, so kung kumbaga kung sa teolohiya mayroong preferential option for the poor, sana po ay makonsider o masustain pa nga ng DOTR yung preferential option sa mga traditional uh, na, na PUV operators sa mga uh, ruta nila. And salamat din po sa pagbanggit ng pakikipag-ugnayan ng inyong department sa LGUs tungkol sa LTPRP for one. Uh, para naman uh, dun sa mga LGUs kahit na hindi malapit or hindi uh, ma maaring kaalyado nung, uh, nung uh, PUV uh, uh, mga TODA, ang, ang chair halimbawa ng Committee on Transportation sa local council ay ma-facilitate po Uh, ng department na masecure nila yung LTPRP uh, kasi alam naman din ng secretary na naging dagdag na requirement ito sa mga uh, kahit sa mga public transport cooperatives para lang masecure yung mga loans uh, sa kahit sa LBP at sa DBP and salamat dun sa binanggit nyo rin sec na facilitation yon ng financing sa mga uh, organisasyong ito sa mga government banks na ito Um, dako na po sa cost of traffic, uh, sec, Madam Chair, na, na, natalakay din ng ilang mga kasama ko nung naunang hearing. So kung totoo nga yung sabi ng JICA na 3.5 billion pesos na araw-araw ang nawawala sa atin o lampas ng 1 trillion pesos per year dahil sa pagdami ng pribadong sasakyan at pagsikip ng traffic dito sa Metro Manila, bakit? Parang hindi kumbinsido ang DBM no? na bigyan ng prioridad ang inyong mga program sa road transport. And how do you plan to convince them? Through the chair po, uh, totoo po na merong study na we're spending uh, billions of pesos. No? And uh, kailangan po talaga siguro na yung gobyerno natin mag, uh, magkaroon ng... Uh, uh, pagkakataon na magbigay ng more budget for uh, for the road uh, network po natin no uh, kasi po uh, instead of spending those uh, billions of pesos in uh, traffic cost no pwede po nating uh, i-subsidize yung uh, pag uh, pag-construct po ng other infrastructure no and uh, siguro po uh, iitulong po natin ito na ma-improve po yung uh, public utility vehicles no uh, dapat po sana mas kokonti yung magta-travel by uh, by personal cars but uh, more uh, through the public uh, utility vehicle system po natin no uh, dahil uh, ito po ay makakatulong talaga na mabawasan ng traffic and uh, mawala yung additional cost po ng uh, traffic na ito no? Salamat, Sec, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, lalo na dun sa pag, um, 
bibigay nyo ng uh, diin dun sa public transportation system sa loob ng ating mga syudad hanggang po sa kanayunan. Uh, dagdag infrastructure gaya ng sinabi rin ni uh, Sen. JV kanina pero kakambal nun o kapatid nun uh, pagbawas sa palagay kong sobrang dami ng bilang ng mga private uh, vehicle. So yung tamang balancing gano'n na optimal din para sa riding public. Pati na po sa ating um, uh, kalikasan. So, and uh, madami po yung mga uh, kadiwa nyo sa ganyang, uh, sa ganyang pananaw, SEC, uh, uh, for sure dito sa Senado and I'm willing to bet sa, sa House din po. So, dako na po dun sa Port congestion. Uh, sobrang luwag ng SCTEC sa pagitan ng Subic at Clark. Uh, blessing in disguise daw, sabi ng isang kolumnista na si Bu Chanko, na hindi pa nagpautang ang Chinese para sa Subic Clark project. Mas mahalaga at sulit daw na magkaroon tayo ng quote, trail, uh, rail line, rail line from the Manila port to an inland port somewhere in Laguna to help alleviate traffic jams caused by cargo trucks in Manila streets, close quote. Uh, tama kaya na kung kailangan pumili kung saan ilalagay yung 50 billion pesos na utangin ay itong pangangailangan ng ating pangunahing port ang gastosan? Uh, thank you po sa question, uh, Madam Sec uh, Senator. No? Alam niyo po yung Subic Clark po, uh, Ito po ay uh, pinag-aralan ng ating uh, NEDA no? and uh, uh, ito po ay uh, to service uh, the cargo requirements uh, uh, from Subic Port to Clark po. No? Ang, ang balak po talaga dyan, dun sa tinitingnan po namin, namin yung master plan, no? uh, ito po ay uh, magkukonect po from uh, Clark uh, going to... Uh, uh, to Manila Port no? and also to Batangas Port po. Ito po yung uh, ang master plan po nito ay uh, uh, cargo rail system no from Batangas to uh, Manila Port and uh, Manila Port to Sub Subic Port po no. Uh, nagkataon po na ito lang po yung naunang uh, phase ng project no na inaproba ng government no. So palagay ko po uh, makakatulong po ito dahil uh, may mga nakausap na kaming mga operators sa Subic no na sinasabi nila na malaking tulong yung uh, uh, magiging operations ng cargo rail natin from uh, Subic to Clark no lalong lalo na po yung mga grains daw na uh, that are being transported from Subic po no one of the biggest uh, company that talk to us that uh, really is uh, asking us to support is Cargill po which is uh, a big company, a grains company, no? And uh, sabi nila talagang uh, it will help po, no? And uh, based po dun sa study ng uh, NEDA, it has an economic return of uh, 10% po, no? 10% mathematically sounds small. Malaki na po ba yun sa well, uh, TR scheme of things? Well, uh, sa economic return po, uh, maganda na po yung 10%, no? Uh, it's more than uh, the growth po, uh, GDP growth po. Okay, good point po, Sec, uh, Madam Chair. And it it does sound a bit better kung uh, ang plano nyo sa master plan ay hindi matatapos between Subic and Clark. May connect uh, na rin po pala sa Manila hanggang Batangas. Opo. Opo. So I, I hope it will be of some... Uh, uh, solace kay Mr. Chanko and that overall, in the overall scheme of things, it will make sense in the long term. Baka ang, ang, ang naisip ko lang habang nagsasalita kayo, Sec, uh, Madam Chair, ay uh, dahil ang Subic to Clark yata ay mga 50 kilometers, pero sa pagitan naman ng Manila Port hanggang yung somewhere in Laguna ni Mr. Chanko or hanggang Batangas ay 60 kilometers na. So, baka in an ideal world, baka maganda sana, pati sa immediate effect sa traffic dito sa Metro Manila, kung dun nagsimula yung kung in phases itong master plan, kung dun sana nagsimula pagitan ng Manila at saka uh, Southern Tagalog. Uh, but in any case, uh, since it's part of a bigger and longer term master plan, uh, susubaybayan po namin with uh, even greater uh, even greater interest. Huling paksa ko na lang po 
uh, sec, Madam Chairs, para sa umagang ito. Yung dahil nabanggit na rin po natin yung ano kaya yung optimal uh, para sa public transportation or overall transportation system sa Metro Manila, sa lahat ng mga uh, metropolitan areas at sa buong bansa, itong active and intermodal transportation. Uh, we've been investing tremendously in rail transport. But there is still a gap between riding or alighting from the trains and arriving at your actual destination. So is there a senior official and maybe a bureau at the department that is programming the joint national government investments with the LGUs so that people can walk, bike, or ride home or go to the train stations without all the hassle and anxiety? Uh, through the chair po, meron po tayong isang uh, department po, uh, isang grupo po sa Department of Transportation. No? Ito po yung uh, Road Transport and Infrastructure uh, Group po. Ito po yung uh, nagpaplano ng mga infrastructure for uh, active transportation, bike lanes po, no? uh, walkways, greenways. No? So, uh, and the uh, Ang plano po namin dito is uh, work closely with uh, the LGUs. No, uh, we are uh, planning po to uh, to do a feasibility study uh, to uh, to have uh, all these facilities all over the country. No, and work with the uh, LGUs po. No, because the young LGUs po uh, they have uh, their own funds. No, we can help them uh, implement. Uh, uh, the construction of uh, active transport infrastructure, no, mga bike lanes po and uh, mga walkways, no. Marami salamat, Sec, uh, at Madam Chair. At sana dahil papasok na rin kayo sa ang department sa active transportation and a very welcome development. Uh, sana top of mind din itong uh, road transport and infra group sa department, yung intermodal din, yung pagkone-konekta ng iba't ibang uh, modes ng transportasyon natin sa kalsada, sa rail, uh, hanggang pa nga sa mga uh, sea at airports uh, para po meron talagang um, ease of traveling uh, para sa ating mga Pilipino within each LGU and, and within the whole country. Thank you po, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, kasama po yan sa programa natin. No? Dapat po uh, meron tayong tinatawag na intermodal uh, transport system no? para po from the airport, uh, madaling sumakay ng bus, madaling sumakay ng train, no? uh, madaling sumakay ng taxi. No? Yan po ang uh, plano po natin, lalong-lalo na doon sa mga bagong uh, airports na gagawin. No? Katulad po ng yung uh, Bulacan Airport. No? Sabi nga po ni uh, Senator uh, uh, Alan Peter Cayetano, dapat po uh, napaplanong mabuti yan. No? Uh, kailangang uh, Huwag, gawin, uh, huwag natin kalimutan yung mga pagkukulang natin in the past. No? Kailangan uh, magkaroon ng tamang planning. No? And uh, palagay ko po itong uh, mga bagong airports na gagawin natin ay magkakaroon ng uh, support infrastructure for intermodal uh, transport system. No? Uh, para po madaling sumakay sa bus, sa taxi, sa, P, uh, uh, sa train. No? and the uh, other modes of uh, transportation po. Marami salamat po, Sec. Marami salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Senator Rizzo. We'd like to acknowledge the presence of Representative Al Abet Garcia from uh, the province of Bataan. Uh, we'd like to now uh, recognize uh, Congressman Chiquiting Sagarbaria for his questions. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Actually, I have two questions, Madam Chair. And, uh, and one is very parochial, and the other one is not uh, considered parochial. It's about, um, Mr. Secretary, about uh, Nino Aquino International Airport 2. You know, I travel every week. Uh, usually, I arrive here on a Monday in Manila, do my job as a congressman, and I go home on a Thursday or on a Friday. But every time I travel, especially when I reached Nia too, when we checked in, a lot of uh, booths are unmanned. 
and you see the queue of all the people lining up. So I said to myself, we've established this. And you come there are no personnel. Sometimes it even happens the personnel there stands up, gets out, and I ask, why is that person getting out? They're going to walk because they are on a snack time. How can that be? That is unacceptable. I think that is under your powers, Mr. Sackler, to make sure that all the booths are manned all the time. Because this uh, we are now trying to develop our tourism industry. And what are we portraying to the riding public, especially the foreigners? It's very, very, I mean, it doesn't look good. And secondly, the same, when, once you go to the pre departure area, there are three extreme machines. And most of the time, only two are functioning. But the third extreme machine, I ask them, is that in running condition? Yes. Why is it not being used? It's only for VIPs. No. Don't you know that all the passengers here are all VIPs? Why don't you mind that? Congestion again. I mean, it's very, it's very simple. It's a number, it's no brainer to solve the problem to make it more convenient for the riding public all the time. I don't know. I cannot understand. I cannot comprehend. Why is it so hard to make the riding public suffer when now the, the infrastructure is already available? The X-rays are there. Uh, the books are there for check-in, unmarked, and you see the queue, and does it make sense? So I think it needs your attention. Mr. Secretary, and number two is about safety. About a year and a half ago, there was a new mishap in one of the airlines landing in the domestic airport, the city of Dumaguete. It's, it's because of the vegetation that we had uh, during the in an area where they do the approach. In fact, there were pictures. I saw the pictures. The wheels of the airline was full of branches because it already hit the vegetation. And I asked um, to do something about this because it was very dangerous. This could have happened. And they, they said they would do something about this. Then very recently, about a year ago, I talked to one of your engineers of CAAP, Engineer Raul Glorioso. He comes from Manila. He tells me that an appropriation of close to three or five hundred thousand pesos has already been downloaded to the city, to the, to the airport, to the Dumaguete City Airport, for that cleanup of the vegetation. But sad to say, until today, it's not yet cleaned up. And there is this transmission line from the local cooperative, uh, electric cooperative, that is transversing the road. Well, the, the, the place this is about for takeoff. That is causing also danger. So when it comes to safety, I don't think so. There is no other reason. Must to it at the soonest possible time. Because we cannot say we'll do it next week. It's got to be done now. Because the lives of the people are in danger. Every day, I think five or seven flights in the city of Bumaglete, in the city of Bumaglete, the airport, and if those things are not being fixed or attended to, that is causing imminent danger for a mishap. I hope it does not happen. I'm riding there every week. But, you know, it needs a little bit of attention coming, I think, by no less than the Secretary to solve this problem. I hope really, Mr. Secretary, you really can attend to this because uh, this is causing already danger to the riding public and inconvenience, especially in the Nia too. Every time you go in, you go there at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. So you can see by yourself the queue, the people waiting, and the bus are not manned completely. And the X-ray machines are not functioning as they should completely. So I hope you can do something about this. That's my only concern, Mr. Secretary. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman uh, Sagarbaria. Sec, would you like to respond? Yes, uh, through the chair. Uh, first, uh, on uh, the issue of uh, unmanned boots, po, uh, Congressman, no? we'll uh, talk to the airlines. These are uh, to be manned po by uh, the airline companies. No, We'll ask them to see to it that uh, all the boots are uh, manned. No? I think that is the duty responsibility to do so. 
Apo, apo, apo. And uh, also on uh, those issues that you mentioned about safety, we'll see to it that CAAP attends to it uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary. I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator uh, Jingwei Ejercito Estrada. Uh, next in line to ask questions is uh, Congressman El Rey Villafuerte. Congressman El Rey, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's the third time that the Secretary has appeared in this commission. It only speaks of the fact that the enorm it speaks of the enormity of his task. You're in charge of land, air, sea, transport. So I think uh, marami talagang uh, issues uh, na a lot of our members are asking you because our constituents want clarification. Ako, I fully support your uh, nomination, sec. but however, <laughs> I just have to put it on record that the Naga Airport has been budgeted, approved by uh, NEDA. It's a flagship project. Uh, when uh, Secretary Togadi assumed office, that's the first thing uh, I raised uh, sa kanya. And unfortunately, six years has passed. Walang nangyari, no? Uh, this has been budgeted during the time of uh, former President uh, Pinoy. Six years under the Duterte administration, walang nangyari. Uh, when, we, when I speak and follow up of the Naga Airport, Mr. Secretary, I'm... The prime uh, concern is actually safety. It's not anymore whether tourism or promotion of trade, no? Uh, tanong ko lang po, uh, nasubukan nyo na po ba bang mag-landing sa Naga Airport? Through the chair, uh, opo, uh, sen uh, Congressman uh, El Rey. Kailan po kayo nag, uh, huling, uh, bumis uh, nag-landing po sa Naga Airport? Uh, huli po, uh, uh, siguro po more than uh, five years ago po. Was no? that uh, through a commercial flight or a chartered flight? It, it was a commercial flight po and uh, alam po namin uh, the runway is short. No? That's why uh, we really need to uh, extend it po. No? Gusto and, ko lang uh, malaman yung experience nyo. Yung pag-landing ba, napahawak ba kayo, napadasal ba kayo? Uh, no, no, it's true because I land in that airport and every time I land there, I, not only me, everybody prays. And uh, the reason why I'm uh, raising this, Mr. Secretary, uh, with the members of the CA, every time that there's a flight landing there, there's a risk of people uh, getting into an accident. Totoo yun. It, uh, Senator Riz, I would like to invite you. I will pay for your flight. <laughs> <laughs> Nakakatakot talaga po, Sek. Uh, uh, mapapahawa ka lang. And uh, there's already numerous instances where the plane has over, nag-overshoot po. So ayoko pong uh, may mangyari, God forbid, today, next week, next month, next year. Uh, but it, it, it's, a, it's a disaster waiting to happen po, SEC. And there's money apparently sa CAAP. Uh, under your administration, uh, SEC, uh, it's an EDA flagship project. Gusto ko lang po malaman, uh, ano ba po ang gagawin nyo po para mapabilis na po ang implementation nito? Kasi may budget na po, uh, may feasibility na, approved na sa NEDA. Uh, it's more than 10 years since uh, this has been uh, not been implemented po. Through the chair, uh, uh, Congressman uh, Villapuerte, uh, tuto po na merong budget. No? Uh, there is, uh, we need to expropriate po the land, no? uh, additional uh, land for us to be able to extend the runway. No? And uh, we have already uh, asked uh, the Office of the Solicitor General to help us uh, implement the expropriation. Po, no? yeah. Actually, the provincial government has already done the steps of expropriation, but the court said that since it's a national government project, it should be the Josolgen appearing. So for six years, hindi po inasikaso ng Solgen. But it's incumbent upon the Department of Transportation to... Uh, follow up with them daily po kasi ba balikan na natin eh, grabe talaga eh. Uh, ikaw na rin po nagsabi sec na napaka short talaga ng runway. And uh, again, uh, hindi kami makabulusok sa tourism and trade. But balikan ko lang, it's a question of safety now. Ah. So uh, I think it's incumbent upon you under your leadership, believe naman po ako sa inyo, na please assign somebody who will constantly follow up with the soldier. All the soldier needs to do is intervene, appear. 
and follow up. Uh, the process of expropriation has already started uh, more than 8, 10 years ago po eh. So, yun lang po ang uh, gusto ko po under your leadership po. Uh, sana naman, pag na-confirm na kayo, ay eh, bigyan nyo na po priority ang uh, Naga Airport. Again, uh, pag may nangyari kasi doon, God forbid, eh, baka po sisihin po ang Department of uh, DOTR. And we don't want that uh, to happen, sir. Thank you po, uh, Congressman. I will personally po uh, talk to the Solicitor General, no? for them to give priority to this project. No? Uh, sana po kasi si talaga si Secretary Tugade, that's what she said, but uh, in six years, uh, with all due respect, kaibigan ko siya, eh, unfortunately po, walang nangyari. Uh, under your leadership po, sir, please uh, attend to this. Uh, secondly, uh, lahat po ng Pangulo, pag tumatakbong Presidente, pinapangako po sa Bicol na i-upgrade po ang South Rail. <laughs> <laughs> Yan po ang campaign promise ng lahat ng Pangulo uh, from the time of uh, Cory Aquino until uh, even President Duterte. No? And uh, medyo ginanahan po kami under President Duterte because uh, you know the Chinese and the Japanese uh, committed to fund it. Uh, but unfortunately, wala na namang pondo. Ang tanong ko lang po, while the DOTR, the national government, is negotiating Sino po ang magpupondo sa Manila Bicol South Rail? Uh, the biggest issue I think that you have to attend to is the right of way. Uh, ang ginawa po namin sa Camarines Sur, which is the largest portion uh, ng South Rail uh, going to Bicol, is nire-root na po namin yung dadaanan because it is easier to buy land than to pay all the thousands of people to relocate. Uh, di ba po, uh, imbis na paalisin po natin sila, wag na lang natin paalisin and i-reroot na lang po. So, in na po ng DOTR yan. But ang ano ko po, ang concern ko po, since ni nilatag na sa publiko yung dadaanan, baka by the time you start, marami na naman pong illegal uh, uh, settlers po doon. So, my suggestion po to the DOTR, uh, kay Yusek Chavez and under you po, Sana mapondohan na po ang right-of-way acquisitions. Uh, iba, uh, ayusin na, ma, you, you can ask the LGU to make sure na wala pong uh, magtayo uh, ng structures, illegal settlers. Kasi by the time the loan uh, is approved by whether China, Japan, World Bank, at least tuloy-tuloy uh, na po ang construction. Ang tanong ko lang po, for the 2023 budget, Meron pa bang pondo for road right of way, specifically in Bicol, Camarines Sur, yung dadaanan ng right of way po, sir? Uh, uh, through the chair, tama po kayo, uh, Congressman uh, Villapuerte, that uh, mas magiging uh, economical po na kumuha na lang tayo ng bagong alignment. No? Doon po sa study namin, if we will use the old alignment, We'll spend around 54 billion pesos, no, to uh, settle uh, and uh, or to resettle the uh, ISF, no. Uh, samantalang kung uh, kukuha po tayo ng bagong alignment, no, we'll spend only around uh, 14 to 15 billion, no. So malaki po yung savings. Kaya ang balak po namin talaga yan is uh, magkaroon ng bagong alignment, no. Uh, Sa ngayon po, uh, meron po kaming uh, available fund no na pangbayad dito sa mga bibili nating lupa no. And uh Kano po sir ang na-allocate for right of way for 20 Meron po, meron po tayong around 12 billion po, 12 billion pesos sa uh, pangbayad dito. So may pera naman po, uh, sana po uh, may pera naman na uh, mag-coordinate na kayo sa LGUs na concerned Especially kami po, uh, kami ang kakausap po dun sa mga may-ari na huwag na nilang taasan yung lupa kasi pag nagkaroon naman ng rail, do double triple yung value ng lupa po nila. Uh, alam mo naman, pag national government na nakikiusap, ang bata lumalaki double triple So, may suggestion for you po, sir, is since there's a budget, sana ayusin na po natin yung right of way. Uh, because uh, that takes time and as you know, most major projects in our country, whether road uh, or rail, uh, kailangan talaga po maayos yan. So out of the 12 billion sana, 
i-allocate nyo na yan sa mga LGUs na tulong ma-acquire yan para maumpisahan na po yung acquisition na yan. And hopefully, under your leadership po ay either you can negotiate for better terms with the NEDA DOF yung uh, interest rates or ako, I'm hoping and praying sana Japanese funded na lang yung real kasi yung Manila, Kalamba, Hapon which I believe as better technology pagdating ng Kalamba, Bicol, uh, Chinese daw. So sana isa na lang but uh, that is entirely uh, kayo po ang magde-decide niyan. But balikan ko lang po out of the 12 billion please favor po allocate uh, in the Bicol area, Camarines is the biggest area uh, in the rail. Uh, sir, may you respond po? Thank you po. Through the chair, uh, yes, uh, Congressman Villafuerte, we will uh, work closely with the LGUs para we can start uh, acquiring the land for uh, which we'll use uh, for the alignment po. No? So we'll work on that uh, right-of-way project and uh, salamat po at sana magbigay kayo ng priority sa Bicol, Camarines or not because I'm there because that's the biggest uh, area if you will look at the map na dadaanan sa Bicol. No? So uh, thirdly lang po, uh, the issue I want to raise is I share the sentiment of Congressman uh, Sagarbaria. Uh, whenever I go to the airport, whether I take the domestic or international route, uh, there are three or four x-ray machines and isa lang po nag operate uh, haba ng pila, uh, ayos naman po yung uh, tatlo. Uh, nakakalungkot lang kasi, you know, uh, nandun yung machine, hindi ginagamit, bago pa nga. Uh, sana naman po ay uh, tigilan na natin po yung sistema sa airport na haba-habang pila. Uh, let's make the, you know, Philippines, whether well, domestic or international flights, seamless po travel. You know, that's the first and last place a tourist will uh, go to. Can you imagine na uh, when they land, ang init ng airport, pagbagsak, pagbaba mo, sobrang init ng aircon, uh, ang baba ng ceiling kasi luma na yung building, then paglabas uh, mo, ang haba ng uh, pila. Parang uh, yun ang first impression that will last. Then you go to the CR, tatlo lang po ang cubicle. Uh, uh, I mean, no, kahit anong linis po ng uh, maintenance doon, hindi talaga lilinis yun eh. Kasi tatlo lang ang cubicle, libo-libong pasahero po ang, uh, ang uh, gumagamit. No? Uh, if you will understand, all airports were, ang feasibility nila was 20 years ago, hindi na anticipate ang passenger uh, usage. Uh, the same way that the Naga Airport, the feasibility was done 15 years ago, Pag natapos yung terminal, masikip na kasi hindi na update. So, sana sir, uh, under the leadership of BBM, sir, ayusin po natin basically CR, X-ray, long lines. Uh, ano talaga yan? Nakaka-frustrate. Uh, tama po sinabi ni Sagarbaria, minsan pang VIP raw. Eh, kami naman, pag nag kami, nakakahiya naman gumamit doon dahil baka ma Facebook pa kami na ibali niya namin. So we have to stay in the line where ordinary people have to stay, no? Please lang, sir, after this uh, hearing, sana, bisitahin yung airport. Uh, please, sir. <laughs> uh, kasi ano po eh. And then kasi, sir, alam nyo, pag secretary, uh, pagbaba ng airport, na lahat ng mga sip-sip nandun. Wala, pinapapaspasan yung ano eh. You have to go through the normal process and find out. <laughs> How an ordinary person will go through. Kasi pagbaba nyo dun, siyempre, nandun ang OTS, nandun ang manager, eh, hindi nyo nararamdaman uh, how an ordinary passenger uh, experience po, sir. So, may, we hope uh, you can respond to this issue. Through the chair, uh, salamat po. Yes, uh, we will see to it that uh, <laughs> we will uh, improve po itong mga airport natin. No? As uh, mentioned po by uh, Senator uh, Bongo earlier, there are uh, the previous administration has started more than 140 projects for all the airports no and itutuloy po natin ito no uh, and uh, sana nga po uh, magkaroon pa tayo ng uh, additional budget no para matapos po natin itong mga sinimulan ng previous administration na around 140 projects for uh, the existing airports in the Philippines thank you uh, uh sir uh, magpapasko na Maralibo-libo po ang traveling public who will go to their provinces. 
May I request the DOTR to set up task forces and teams to ensure the safety, convenience of our passengers, whether airport, whether land transport, especially the seaports. Mga matnog lahat. Uh, Diyan po nagkakaroon ng congestion po, sir. Uh, this is the first Christmas that the riding public will experience under the new administration of our president. Uh, isipin nyo kung seamless, maganda ang sistema ng pasahero, it will contribute greatly to the success of our president, sir. So hopefully, uh, gusto ko lang malaman before I end, ano ba po ang ginagawa nyo, not only in the airport, the seaport, and other transport terminals to ensure the safety and convenience of our passengers? Uh, thank you po. Uh, meron po kaming coordination na uh, all the all the sectors, no. We we have a specific projects to see to it that uh, all the pain points uh, in the four sectors of travel are addressed po, especially uh, during this uh, Christmas season na uh, napakarami pong travelers, no. So the identify na po namin tong lahat ng pain points na to no i have instructed uh, all the usec and the sectoral uh, heads of agencies to see to it that uh, uh, all the concerns of uh, passengers are uh, taken care of this christmas season no? thank you sec uh, alam ko po mabait kayo alam ko magaling kayo pero uh, managing a department uh, such a big one as yours kailangan na uh, magkaroon rin kayo ng konting bangis kasi hindi kayo susundin ng mga kasama nyo. Especially yung mga 10-20 year old na dyan that just uh, want to continue their old traditional uh, ineffective ways. Uh, we pray for your success. We pray for BBM success. But uh, as the leader, sir, kailangan uh, hindi nadadaan sa kabaitan po. Uh, kailangan na uh, magkaroon kayo ng konting bangis. Uh, you are a very amiable person. Uh, uh, pero sir, kailangan at the end of the day, uh, kailangan uh, accomplishments po. Uh, yan lang po. And uh, I hope the first time na might not be you were not successful. The second time, nag-earthquake. Uh, hopefully, uh, ano? O, uh, uh, as Johnny Pimentel says, yung number three is always the best. What do you mean? Maraming salamat po, sir. Secret, secret. What do you mean? Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Thank you very much, Congressman El Rey. Uh, next in line uh, is uh, Congressman uh, Johnny Pimentel, our Assistant Minority Floor Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before, before you do, I'd like to acknowledge first the presence of uh, uh, Oka Malapitan, uh, Senator Aini Marcos, and Senator Lauren Legarda. Uh, please continue. Yes, once again, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Secretary, good morning po. I was looking over your profile, which was submitted by uh, the Secretariat, and I cannot help but admire your way to the top. In fact, uh, your rise to the top is phenomenal. You started as a lowly auditor in Sisip Gores Velayo, and through the years, you have risen consistently. Eventually, you became president of uh, PNB Forex and president, chief executive officer of Air Philippines. Then you became president of PAL Holdings. President, eventually, President and CEO of Philippine Airlines. And the last was the being a chairman of Macroasia. You were also board of directors of several uh, big corporations. So, and you are a respected uh, personality in these industries. And I also, we all know that uh, this is your first stint in government. This will be your first appointment in government service. We know very well that uh, working in the private sector is different from the government service. There will be a lot of pressures, marami yung mga intriga. In fact, Mr. Secretary, this is the third time that you have faced uh, the Committee on Appointments, or Commission on Appointments, rather. 
through all this, Mr. Secretary, um, because of the pressures, everything, did you ever regret entering uh, the government service? Through the chair, Paul, uh, in the Paul, uh, I uh, am happy to be of service to the Filipino people, Paul. I think you should be ready, no, uh, Mr. Secretary, because you'll be entering alliance then. No, iba talaga ang uh, dynamics ng uh, pagtatrabaho sa gobyerno kaysa private sector. Anyway, you've been there for uh, how many months now? Uh, over five months po, uh, Congressman. So at least you have already a taste of uh, what government service is. Mr. Secretary, I'm just curious. What do you think is the biggest difference in working the private sector as compared to the world working in government service? To the chair, no. Uh, first of all, uh, in the private sector, uh, we can uh, decide fast, po, no? uh, we can, uh, uh, by, by uh, two-year position, uh, accepting responsibility, uh, we can make uh, quick decisions. No? Dito po sa government, uh, we have to see to it that uh, we comply with uh, many regulations, no? COA regulations, uh, budget requirements, no? And uh, kung minsan po, ito po yung nakakatagal doon sa mga decisions natin, no? Well, that is true. Uh, you have to go through the different channels, in bureaucratic red tape. Um, you're characterized, and I can see it, as a very humble person. No? Mabait po kayo. Nakikita ko naman ng isang tao kung mabait o maloko. Pero in your line of work, Mr. Secretary, Hindi ho rin pwedeng palagi kayong mabait. Marami hong maloko dyan. DOTR is a big uh, agency and uh, we'll be meeting a lot of people who, who doesn't really have good intentions always. So I, I believe that you should really be on guard always. Now let me go to my questions. Mr. Secretary, during the past administration, they devised a plan of putting up motor vehicle inspection centers all over the country. Ito po ba, um, it's now carried over to this administration. Now my question is, um, do you intend to put MVICs in all the provinces? Is that a requirement? Obligatory ba yun na labong lahat ng probinsya, 82 provinces, may tigisang MVIC? Uh, through the chair, no? Uh, I think for the PBMIC, uh, the uh, uh, Motor Vehicle Inspection Center is uh, important po, no? because uh, uh, we need this for registration. And the uh, pong requirement for registration is not only to uh, see to it that we identify the vehicle, no? but uh, see to it that the vehicle is roadworthy. No? So tingin ko po yung uh, requirement ng uh, Motor Vehicle Inspection Center is to see to it that uh, the vehicles are roadworthy, uh, especially po yung mga public utility vehicles no, na sinasakyan ng ating mga mananakay. No? So uh, as much as possible po, uh, me personally, I will encourage uh, uh, the setting up of uh, Vehicle Inspection Center po. Yes, I know this MVIC, uh, Mr. Secretary, because we did a study tour in Congress during the 17th Congress uh, in Singapore. It is actually a comprehensive inspection of all vehicles before uh, registration of the vehicles. No, Dadaan po ng lahat ng mga testing. But you did not answer my question. Do you intend to put up MVICs on all the provinces? Yun ang tanong ko. Lahat ba ng probinsya lalagyan ng MBIC? Through the chair, no? Uh, ang uh, recommendation po namin ay sana uh, lahat po ng uh, cities na merong LTO uh, offices po para they can support uh, the registration requirements of uh, the Land Transportation Office. No? So, in short, um, the MBICs will be placed Doon po sa mga cities or provinces na may branch ng LTO or satellite offices ng LTO. 
Ganun po ba? Yun po ang aming uh, recommendation. Okay. Now, so there could be multiple MBICs in one province. Hindi lang isa. Kasi I do not really know the guidelines. Eh. Um, it, it is not specific whether there should only be one MBIC in one province or uh, pwedeng dalawa, tatlo. Ano po ba talaga ang guidelines regarding the MBIC? Ang kailangan po natin, uh, Mr. Congressman, is uh, yun pong uh, makakasatisfy sa, uh, require, sa number of uh, vehicles that will be inspected po. No? So possibly po na isang uh, city, mas maraming uh, PBM uh, Motor Vehicle Inspection Center kung mas marami pong uh, vehicles that need to be registered. No? So yun po ang uh, pag-aaralan natin na uh, sana ay uh, malagyan po ng mas maraming motor vehicle inspection center yun pong uh, city na may kailangan na mas maraming uh, vehicle for registration so to clarify basing it in your staff from your statement so there is no prohibition under the guidelines that there will be multiple MBICs in one province pwede po yun pwede po okay let me go to my next question Um, before this uh, MBIC plan of the OTR, we had the emission testing centers, hindi po ba? This has been going on for quite some time now, for many years now. Dati po, wala tayong emission testing center. Uh, then uh, the government uh, um, required that uh, before a vehicle can be, whether a motorcycle or a car or a truck, whatever, Before it can be registered LTO, it should yes. go first uh, to have the emission emission testing. No, now there are so many emission testing centers in the country today. Probably how many thousands, hundreds? Merong po ba tayong record? Ang LTO po merong uh, record, no. Uh... And uh, sila po ang uh, nag, uh, nag uh, regulate. Assuming hundreds mm -hmm. or thousands. Uh, because, uh, 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 Mr. Burr, Congressman, we have around uh, 800. 800 all over the country. Opo. Now, once the MBIC, uh, uh, the MBIC centers will be uh, put up in one locality, eh kasi dun sa MBIC, Comprehensive na po, nandun na lahat, will alignment, will balancing, yung suspension, pati yung emission testing, nandun na. Now, what happens to the existing emission testing centers? Ano mangyayari doon? Kasi, lagi nung MBIC, if it's a different owner, ano po mangyayari doon sa emission testing center? Will it be phased out? Yung pong mga emission center po, meron pong uh, term yung kanilang uh, uh, approval for operations po. No? So uh, if uh, mag expire na po yung kanilang uh, license no? and uh, meron na pong uh, public, uh, meron ng uh, vehicle inspection center, no? uh, posible po na hindi na po natin i-renew yung uh, uh, mga yung license po ng emission okay. center. So, to put it clearly, yung existing emission testing center, meron ang MBIC, mapi-face out na yun. E what if kung wala pang MBIC? Hindi, even though, let's say, nag-expire na, kasi sabi mo, may term yun. Let's say, nag-expire na yung uh, permit ng uh, testing center, e wala pang MBIC. So, what will you do? It will renew it. Uh, we will have, we'll have to renew it pa because it's a requirement for uh, registration. Now, during the past administration, it was not clear kung sino talaga who will manage or saan ba talaga ang uh, supervision nitong emission testing centers, MBIC. Now, with this uh, new administration, itong approval ng MBIC, itong uh, supervision ng MBIC, sino po po mag-handle nito? Will it be LTO or will it be DOTR na? Through the chair po. Uh, tama po kayo na there was a time that uh, it was uh, handled through the office of uh, the secretary. No? Uh, pero ang pinag-aaralan po namin ngayon uh, ay uh, it will be uh, handled by uh, LTO and uh, DOTR po para 
uh, we can also have some uh, oversight on uh, the operations of this. Uh, so it will be a composite now. Now, let's say if I am an ordinary person, I would like to apply for an MBIC. Where do I go to? Kasi sabi mo, it will be in conjunction with the OTR and LTO. Saan ako mag-apply? Will be at LTO or the OTR? Sa, sa LTO po. It will be ah, LTO. 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 Then uh, you will sit down with the OTR, LTO and the OTR will sit down and uh, will evaluate whether it should be approved or not. Yes, Paul. Okay. So we'll go to another uh, topic. One minute na lang, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair. Um, I am a Mindanawa, no? And uh, it is our long dream to have a railway project. During the past administration, uh, there was a proposal uh, to have a railway project in Mindanao connecting Davao City, General Santos City, Cagayan de Oro, Iligan, Cotabato, Sambuanga, Butuan, Surgao City, and Malay Balay. Actually, the route will really, it's a circumferential uh, railway which will uh, cover the entire Mindanao. Now, um, wala na akong kami balita. Ano na akong nangyari dito? Uh, did it push through? Was there a MOA already? Or there is a uh, ground break? Na, ano na nangyari dito? Kasi natigil na eh. Wala na kami balita. Ano po bang status nito ngayon? Through the chair, no? uh, meron po tayong existing project, yung uh, Mindanao Rail Project po. This will be from uh, Digos, Labao, Tagum. No? Uh, nasimulan po ito nung previous administration. No? Unfortunately, yung pong uh, loan was not uh, renewed. No? Uh, the loan expired last uh, May 31. No? So uh, we're working closely with the uh, the Department of Finance, no, to uh, start the renegotiation for the loan po to finance uh, this phase one, no? which is uh, from Digos, Dabao, Tagum. No? Were you able to start construction or nandun lang kayo sa planning stage pa? Well, wala pa pong construction, no, but uh, we are in uh, the phase of uh, uh, identifying uh, the 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 when po, the the land that we will need no so that uh, we are now working for uh, getting the right of way no so meron na pong mga Pero were you able to reach the stage na meron ng plano for the railway meron na pong plano meron na pong plano but uh, uh, we need to get the loan po muna no something loan sa china so if there is a chinese loan then uh, they will put the chinese uh, railway system O Japan. Kasi kung Japan naman, it will be a Japanese railway system. Mm -hmm. ano well, po, uh, ang, ang, uh, ang plano po is uh, to have it financed by uh, China. This is uh, what the previous government has started, no? Yes, because these two railway systems are not compatible with, with each other. Um, pa paano po yung ano? Let's go to another railway uh, project. Under who ba ninyo yung sa Bulacan to Clark? Railway project? Bulacan to Clark, uh, opo, opo. This is uh, the North-South Commuter Railway po. So ano nang status nun? Uh, it's ongoing po. Uh, we have, uh, uh, there, there are contractors uh, now uh, constructing the viaduct. No? Uh, we are expecting to uh, complete this po by uh, 2027, no? So construction has already started? Yes, opo. And this is a loan from China or Japan? Uh, ito po ay uh, loan from, uh, po, from Japan. So they will be using the Japanese railway system then? At opo. what stage na po ba yung construction? Uh, right now po, uh, there are construction going on from uh, Manila to Clark. Uh, yun pong mas marami po ngayong uh, bayad na construction dito sa Bulacan, sec Bulacan section po no uh, Valenzuela to uh, to Malolos no and then uh, from Malolos to Clark po yung susunod no Well that's good to hear kung uh, ongoing na yun ongoing po uh, you can uh, you can okay. see uh, the bayad po Sana matuloy din yun Okay last question na lang talaga Madam Chair Ano po yung status ng Bulacan Airport 
although this is a uh, privately led uh, construction, ano na po ang uh, status noon? Uh, through the chair, uh, yun pong Bulacan Airport is undergoing land development po. Uh, in fact, I, I, I visited the place uh, a month ago. No? Uh, and uh, yun pong land development, 1,700 hectares ay uh, nandun na po. No? Uh, ang estimate po is... Uh, it's almost 50% complete as far as land development is concerned. So, uh, it is expected that uh, the full land development will be completed by uh, the end of uh, 2023. And starting 2024, uh, runway can be constructed uh, as well as the passenger terminal building. So they can start the building of the runway by 2024? Opo. 2024 pa po ang start ng... Uh, construction ng runway and the passenger terminal building. Pero ang problema lang dito, uh, Mr. Secretary, the agreement between San Miguel and the government, there is no guarantee na ilalagay doon yung mga flight. Ganun doon ba, hindi ba? Tinanggal ho yun during the past administration that the government will not guarantee that the flights will be there. Uh, do ilalagay doon yung mga flights. Eh, kawawa naman yung investor ng ganun. Eh, kung tatapusin yun within a few years, how many billions will be spent, tapos hindi ilalagay doon mga flights, option na lang, eh, that will become a big white elephant. Uh, to the chair, uh, palagay po namin, uh, lilipat din po ang mga airline doon sa sa bagong airport no first kasi po uh, Manila is already congested no so uh, uh, additional flights uh, cannot be accommodated in uh, Manila no and uh, this airport will be able to uh, serve uh, the additional requirements no secondly po uh, this airport is not too far from Manila no uh, it's only 25 kilometers from uh, Bulacan to uh, Luneta. No? And the plan is to construct a, an elevated highway over the coastline of uh, Bulacan uh, to Manila. It will only take uh, 25 to 30 minutes no, from uh, the airport to the center of Manila. So, uh, palagay po namin, uh, this will also be attractive for uh, airlines to operate. No? Last question na lang talaga, Madam Chair. The last na, last na to. No, because I'm curious of the different uh, infrastructure projects that is being uh, supervised by the OTR. Kasi alam naman po lang natin ang maraming problema. Now, uh, under the helm of uh, uh, Secretary Bautista, we hope that the, he will push for the uh, implementation of these several projects which were suspended, terminated, whatever, during the past administration. Isa na lang po. Yung, there was a proposal from a private uh, sector uh, to construct an elevated uh, road running along the whole stretch of EDSA. Ano na ang status nun? Was it shelved or is still ongoing uh, evaluation? O talagang wala na yun? Sa ngayon po, uh, wala po kaming uh, pinag-uusapan tungkol dito. No? Uh, palagay po namin ito ay uh, it's a very good idea but uh, as of now, it will be very difficult to implement po. Why? Uh, it will cost uh, so much money. Uh, oh, but it will, not, it will not be the government will spend for it. It will be a private sector. It will be a tollway. Actually, it was proposed... Uh, about two or three years ago by uh, San Miguel Corporation. However, hindi in-entertain ng past administration. I believe that you should pursue that because this will now decongest. Alam nyo, ngayon grabe, two hours papunta po dito. One hour and a half at the minimum. So we should find uh, de uh, device uh, another plan to decongest uh, uh, EDSA. Eh, wala pa tayo hanggang ngayon. You could see the other uh, developed countries in Japan or saan pa, elevated skyway. So there are two, may sa baba, may sa taas. So, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, I hope uh, you try to see that uh, proposal. I-revive nyo yun, maganda ho yun. 
I have no more questions, Madam Chair, finally. Thank you. Finally, thank you very much, Sen <laughs> John Pimentel. We'd like to uh, now recognize uh, Congressman uh, G.P. Padernos. Uh, good, mo good morning, Madam Chair, uh, distinguished colleagues sa lahat po ng bisita natin dito and uh, to the Secretary. Uh, Madam Chair, this is not... Uh, may question sana ako sa dami ng nagtanong. Nasagot naman na ni Secretary. Itangkita naman natin na uh, uh, I would like na lang to manifest my full support para sa confirmation ni Secretary Bautista. Nakita natin sa talakayang ito na alam na alam niya ang gagawin as head ng DOTR. There is no doubt that he is highly qualified. Bagamat may mga paalala yung iba kong colleagues na parang snake pit ito, kaya mo yan. Kitang-kita naman na kayang-kaya ni Secretary yan. And yung experience nyo sa private sector, kung saan siya namuno ng mga malalaking kumpanya at malaki ang naitutulong ng paggabay ng mga importanteng ahensya sa pagtitiwala sa kanya ng ating mahal na Pangulo. So, he has my... Uh, 1,000% support, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. And uh, alam ko may nakatingin ka na sa akin. Ayaw mo na akong pagtanungin. So hopefully, magtuloy-tuloy na to. And this is the third time na humarap si Secretary. And I hope, uh, konti na lang to. Good morning, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman uh, GP. Uh, we move on now to Congressman Gasetaya. Thank you, Madam Chair. Magandang umaga sa lahat. Few questions, uh, Madam Chair, to the good Secretary. First, uh, way back 2017, or in the proposed 2017 budget, uh, the former Secretary already committed to uh, include in the government's program, the expansion of the Bacolod Silay Airport. It's now 2022 and 2023 is just a few weeks from now. We haven't heard and seen anything for the development of uh, the Bacolod Silay Airport. So may we know the policy, the plan of the good secretary uh, for the Bacolod Silay Airport, Honorable Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman uh, Gasataya. Uh, for the uh, Bacolod Airport, po, there is a an unsolicited proposal no, uh, for a private sector to uh, operate uh, uh, Bacolod Silay Airport, no, and uh, we will uh, we will entertain uh, the unsolicited proposal. Uh, we are ja we have asked them to uh, resubmit the unsolicited proposal based on. Uh, the new IRR that uh, the government just uh, released. No? So we're expecting that uh, they will submit that uh, unsolicited proposal uh, before uh, the end of the year, Paul. Along that line, Honorable Chair, may we request the good secretary to please include uh, in the discussion, maybe they can look the province and uh, the city you know, as we as they, are, as they will be receiving that uh, proposal, Honorable Chair. So that will be a guide and uh, accordingly and uh, malalaman namin kung ano yung nangyayari because at the end of the day, it is the entire province and the city of Bacolod uh, na gumagamit ng Bacolod Silaya Airport. Thank you. Uh, this might be parochial in nature. The second question, Honorable Chair, is this might be parochial but this affects seven other provinces. No? It is in line with the uh, uh, laws that uh, Congress uh, approved you know, uh, in the previous years, the establishment of uh, seven or eight uh, LTO licensing centers, and that includes the one in Bacolod, uh, the Negro Occidental Licensing Center. So may we know, may update na dito, uh, Honorable Chair. To the Chair, uh... Yun pong uh, establishment ng uh, mga LTO, uh, uh, we we will request uh, the new uh, LTO uh, ASEC no to uh, work on this uh, as soon as possible para matapos na po. No? So, Pendam, you can just give us an update, Honorable Chair. No? The office will await for any development that 
uh, along that line. Last two questions, uh, and uh, we'll just uh, request also the good secretary to please give us an update on the uh, request which we made for the expansion and the development of the Banago port. No, PTA committed during I think the budget hearing or in one of the hearings that they will visit us in Bacolod, no, but. Uh, now, wala pa akong natanggap na uh, update. Uh, they committed na pupunta sila sa Bacolod, no? So, sana ma makapagbigay sila ng development regards to the development of the Bacolod, uh, Banago Port, Honorable Chair. Mr. Secretary, would you like to respond? Yeah, through the Chair po, uh, the, uh, the General Manager of uh, PPA, no, uh, will have... Uh, give you a visit po, and see to it that we attend to uh, the requirements of the port. No okay, thank you. Last point, Honorable Chair, uh, Madam Chair, may we request the good uh, Secretary to please consider providing or putting up a satellite office in Bacolod for LTFRB. The regional office is in Iluilo. We are having a lot of problems with LTFRB on the issue of uh, alleged corruption, the complaints of the transport sector, the having a hard time, the implementation of modernization, and a lot of uh, uh, correlated issues. So we are looking at one of the solutions is to have the permanent satellite office in Macolod so that uh, the entire transport sector in Macolod and the entire Negros Occidental, it would be easier for them to have access. So maybe they can consider, the good secretary can consider putting up the satellite office while the legislative process is still ongoing. We filed a bill for that uh, proposal, Madam Chair. Secretary? Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh... Yes, Congressman, we will uh, work on it po. In fact, uh, palagi pong tumatawag sa akin yung uh, mayor ng Bacolod uh, regarding uh, issues about LTFRB. And uh, I think po we really need to have that uh, office in Bacolod. No? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. So we'll just manifest our full support for the confirmation of the good secretary. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Congressman Gasataya. We move on now to uh, Congressman Abet Garcia. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Good morning, uh, dear colleagues. Magandang umaga po, Secretary Bautista, and to the whole BOTR family. Uh, my first question uh, is uh, with regards to our... Uh, may I know, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, if the PPA General Manager is around? And dito po. Uh... Ano dyan ba? Parang I don't see him. Uh, sorry po, lumabas daw po, bumalik sa office. Kanina po nandito siya. <laughs> uh, kasi yung, I know, Mr. Secretary, you're new on the job, although this is your uh, uh, probably second or third time uh, in government. Uh, but my questions uh, involves some details about our ports, and you may not be privy because you're new. Kaya I wanted to... Uh, uh, have the GM of PPA around when I'm asking questions. Pwede ba siyang tawagan para bumalik, Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes, I was saying, Madam Chair, na yung tanong ko po tungkol sa ports. And since bago si Secretary, uh, baka hindi po na alam yung ibang detalye. That's why I wanted the GM to be around. So kakaalis lang dahil bumalik sa office. I was asking the secretary through the chair. Uh, yes, I uh, would like to request uh, the secretary probably to call or request one of your uh, EAs to call the GM to come back. Since we have, uh, well, so, so far we're just waiting for Secret Senator Alan Peter if he has to have a few questions. Actually, it's a, in my list, it's only uh, uh, Kong Abbott who will be asking questions. But before you do so and continue with the with the line of question, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, Congressman uh, Romualdo. Yes, his presence. Good Good morning. Yes, go ahead, uh, Kong Abe. Madam Chair, may I defer my questioning until the people GM arrives? 
because I specifically requested for his presence uh, this morning, Madam Chair. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of our Senate President and Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Mig Subiri. Uh, yes, Majority Floor. Ma Ma Madam Chair, considering that we have to tackle uh, deliberation on Secretary Akusar, Secretary Balisakan, and some DFA, uh, while we're waiting for uh, GM uh, Santiago of the PPA, may, may I propose that we suspend the hearing for now and uh, continue when the when the yeah um sorry for my latest i had another meeting this morning breakfast meeting which lasted a long time my apologies to the secretary I, this sp actually didn't usually doesn't attend committee meetings but i'm here because of all of you because you are all my dear friends but um May I ask for just one minute suspension so we can confirm madam chair yes session suspended Question resumed. Uh, Congressman uh, Abed, please continue with their line of questioning. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I'll just, uh, Mr. Secretary, ask questions while awaiting the General Manager of the PPA. Uh, in the meantime, for us, we don't waste time. Magtatanong na lang po ako. So my first question is regard with regards to our ports. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Secretary, you were with the President during his New York and during that trip, uh, the president talked to many stakeholders, including investors that have interests in the Philippines. And uh, in one of those meetings, if you were uh, privy of the details, one of the uh, concerns of uh, the investors in the Philippines are, are is the problem and challenge with regards to port congestion. Uh, is that correct, uh, Mr. Secretary? Yes, yes, uh, Congressman. So this is a big problem because uh, how can our economy take off? How can manufacturing uh, thrive if we have very, uh, we have many and various challenges with regards to our ports? So my first question is, uh, ano ginagawa po ng PPA? Uh, 
uh, not only now or yung mga plano moving forward, pero anong ginawa nila during the past years? Bakit umabot po tayo sa ganito kung kailan nasasakal yung ekonomiya natin because of third congestions? So yun po yung tatanong ko sa PPA. Uh, under you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman, for that question. No? Uh, tutupo, na, tutupo na nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, port congestion. No? Kaya po, uh, kailangan pong uh, we develop uh, new ports. No? Uh, I understand that uh, in, uh, in Bataan, uh, we have this, uh, we have two ports that are uh, operational. No? And uh, according po to uh, PPA, uh, they have supported the uh, the uh, the improvement of uh, the port in Bataan, the one that uh, they operate, no, uh, I understand that uh, they have spent, uh, I think, uh, more than 200 million pesos in uh, improving the port uh, of uh, Bataan, no, uh, and at the same time you have uh, your own port po dun sa sa export processing zone, no, which is not under uh, the supervision of uh, Philippine Ports uh, Authority. No? Uh, ang PPA po is uh, looking for uh, other areas where we can uh, expand uh, the operations uh, because uh, Manila po for one, uh, the North and South Harbor talaga pong uh, maliit na. We have uh, three operators there. And uh, pati po sila uh, nahihirapan because of port congestion. No? Kaya uh, we're looking at uh, other areas, uh, possibly po sa Batangas, no? because uh, right now Batang Batangas port is uh, operational, but uh, kailangan na rin magkaroon ng expansion. No? So yun po ang tinitingnan ng PPA no? para mapalaki po yung uh, port operations uh, and mailipat yung ibang mga uh, shipments no? from Manila to Batangas. No? And uh, aside from that, po, we're also looking at uh, expanding uh, uh, Cebu, Cebu ports. No, uh, yung Cebu ports authority, po, authority is uh, looking at uh, expanding uh, its operations in Consolation Cebu, no, uh, which will require uh, reclamation of like uh, 25 hectares, no, to support uh, the economy of the country, no. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. But these initiatives should have been done decades ago. Para hindi na po tayo nagkaroon ng port congestion at ma-unleash yung potential ng ating ekonomiya. So, yun nga, what has PPA been doing all these decades na umabot tayo sa ganitong problema na kailangan pa makarating sa, sa ating Pangulo dahil sumasakit yung ulo ng ating mga Investors. Kaya nga yun ang gusto ko sanang itanong. And you are correct, just across the bay from Metro Manila, nandun po yung ports ng PPA in Bataan, across Manila Bay, and they are very underutilized. Sayang yung potential kasi katapat lang kami ng Manila and we can be an alternative to decongest uh, the ports and even the transportation in Metro Manila. But it's not being done Sayang yung potential ng strategic location ng uh, probinsya ng Bataan, Mr. Secretary. Through the chair, uh, meron pong uh, mga proposals to build uh, a new port uh, malapit dun sa gagawing uh, bridge uh, from uh, Maribeles to uh, Cavite. No? So uh, meron na pong uh, nag like, nagbigay ng intention or intent, no? to put up this transshipment port po no and uh, ito po ay pag-aaralan naming mabuti no pa po uh, Mr. Secretary that is correct and that is not because of the initiative of the PPA it's because of our initiative yes. uh, uh, so ano yung ginagawa ho ng PPA the Philippine Ports Authority na ang laki-laki ng uh, income and yet mabuti tayo sa problema ng ito uh, another question, Mr. Secretary. Kung ilan ang probinsya ng Bataan sa income ng PPA nationwide? Uh, I don't have the number po, but uh, I, can, I can ask for it. No? But uh, I understand po that uh, malaki yung share ng Bataan dito sa income ng uh, PPA. No? Uh, the last time I checked, Mr. Secretary, uh, a few years ago, 
na sa top 3 or top 4 income earner ang bataan sa PPA. So, uh, yun din ang isa kong gusto tanong. Malaki yung income ng PPA sa bataan, strategic yung location ng ports nyo sa bataan, and why isn't it being developed to a level na makakatulong sa problema ng ating bansa? Uh, yan po ang gagawin natin, Congressman. No? We'll see to it that uh, we look at it, no? we will uh, study, and uh, if uh, needed, uh, we will improve po the port of uh, Bataan. No? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Secretary, I think the GM has arrived. The GM of uh, PPA. Yes, uh, there is a line, uh, there is a question uh, proposed by Congressman uh, Abed Garcia with regards to uh, concerns of uh, Mr. J. Santiago under PPA, correct? That is correct, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, kindly uh, proceed with your line of questioning. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Yung ibang nanong ko po kanina, nung wala pa si GM, ay uh, walang info si Secretary. Now that the GM is here, baka siya pwede mag-feed ng info sa ating Secretary para masatisfy po yung katanungan itong representasyon nito, uh, Madam Chair. So, uh, going back to my first question, um, since wala dito si GM, I will repeat it at uh, for for our very elusive GM to uh, to hear my question. Uh, GM, good morning. Uh, si Presidente uh, pumunta sa New York and the Secretary was with him. Miniting niya po yung mga investors doon, yung may mga interest dito sa Pilipinas, yung may mga manufacturing and so on and so forth. And ang isang major concern po nila is port congestion. Uh, narinig po yata yun yung secretary at marami pong nakarinig. The speaker was there, Speaker Martin. At uh, yung mga ibang manufacturing sa Bataan, dahil nandun po yung head office, ay nakalating din po sa amin. So, I would like to ask PPA, Ano ho tayo umabot sa ganito? Ito bang ginagawa natin for the past decades? Bakit tayo nagka-port congestion? Didn't we foresee this? At ito po yung nakastrangle ng ating economy. Uh, bakit hindi natin nagawa ng paraan ba't umabot pa po tayo sa ganito? So, baka matulungan na po Madam Chair si Secretary ng GM na nandito na po ngayon. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Secretary, you, you might want to confer with um, GM uh, Santiago. We can, if you want, can he be like a resource person? Um, Madam Chair, uh, if you wish, we've done this before. We can uh, administer the oath to, uh, as a resource person, to uh, GMJ Santiago. And he can be asked questions directly. Kasi kawawa din naman si Secretary, bago yes. bago pa lang yan. Okay. Newly minted, kawawa naman yung ating mga Secretary. That's, so, with the permission of the body. Mr. President, okay. thank you. Yes, uh, we'd like to request uh, the Secretary to uh, administer the oath to uh, GM J. Santiago. Mr. S Santiago, please your rise, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Yes, I do. Mr. Santiago is now under oath as our resource person. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. GM Santiago. Uh, Kong Abet, kindly continue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, GM Santiago. Morning, sir. Yeah. Uh, did you hear my first question? Uh, good morning, Your Honors, uh, through the Chair and with the permission of our Secretary. Sure. Sir, uh, as far as uh, PPA is concerned in, uh, with respect to the ports in Manila, we have not experienced any port congestion from 2016 until now. In fact, from 2016 until now, uh, we have experienced only about 70% yard utilization, uh, sometimes at a high of 80% yard utilization, primarily because, and we're experiencing it now, primarily because of the influx of cargoes heading towards the Christmas season. Maybe what the good uh, representative from Bataan is referring to is that there are delays, the queuing of vessels or the queuing of ships uh, particularly in the port of Manila. There are a lot of factors which contribute to the queuing. Uh, number one, 
As far as unloading of cargoes are concerned, it is not solely PPA's responsibility, Your Honors. We have the Bureau of Customs to contend with also. We have the Bureau of Quarantine to contend with also. There are permits from the Department of Agriculture, etc. Uh, but in addressing the expansion of uh, the Port of Manila, uh, MICT is being expanded by adding two additional berths. Uh, we've started... Uh, uh, development for an additional birth, which is birth eight. And then uh, moving forward to 2024, there will be an additional birth in MICT and expanding the yard area also, Your Honors. So, uh, Mr. Uh, GM, Madam Chair, yung uh, isang cause po ng per congestion is the lack of development in our ports, as you, as you uh, explained. As far as yard utilization, Your Honor, is concerned, uh, we are only experiencing about 70 to 80 percent. Normally, optimum is 70. Uh, it's a little bit high if we reach about 80 percent. So we're maintaining it at that level. Uh, it is not like what we've experienced back in 2014, wherein uh, we've experienced about almost 100 or at least over 100 percent utilization uh, in the ports of Manila. What we are talking about now is that moving forward, planning forward, the reason why we're expanding the BERTS in MICT is because we're anticipating future growth already, Your Honor. We are not developing as a backlog. We are developing for future growth, Your Honor. Actually, uh, Mr. GM, kaya po tayo mabut sa ganitong problema kasi nga the growth has been happening. Uh, especially after we're moving out of the pandemic. At uh, ito nga po ang sinabi ng ating mga investors, uh, business community sa New York, sa ating Pangulo. So what I'm saying is that the PPA should have foreseen this and developed other uh, alternatives na mas maging efficient yung ports natin. Uh, alam naman po natin na ang labanan dito sa ports ay oras. You of all people would know this. And dahil dito, uh, dapat nakita natin kung ano yung mga solusyon. Aside from the interagency coordination na dapat ginawa rin po natin. So, uh, ang insya ng Batan is just across Manila Bay. And you have good ports there but uh, underutilized na pwede naging alternative na decongest yung Metro Manila. But for some reason, for many many years, uh, it has been neglected. So, bakit po ganon, GM? Thank you. Uh, your Honors, uh, with the permission of the Secretary, we we appreciate the observation of the Honorable Representative from, from Bataan. Uh, and it is true that uh, we have, the PPA has two ports in Bataan. Uh, one is in uh, Limay and the other one is in Orion. In fact, over the recent years, from 2016 until 2022, we have expanded both ports both Limay and Orion, we've actually added an additional 30 to 40% yard capacity in Orion. Uh, although the vessel traffic in both Limay and Orion is very nominal, Your Honors, uh, we don't see the same traffic that we're seeing uh, in the Manila ports for obvious reasons uh, because the, the ports that are smaller and uh, as far as ship calls are concerned, uh, the preference really, Your Honors, is still the ports in Manila rather than Bataan because they will have to contend with uh, additional uh, land transportation costs in bringing all of the goods from Bataan to, uh, to the manufacturing areas in Bulacan and in uh, Valenzuela. But be that as it may, Your Honors, we are continuously marketing also the ports in Bataan and uh, primarily Orion Port. In fact, uh, we have developed a container yard, a barge terminal in Tansa Cavite, and we're also so that we can decongest uh, the traffic in the port of Manila so that uh, road traffic will be lessened. And we're also marketing actually Orion also to serve as the barge terminal for the north, uh, Your Honor. Except that, as I said, the limitations there is that the, the end users are a bit far off or far away from uh, from the ports in Bataan as compared to the ports in Manila. But we are continuously marketing the ports, Your Honor. In fact, during the last administration, when, when we were in the middle of the pandemic, we were pushing traffic 
for Limay and Orion through change. We, in fact, even built a quarantine facility in Orion Bataan, Your Honor, to serve as the quarantine facility for our inbound seafarers, Your Honor. May I interject? Uh, there was a study previous to this uh, during the time of uh, my father-in-law, Senator Ramon Revilla Sr., that a container port and airport in Sangli Point B uh, created. Uh, as, as of now, we have a uh, uh, small airport now in uh, Cavite City, and uh, it, it is hopefully it might be in the pipeline under the OTR that a container port be established since your issue is about uh, the the length of time traffic etc and uh, may i suggest also to uh, the DOTR family to make a study in in las vegas you would notice that a railway system is built to, to uh, transport containers carrying goods the side roads uh, just to eliminate traffic from the main highways. Uh, it would be a very good study if you would do a side road uh, from uh, Cavite City going towards the Manila port and to other areas where you should transport goods. And it would uh, be a great help to the province also of Cavite and we are building a bridge going towards Bataan. So maganda po yung magiging uh, traffic flow nyan if ever this is considered. Uh, any of the GMA uh, may respond to my, my uh, suggestion. Thank you, Madam Chair. In fact, uh, studies have been made and PPA has been part of the study. Uh, there was a proposal, you are correct, there, is, there was a proposal to build a cargo or container terminal in Sangli. But as you know, uh, container terminal operations will require the installation of cranes. And considering the location of the Sangli Airport and there are proposals for further development or expansion of an international airport in that area, it will be very difficult to build cranes in that area because it will interfere with air traffic. Uh, also, we've studied also, as you mentioned, using uh, uh, the trains, a freight rail system. But as a result of the study, as you know, most of our rails pass through major thoroughfares in the in Metro Manila. So the trains that we have now, which are commuter trains, normally takes about maybe five minutes or seven minutes just to cross the road. Freight trails, freight trains are longer trains. It will probably take more than ten or fifteen minutes just to let one batch of uh, one, one batch of uh, containers uh, on a freight rail to cross through either uh, South Superhighway or Quirino or Espana. And based on that study, we realize also that it might create further traffic, at least for the for the land transportation, Your Honor. Um, I, I was suggesting that this would be a separate railway system for crates like the ones in the United States where you travel from LA to to Las Vegas hiwalay kaya hiwalay yung mga sasakyan to the crates so walang traffic sa crates uh, walang I, I don't know if they have I'm sure there are no toll fees being paid by this crate. So, lesser gasto sa mga negosyante for that matter. Just a suggestion, kasi uh, sa Dubai ginagawa na ito, hindi ka makakakita ng malalaking mga container trucks sa major highways. Only cars and vehicles travel through their major highways while the container uh, vehicles, uh, a railway system is continuously uh, not bothered by traffic whatsoever. Uh, yes. Uh, Madam Chair, can I interject? Yes, uh, Congressman Gasetay. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very Sorry. much. Well, Jim, uh, based on your statement, you said that uh, the Project Manila, you are working on a 70% capacity, am I right? Y yes, Your Honor. So in other words, so it's not congested. No, Your Honor. As far as your utilization is concerned, Your Honor, it's not. So in other words, you're working on a 70 to 80% capacity. So, but it is very clear also that the roads leading to the ports are very now congested. Even with the working, even if you are working on a seven percent, seventy percent capacity in the pier itself. So, I think what is being thought of here is you improve all other ports to bring down to improve the capacity of the underutilized ports. If I am correct, so you will actually bring down that traffic congestion go leading the Manila ports. Because if, Mar if the Manila ports, you will be working on a 50% capacity and the ports already 
is established, you bring up the, the, the capacity. In other words, what is what will happen is definitely you are going to decongest the traffic, the land traffic, going to the ports of Manila. Is that what you're trying to say? Am I clarified? Yes, you are correct, Your Honor. In fact, uh, what we have been doing and what we will be doing within uh, next year is that we are developing and improving the, our port in Iloilo. Because as you know, our ports, the main international ports in, in the Philippines are feeder ports. So a lot of the international cargoes come into Manila first and then are shipped domestic uh, through the other ports, uh, whether in Visayas or in, in Mindanao. We're looking at developing Iloilo so that a lot of the, the cargoes, the containers, which are with final destination are destined for the Visayas area, will now be coursed directly through Iloilo so that we reduce about 30% of the cargoes landing in uh, Metro Manila so they will go direct uh, to Iloilo so that they can be further uh, delivered from Iloilo to the other uh, other ports in the Visayas area, Your Honor. So am I now to believe that the trust now of PPA is to develop uh, develop the underutilized ports to be able to decongest Manila, not the port per se, because you are only on a 70% capacity, but the traffic that is causing uh, the ports of Manila, the entire little Metro Manila. So is that what you're trying to tell me now? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the, there is really a challenge because a lot of the end users, uh, the importers, are really located within a 5 to 10, 15 kilometer radius from the ports. Uh, the warehouses are there. So we really need to decongest the roadways leading to the ports. And by, by doing, in, in, in order to do that, we need to limit the inbound cargoes and then relocate them somewhere else. So that a lot of the end users, say for example, if there's an end user in uh, Iloilo or in Cebu, instead of you know coursing their cargoes through Manila, they can course it directly to Iloilo already, Your Honor. Uh, so that is your class now. Yes, Your Honor. My, yes. Thank you very much. That's all, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you very much. Um, there's a line of uh, questioning uh, from Congressman Abbott, but I'd I think uh, Senator uh, Villar would like to interject. Um, I just want to inform the Secretary of the Department of Transportation that the Department of Agriculture will build a free first border facility next year. We gave a budget for that. And I wish to inform you that it will not be in Port of Manila because you cannot give a space in the Port of Manila. So somebody has volunteered to give la to let us use land land in uh, Bulacan where the first border facility would be. And there's another one somewhere in Cebu oh, for the Visayas and another one in uh, in Davao City for Mindanao. I just want to inform you because uh, para makasama sa plano nyo kasi uh, we have given money to the Department of Agriculture to implement the first border facility years ago but they were not able to implement because they said they cannot get space from the Manila port. That's why we're now uh, the stakeholder of agriculture are lending their land in Bulacan so we can build a first border facility there. So I hope uh, I will write you and we will coordinate so that uh, this will not cause any problem to us because kaya lang in earnest yung mga uh, agriculture stakeholders to build this because of what happened to the ASF and the and the and flu. Parang uh, wala tayong first border facility kaya nakakapasok yung mga sasakit sa ating bansa which is to the detriment of our agricultural sector. Kaya I will write you a letter with regards to this so we can plan accordingly. Okay, yes, thank sure. you very much. May I ask for a one minute suspension? Uh, one minute suspension.
session resumed. Actually, bonbons are the limits in front of the world. I didn't know it. We would like to recognize now Congressman Abbott Garcia to continue with this uh, uh, questioning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, if I may continue the question. Uh, with uh, due respect, I disagree with the findings of the people with GM. Na they developed new yung Bataan ports and are not being utilized. Uh, do you know, GM, that the and the ports in Bataan, except for the PPA ports, are thriving. Lahat ang laki ng kita. Uh, in fact, Madam Chair, uh, Bataan is the top three income earner for the Bureau of Customs. 10.5 billion pesos a month. Pangatlo, next to the South Harbor, next to the Batangas port, Bataan na po. So, you cannot say that hindi strategic at hindi uh, in the uh, uh, or well, well and utilization supports ng bataan baka mali lang yung development plan na ginagawa ninyo because all the other ports are thriving except for the underutilized PPA ports 10.5 billion pesos a month sa customs pangatlo sa buong Pilipinas so how can you say na hindi nagagamit baka mali lang yung development plan nyo Mr. GM Thank you, Your Honors. Uh, we, we, we take the observation of the good uh, congressman from Bataan uh, with great value, Your Honor, and uh, we will take it from there. Uh, we will reevaluate the, the focus of PPA insofar as the, the ports in Bataan are concerned. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of private ports in Bataan, and what we will do is we will uh, redirect the efforts for the PPA ports in Bataan to supplement or complement the private ports there. Uh, in fact, as per our uh, last meeting with the uh, good congressman also, I have already given instructions to improve uh, the requested improvements there. Uh, and uh, we have already programmed further expansion uh, for the ports in Bataan, for the PPA ports in Bataan. But uh, we value the, uh, the suggestion and the observation of uh, Congressman uh, Garcia. And uh, we will... Uh, we will make the most out of the facilities of PPA in in, uh, in Bataan uh, and uh, probably use that use the ports there as uh, alternates for the port of Manila uh, so that we can further uh, and uh, make the best use of the government facilities there your honor yeah kasi naiiwan yung ports ng PPA sila lang yung naiiwan or kayo lang naiiwan and the other ports are thriving so you cannot say na underutilized, baka mali yung master plan, mali yung implementation. For example, alam nyo naman na pre-pandemic, we had a public-private partnership sa ferry, the best ferry in the country, galing Japan. Mall of Asia to Bataan, six trips, less than one hour. Uh, we congest also, Metro Manila. And palagi ako sumasakay doon, kasabay ko mga OFW, papunta sa NAIA 1, 2, 3. So, it was doing well. So, medyo malakas na yung alon, lumakas lang ng konti, hindi na makadak sa Orion Port. And I've mentioned this to you before. So, paano magagamit yun? And it's even a missionary route that the province undertook. So, nasan yung support ng PPA doon? Mr. GM. Thank you, Your Honors. Your Honors, we commit that uh, we will consult with the provincial government of Bataan, uh, <clears throat> especially with respect to the ferry operations, Your Honor, and uh, we will uh, install the additional facilities, uh, convert any of the facilities there to make sure that they are uh, adaptable to the intended operation uh, of what, what, what the services in those particular ports actually require, Your Honor. Because, if I may explain, Your Honor, most of our ports are common user terminals. Therefore, they're supposed to be designed to accommodate uh, general services. Uh, we have very limited ports which have uh, specific uh, specific use. And uh, for in, in, in the case of uh, Bataan, Your Honors, uh, although there's very nominal or minimal cargo there, I, I agree with uh, Congressman Garcia that there used to be a uh, thriving ferry operation there. And uh, we will address the requirements of the ferry operation to make sure that the terminal 
uh, is able to address that uh, those requirements, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, may I ask uh, uh, Mr. Uh, GM, how many po ang bataan sa income ng PPA sa buong Pilipinas? If I'm not mistaken, Your Honor, I think bataan is within the top 10, probably about 7th of all the PMOs in uh, PPA because PPA has, has 25 PMOs. Bataan is about 7. Uh, are you sure? Yes, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, because the last time I checked, nasa three or four, uh, medyo mataas. So anyway, nasa top 10, mataas pa rin. So, um, kung nanggagaling po sa bataan ng uh, malaking income ng PPA, sana pupunta yung income, but hindi po natin binabalik sa bataan? Your Honor, if I may explain, uh, PPA derives revenues uh, two ways, one from operations and one from regulatory. Regulatory revenues or regulatory fees are derived out of wharfage, anchorage. Uh, these are fees which are paid by vessels when they are offshore. There are revenues which are derived from terminal operations which are cargo handling operations. Uh, as in response to the question of Congressman Garcia, PPA operates about 120 terminals all over the Philippines. Some terminals, in fact, the ports in Manila, South Harbor and MICT contribute to 70% of the revenues of PPA. The 30% is derived from, uh, all, from all the other terminals. So what happens there is, with whatever revenue PPA derives from all of its terminals as a universe, what PPA does is we fund the development of ports in other areas using the other funds. So we do not specifically direct whatever revenue PPA derives from a particular location and just plow it back into that particular location, especially if it's not needed. Uh, we prioritize, Your Honors. Uh, I, I see Congressman Romualdo here. Uh, we have been developing our ports in Camigin. We have, I think, sir, about three ports there. None of those ports, those are basically passenger ports and, and Roro ports. What PPA derives from Roro ports is just 50 pesos for, uh, for uh, as a Roro fee. It will not be enough to sustain, but because of the revenues that we derive from the other ports, we are able to fund the other ports uh, all over the Philippines, Your Honor. Because if it will be, uh, if we will follow that model that whatever we earn, it should be plowed back into the location, then the bulk of the revenue of PPA will have to be concentrated on the ports in Manila. And as, as correctly pointed out by Congressman Sagarbaria, we need to develop ports outside. And we will use those funds that we derive from the port of Manila to develop other ports outside of Manila, Your Honors. Um. Madam Chair, I have no problem with developing other ports in other areas in the country. But we should also take care of the goose that lays the golden egg. Otherwise, we're going to lose it. And since one of the top in Bataan, and clearly you stated earlier, na strategic, because all the other ports are earning, yung PPA lang yung nahuhili. So, dapat binidevelop natin to also decongest Metro Manila and to ease the burden of our exporters and investors na pinarating nilang problema kay Presidente nung nasa New York. So, uh, kailangan alagaan din po natin. Otherwise, if it will just rot away, tapos mawala yung income earner natin for PPA, ano mangyayari? Pati yung mga new ports in other areas, anong kukunin yung pondo para pagawa sila? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Uh, the point of Congressman Garcia is well taken and uh, we will uh, proceed on that basis, Your Honor. Thank you. Doon po sa, ano, Mr. Madam Chair, uh, Sir GM, doon po sa Freeport na tinulungan po kami ni Senator Loren Ikrit, the, the Freeport area of Bataan, 2010. Uh, Pre-pandemic, it was the fastest growing Freeport in the country. Ang daming locators, ang daming trabaho. And yung mga locators doon, yung iba doon sa nagparating ng concern nila sa port congestion sa New York. Because our locators are spending around 70,000 pesos per TEU para makarating sa main port natin sa 
Metro Manila. So 70,000 pesos per TEU. And we export a lot of products uh, every month, every year. So times 70,000, how can our manufacturing be competitive and how can we create more jobs? I think this is one of the points nung nirace nila sa New York with our president. Congestion, cost of uh, logistics, and so on and so forth. So uh, what can the PPA do about this? Well, yeah, with the permission of the chair, and uh, to address the you know, the observation of Congressman Garcia that the PPA ports in Bataan are underutilized. If I may explain, Your Honor, this is the primary reason there is because, and as correctly pointed out by Congressman Garcia, the other ports that are, are, are thriving, there are a lot of private ports in Bataan. And that's why if they have private ports, the utilization of the government port, which was there, Probably ahead of those private ports becomes uh, less end. It becomes less end, and that's why we're experiencing a downtrend in the utilization. But uh, again, uh, of course, we 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 understand, we acknowledge, and we respect the the authority and the jurisdiction of the Freeport area of Bataan. And uh, in fact. Uh, as, as uh, we previously discussed with Congressman Garcia, the Freeport area of Bataan has jurisdiction to uh, to develop, run, regulate the ports within their own jurisdiction. So um, we will coordinate, uh, Your Honor, with the Freeport area of Bataan through the intercession of the Office of Congressman Garcia, so that we can find out how we can, you know, cooperate with the Freeport in so far as uh, port operations are concerned, so that we can, uh, you know, clearly define the roles of uh, each each government agency or each government entity, Your Honor. Yeah, the reason why the private ports are uh, developing because hindi nila masahan yung PPA ports. That's why they they rather do or invest in their entire, uh, in an entire port rather than do a concessional agreement with, with the PPA. Nandun na yung facility, sayang. So, there's something wrong there. So, dapat mag natin, what can we do para win-win? Uh, Mag-strive yung private ports, pero yung government ports hindi mahuli. Through a partnership or whatever scheme about development to decongest Metro Manila, which is costing us a lot. Uh, Madam Chair, Senator uh, Alan Peter Cayetano pointed out in the last hearing uh, the JICA study, wherein he mentioned that we're losing, uh, pre-pandemic po ito, at ang nangyayari na naman yun, 3.5 billion with a capital B pesos a day a day, 3.5 billion pesos a day because of the traffic in Metro Manila. Uh, time wasted, productivity loss, pollution, and so on and so forth. So kasama po dito yung port congestion natin, kasama po dito mga ibang inefficiencies natin, uh, which is under the OTR. Um, ito po yung ginawa kong basis when I presented to NEDA and DPWH justify the bridge that will connect Bataan and Cavite. Uh, nung pinondohan po nila ng feasibility study, lumabas na it has a 34% internal rate of return. The highest among all the build, build, build project na ating pamalaan. So kaya priority po ito, baka next year mag-groundbreaking na po dito. So habang wala pa yung bridge, kasi mga 4 years pa po gagawin yun, the next best thing as having the bridge are the nautical highways. So kung lumabas sa feasibility study na 34% internal rate of return, ibig sabihin, if we do now develop our nautical highways because Bataan is strategically located across Metro Manila, malaking uh, solusyon ang maibibigay natin. Yun yung gusto kong ipaliwanag which the PPA and the GM doesn't seem to acknowledge. Sinasabi nyo, dinedevelop nyo pero underutilized. Hindi nyo lang nakikita yung big picture. Hindi nyo yung big picture dahil malaking solusyon po ito. Not just for Bataan but for Metro Manila pending the bridge. Sinasabi na nga ako ng feasibility study. And the next best thing is the nautical highway. And that is under your uh, your jurisdiction. And we have the existing ports 
uh, to show that it's thriving. So, let's take a second look with the PPA ports na semi-developed na po na konti na lang pwede rin maging malaking potential to earn more income for the PPA so, and the uh, solution for the problems of decongestion in Metro Manila. Yun po sana yung tignan natin kasi may na-neglect nyo yung napaka-strategic na parts nyo across Manila Bay which can be a solution. Yes, Your Honor. We, we, we will do that, Your Honor. Uh, Congressman Garcia, do you still have uh, a few questions? Uh, it seems that we're closing on to yeah. lunch Thank time you. and we have other secretaries too. And yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think I got my point across sa PPA and I hope after this uh, hearing, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the our secretary and the general manager and the entire DOTR, including the PPA, will look at Bataan in a different light. Now, it is very strategic, underutilized, potential that we can uh, utilize to solve our problems. Uh, I would uh, agree to what our majority floor leader said earlier. Now, although our secretary is really a nice guy, in fact, dito po sa file, nakalagay tantalizing smile. Wow. So, and I agree. Ma, siya po ay uh, uh, napakabayat, napakabuti, kaibigan po nung uh, uh, aking ama, yung dati niyo pong kasama, si Governor T Congressman Pep Garcia, and uh, friend of the families. Uh, pero, may sinabi ni Congressman El Rey, baka bukod sa bayat, kaila may konting bagsik. Nang sa ganon, may implement natin itong mga reforms. Nang sa ganon, guminhawa po yung ating mga pasahero, yung ating mga exporter uh, at magbuhay lalo yung ating ekonomiya at makapagbigay ng maraming trabaho at magandang buhay sa ating mga kababayan. So with that, thank you, GM uh, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, you have my, my vote. And thank you, Madam Chair, for your patience. Thank you very much, Congressman Garcia. I think... Madam uh, Chair. As, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Kong Ramon. Yes. Uh, I will not ask... With the information of the uh, Madam Chair, I will not ask any more questions with the Secretary uh, except for uh, uh, to uh, for the uh, for his confirmation this afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, this representation is uh, manifesting uh, for the confirmation of the Secretary this afternoon uh, after uh, the, the committee hearing, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman Romado. I think uh, Senator Risa has one question with regards to PPA. Yes, Senator Risa is recognized. Salamat muli, Madam Chair, at uh, magandang umaga po, uh, GM Santiago. Uh, just to also bring this to the attention of the good secretary, uh, may, may we request from the PPA general manager a status report, even if briefly now to the committee, but a complete status report in writing to the committee through our chair on the port operations in Calapan. After the long-running port operator, Calapan Labor Service Development Cooperative or CalCEDECO was changed. Despite being efficient, and having been performing outstandingly. Sedeco is a duly organized and registered cooperative operating since 1975, operating for 46 years, with outstanding and exemplary record of performance. Sedeco lost its contract at the PPA as a cargo handling operator. The co-op's main business, cargo handling and Roro operations, had been subjected to public bidding under PPA's Administrative Order Number 03-2016. The co-op wanted to continue their work as a service provider with respect to cargo handling operations at that port of Galapan City. They had requested for the renewal of contract of cargo handling and Roro operations with PPA at that port. And I'm asking this question, uh, GM, Secretary, Madam Chair, on behalf of the 11,203 members from the low-income sector, primarily dock workers and port workers at the Calapan Seaport. Uh, GM, Madam Chair. Yes, GM, please yes. answer. Madam Chair, as an update to the, to the 
uh, operations of uh, port operations in Calapan, Mindoro, as correctly correctly pointed out by Senator Antiveros. Uh, the operations, the cargo handling and passenger operations in the port of Calapan, Oriental Mindoro, was bidded out pursuant to uh, PPA Administrative Order 03-2016, which was passed under the administration of uh, then President uh, Noynoy Aquino, and which was implemented only during the administration of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Under that framework, Madam Chair, renewals are not allowed for expired contracts. The cooperative which was cited by Senator Antiveros had an expired contract, I think, at, at the very least about three three years that their contract has expired. I'm not sure, but definitely more than one year. So the only way grant a contract to a new service provider, to a service provider, is through public bidding. We are bound by the by the framework which was adopted and approved by the PPA Board of Directors, Your Honor, which comprised one, the Secretary of Transportation, the Secretary of the Department of Public Works and Highways, the Secretary of NEDA, the Secretary of the DTI, the Secretary of Finance, the Mar Marina Administrator, uh, the Philippine Ports Authority General Manager, and uh, the Private Sector Representative, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, GM, Madam Chair. Uh, I will look forward to the complete update in writing. But just for the record, just for this morning or just for this noon, uh, Madam Chair, Calcedeco would uh, contest that uh, their contract was already expired. And so they protested that uh, the contract to operate uh, was uh, bidded out. And I asked this question in the context of uh, situationer for all cooperatives being subjected to privatization, even if they have valid existing contracts not expired, and especially if they are well-performing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, efficient, performing outstandingly uh, with that outstanding and exemplary record of performance. So perhaps uh, GM and especially Secretary, uh, possible po i-bring ulit ito sa attention uh, ninyo ng department ng Calcedeco. I recall that a colleague and a former colleague of our house um, uh, counterparts, uh, Rep. Boy Umali and Rep. Doy Liachon, uh, also uh, brought up this issue, the side of Calcedeco during the previous Congress. Salamat po, GM. Salamat po, Secretary. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Senator Riza. Uh, GM, I do believe that uh, the line of questioning is already finished. You are excused. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Senator Loren, uh, a short manifestation. Um, thank you very much, Madam Chair. I have no questions because whatever problems we're experiencing now is not uh, on the account of the good secretary. In fact, it's a great challenge for him to accept this position. And so I would just like to convey my manifestation of support for Secretary Bautista and will help him uh, accomplish all the tasks at hand. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Senator Lauren. If there are no more questions or inquiries from the members, mm -hmm. oh, before I do that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Senator Grace Poe, who is uh, present online. Okay. We'd like to acknowledge uh, the majority of lawyers. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair. I May I make the motion? Yes, sir. Uh, with honors. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm thankful to all my colleagues to allow us to confirm such a, one, such a pleasant, uh, I'd say, responsible and reputable fellow by the name of Jimmy Bautista. I mean, I was close to him, not because of his, his stint in PAL. We became close because we would see each other every Sunday in the church in Magallanes. And he would be praying there with his wife. I'd be praying with my wife, of course, and my family. But Jack, um, again, close. It just so happened that he became president of PAL for so many years. Here's a fellow that does not need to go through the learning curve. He knows his, his stuff. Uh, even when he's sleeping, he thinks about the transport problem of the country. And we need him right now because 
of the traffic jams, because of the traffic congestions due to the Christmas season. We need him to focus on his job. And that is why, if, if I may, Majority Leader, uh, do the honors of moving for the approval on committee level, the ad interim appointment of our distinguished gentleman from uh, the Transport Sector Secretary, Jimmy Bautista. I saw Ms. President. Yes, Jimmy there Dr. is a motion to recommend. Second. Oh, yes to the plenary for the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of uh, Mr. Jaime Jimenez Bautista as, uh, or should I say, Mr. Jaime Bautista Jimenez as uh, Secretary of Department of Transportation. Is there any objection? Hearing none, um, the interim appointment of uh, Mr. Jaime Jimenez Bautista as Secretary of the Department of Tourism is hereby recommended to the Commission and Bank for its confirmation. Mr. Major Madam Chair, there being no other matters discussed, I move to adjourn the meeting for a lunch break. Thank you, everyone. 30 minutes, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. We are requested to be back by 11.35. No, 12, sorry, 12.35. 12.35. The motion of the Majority Floor Leader there be no objection. The meeting of the Committee on Transportation is hereby adjourned.
the Committee on Human Settlements and Urban Development of the Commission on Appointments in the first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. The Secretary of the Commission is directed to call the roll. The Honorable Officers and Members of the Committee on Human Settlements and Urban Development, Vice Chairperson Representative Lani Mercado Revilla, Member Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, Representative Virginel G. Biron, D. Senator Francis Chis G. Escudero, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, Representative Albert S. Garcia, Representative Greg G. Gasataya, Senator Christopher Bongo. Present. Senator Risa Ontiveros. Senator Lauren Legarda. <laughs> Representative Oscar Oka G. Malapitan. Senator Amy R. Marcos. Senator Grace Poe. Representative Jordine Jesus M. Romualdo. Representative Manuel T. Sagarbaria. Senator Francis Tol N. Tolentino. Senator Cynthia A. Villar. Our ex officio members, Vice Chairperson Representative Ramon N. Guico Jr. Majority Floor Leader Representative Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villafuerte Jr. Assistant Majority Floor Leader Representative Rodante D. Marcoleta. Minority Floor Leader Senator Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano. Assistant Minority Floor Leader Representative Jose Gay G. Padernos. Assistant Minority Floor Leader Representative Johnny T. Pimentel. The committee chairperson is present. Also, the chair of the commission, Senate President Juan Miguel Migs F. Zubiri, is present. Thank you. Our uh, secretary, with the 11 members present physically and two pre uh, present online, so we have a quorum. Uh, good, good afternoon, everybody. A pleasant day, ladies and gentlemen. Under consideration of this committee is the ad interim appointment of Mr. Jose Rizalino Larion Acuzar as Secretary of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. May we now hear Secretary Villarica's report on the status of the jurisdictional requirements in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the rules of the Standing Committees and other relevant information about the appointee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. The Commission on Appointments received on October 6, 2022, the current ad interim appointment of Mr. Jose Rizalino Larion Acuzar as Secretary, Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. And on even date, it was referred by the Chairperson of the Commission, Senate President Juan Miguel Migs F. Zubiri, to the Committee on Human Settlements and Urban Development for its appropriate action pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the new rules of the Commission. Likewise, the said ad interim appointment was broadcast over PTV4 station on August 3, 2022 at 6.53 p.m. and published on August 4, 2022 in two newspapers of general circulation, the Manila Times and the Manila Standard, pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the Rules of the Standing Committees. Secretary Acuzar has complied with the submission of the mandatory documentary requirements on November 2, 2022, as provided for in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the new rules of the Commission. No sworn opposition was filed on the ad interim appointment of the appointee. That is all, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. Thank you, Secretary. The Chair likewise recognizes the late arrival of <laughs> George, Congressman Jordan Jesus Romualdo. <laughs> My good friend, thank you for coming, sir. He, 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 he is late because he's in a cast. He, yes, yes. He's in a cast. But That's, just understand. yung lakad niya. That's understandable. Anyway, I just, I would like, the chair would like to request the secretary to please take your seat or your position. Likewise, the chair would like to request the secretary to administer the oath, uh, administer the oath to Secretary Acuzar. Secretary Akuzar, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Yes, I am. So help you, God. Mr. Chairman, the appointee is now under oath. Thank you. Before we begin, uh, Secretary Akuzar, if you have an opening statement, please uh, read it now to the uh, commission.
to the distinguished chairperson and members of the Commission of an Appointment, my colleagues in government service, ladies and gentlemen, magandang hapo po sa lahat. Mr. Chair and the members of the Honorable Body, my, my life's journey as a real estate developer and businessman started from the personal yet noble desire. For myself and my family, I believe I have thrown the right path to make it happen for the nation. However, we still have a winding but reversible road ahead of us to provide decent shelters in well-planned communities for all Filipinos. Being tapped by President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. as one of his emissaries of the, uh, for delivering the needs of expectation of the Filipino people. I am making it my mission to address the country's housing backlog in the next six years while establishing the sustainable township with viable source, sources of livelihood for the home dwellers. Building on this foundation, the Pambansang Pabahay sa Pilipino program came to fruition as an industry practitioner myself. I have witnessed the two major bottlenecks that hinders the growth of the sector's production and access to funds. My vast experience as self-made businessman has taught me a lot of things. One of the pits, one of that pits that most now is daring to take out, uh, daring to take out of the box strategies, coming up and, try, and trying to innovate approaches to others' peers to trail. At the end of the president term, the goal is to clear the blighted areas and danger zones in the met metropolis and the strategic and strategic location the build needs the base the settlement for our kababayans waiting to have houses for their own especially the unprivileged i am concerned with the former settler families who are forced to stay homeless to sustain their source of living i have observed that previous public housing projects have been unsuccessful unsuccessful as families refuse to relocate away from the cities. Hence, I am pushing to provide the shelters to ISF already living and working in cities to remain in close, remain in close proximity to their livelihood. I am grateful and honored for the President's trust and confidence that I can make it happen through the leadership of the country's primary government agency, the management of housing, human settlement, and urban development. At this point, I am humbly respectfully presenting myself as our vision before you, before you to serve the Filipino people as the Secretary of the Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development. At the end of the day, a home for everyone, walang Filipino na walang bahay sa sariling bayan. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, um, Mr. Secretary. The Chair would like to acknowledge the arrival of Congresswoman Lani Mercado Revilla. So, before uh, the point is now ready to respond to any comment or questions from the members, but before that, the Majority Leader, acknowledge. Mr. Chair, thank you. In behalf of the 12 member House contingent headed by our Chairman Mon Gico, uh, the House always votes as one. I would like to express that we fully support the nomination of Secretary Akosar. And the House contingent, uh, nine members being present here, will no longer ask any questions uh, regarding the nomination. And just to reiterate in behalf of our head, that if we support the nomination, Secretary Oxar, as uh, Secretary of uh, Housing and uh, Human Settlements and Urban Development. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Majority Leader. So on the part of the House of Representatives, there will be no more questions huh? to my colleagues in the Senate. Anybody would like to ask okay. questions? Yes, Senator Rizal Otiberos, you are now recognized. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Magandang hapon po, Sek Akuzar. Uh, tungkol po muna sa Marawi Projects. Ang pinalitan po ninyo na si Sek Del Rosario ay nagdeklara na Mission accomplished sa Marawi. 
Pero samantala, 30% lang po ang mga dating nakatira sa Marawi ang pinapayagan ng bumalik at uh, magpundar ng bahay. So ang karamihan po ay di makabalik dahil sa conflicting claims sa lupa. So paano po kaya naging mission accomplished? At nakakabahala rin po sec na anong na buwan ang hindi sumasahod ang mga empleyado at staff na nagtatrabaho sa Task Force Bangon Marawi. So paano po kaya itong dalawang bagay sec, Mr. Maraming salamat po Senator. Ka kagkapon po dahil po sa problema ng iyan, kahapon po pumunta po ako sa Malacanang. Pumunta po kay ES, kay Executive Secretary Bersamin. Yan, pinag-usapan po namin yung problema nung, nung Marawi. Uh, kasi po, nakatigil po kasi yung uh, anong panahon po ni President Duterte. Sumulat po si, uh, si Executive Secretary ni Presidente Duterte na stop muna yung uh, paggastos po doon sa Marawi. Kaya po na-hold po yung sweldo. At hinayaan po niya magkaroon ng uh, bagong uh, rights, yung, uh, yung bagong administration to continue the program. So kapon po, medyo na-delay po yung uh, pagpipirma po ng, ano, ng, uh, ng program na kung tutuloy po, dahil po nagka nagkapalitan po ng uh, executive secretary from galing po kay Uh, Sekretari Rodriguez. Ngayon, kahapon po, nagkaroon ng pagkakato. Nagkausap po kami ni, uh, ni, uh, ni, ni Sekretari Bersamin. Sinabi niyo po sa akin, ngayong araw po, ipipirmahan niya po yung sweldo ng uh, uh, mga tao po hindi, hindi po sumusweldo for six months. Kapo sinabi po niya sa akin at uh, siguro din Secretary Jerry ako sir. Sabi mo na sa mga tao diyan sa mga taga uh, Marawi, susuweldo na sila bukas. Mabuting balita po 'yan, Sex. So ibig sabihin ng yung araw po, po. nasa kamay na po nila, susuweldo nila. Opo. Makakarating na po. Makakarating na po. Opo. So sa ilang araw pa po 'yon dahil kung sa Marawi two days time. sila. Kasi two okay. days time Opo, po. Opo. So, aasahan po nila uh, itong mga empleyado at staff ng Task Force Bangon Marawi na sa araw ng Webes, opo. nasa bulsa na po nila yung kanilang sweldo ng, sa loob ng anim na buwan. Opo, opo, opo. Alright, marami salamat po dyan, uh, Secretary, Mr. Chair. At paano naman po yung claims na uh, mission accomplished sa Marawi? Samantalang 30% pa lang po ang nakakapagpundar na muli ng bahay. Kaya po, kaya po inihingi po namin yung continuation ng Marawi para ma-assess po namin kung ano po talaga nangyari sa Marawi. Okay, fair enough po yun, Sec. Pero ngayon na may go signal na po mula sa Malacanang, magpapatuloy na po yung uh, programa doon. May initial timetable po ba kayo para yung 70% uh, ay makabalik at uh, ma kapag patayo ulit uh, ng kanilang bahay? Ah, uh, yun po ay pagka pag-aaralan na po namin kasi pagbibigay kami ng go signal. Pero sabi niyo po kanina may go signal na. May go signal pa po. Okay po. So at at least in principle maasahan po na yung same sense of urgency na meron doon sa bagong four piece sa pabahay ni hmm. pag-uusapan natin mamaya ng konti. Ganun din po yung sense of urgency magkakaroon ng magkakaroon department na po. sa Marawi. Naintindihan po namin yung problema doon Mr. Uh, Chair. Kasi po na naggastos po yung gobyerno ng 60 billion, konting-konting panahon na lang eh, para matapos na po. Sayang po. Sayang po talaga. 60 billion na po na gastos ng gobyerno at uh, higit pa doon, pati in non-monetary terms, ang nawala Apo. sa ating mga kababayan doon. At mga constituents Apo. Apo. ng DISU doon, mga constituents po ng uh, Task Force Bangon Marawi. At pero palagay ko hindi po konti na lang ay matatapos na kasi nga po 30% pa lang po nila ang uh, naka, nakabalik muli dun sa, sa syudad. So baka malaki-laki pa ang kailangang gawing trabaho, at least two-thirds pa. Susubaybayan na lang po namin uh, para po doon. Salamat sec, uh, Mr. Chair. And what can you do differently uh, kumpara sa nakaraang... Uh, administrasyon sa Task Force Bangon Marawi. Moving forward po, bilang kayo na ang magiging sec ng DISUD. 
What can you do differently kaugnay ng uh, rehab rehabilitasyon ng Marawi? Uh, I request po namin sana kung po pwede dahil kasi po yung yung dispute po monitoring po lang siya, coordinating lang siya. Hindi na download po yung pera sa bawat department kaya medyo may katagalan po. Eh. Pero ngayon po, pinag-uusapan po namin kung pwede po sana baka sa local government iligay na para mapabilis. May mga may mga uh, may mga, mga step po kami ginagawa para mapabilis. Interesante po yan, Sex. So, ibig sabihin ang magiging primary partner nyo, yung city government na Mina Mayor Gandamra. Opo, opo. Kasi maliit na lang, eh. konti na lang. Eh. I see. Well, again, Sex, I'm sorry, hindi pa ako makasapagsang ayon of konti na lang. Opo, opo. Malaki-laki pa po. Pero interesante kung meron kayong mga innovations na gagawin in terms of project implementation, yung partner nyo on the ground. At muli susubaybayan din po namin yun para masuportahan kayo dyan. With the permission of yes, Sen. Lisa. Chair. Just like to interject, Sec, kasi po, uh, based on the experiences with Yolanda and other rehabilitation programs, matagal talaga. It takes five, matagal talaga ang housing eh. No? Yung pag-consolidate, hmm. testing ng soil, land development, vertical. Yung mga Yolanda, yung iba ngayon pa lang. No? Yung mga Udet, mas matagal pa huyan. So I think yan magiging problema ng, uh, ng Marawi. Would it be possible kung ito yung in-offer kong solution doon na... If the government concentrates on the infrastructure, the utilities, tapos mag-extend na lang tayo ng financial assistance for the residents to build their own homes, mukhang mas mabilis ho yun. At I think that's very acceptable. Would you consider this? Baka ako dun papunta doon sa study namin kasi para mas mabilis. Kasi pagka gagamit pa sa ita sa, sa department, ang tagal po ng, uh, ng, uh, ng action. Kaya lang... Kung maaari doon sa, tama po kayo doon sa local. And likewise, yung po mga nakatira na sa Mlisa, no? uh, there are traders, no? mga, mga maranaw dyan. Eh, yung po mga pabahay doon, they have, the Muslims, our brother must have their own customs, traditions that we have to respect. Eh, po, yung po mga rehabilitation housing, pare-pareho ho ng itsura yan. No? Eh, minsan nga, pag nakainom, baka sa ibang bahay ka maka, mapasok eh. Di ba? So probably those are the things that we have to consider. But more importantly, we have to respect the customs and traditions of our brother Muslims. That's why we are suggesting na baka mas mabilis sa San Luis na we extend assistance, they will build their own homes. Ang poproblemahin na lang ng gobyerno yung utilities and the infrastructure that are needed. Thank you, San Luis. Salamat din po, Chair, at uh, SEC, uh, dun sa pag at least expand ng menu natin ng mga posibleng uh, modes of implementation ng DSUD sa, sa Marawi. Uh, so, dako na po ako, SEC, Mr. Chair, sa paksa ng pag-ibig funds kaugnay ng housing backlogs. So, in the past, there were allegations that the funds of workers in pag-ibig na sa ngayon ang assets ay lampas na sa 700 billion pesos had been misused. So paano po kaya makakatulong pa rin ang pag-ibig para mabawasan ang housing backlog? Dito nga po sa pambansang pabahay, sila po yung unang, ta sila po unang nagbigay ng pondo para dito po sa pambansang pabahay. Nag-alat po sila ng 250 billion para sa pambansang pabahay. Yan po ang malaking bagay na may tutulong po ng uh, pag-ibig dito sa housing program po sa uh, ating bayan. Saka po yung mga GFIs, mag, 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 since nagtaya na po yung pag-ibig, susunod na po sila maglagay din ng pondo para sa pabahay po. Salamat, Sek. Sabi po nyo, mga 200... 50 billion. Opo. Ah, so, mga halos lampas one-third sa kasalukuyang assets ng pag-ibig na higit 700 billion. So, ano, malaking uh, commitment po ng pag-ibig dito sa bagong 4 piece sa pabahay. Okay po. Kaya uh, ba nilang pautangin yung 6 million uh, katao sa loob ng anim na taon Ah, samantalang hindi naman umaabot sa 100,000 ang pautang nila sa pabahay, kaya ba nilang maningil? At, uh, gugustuhin din po bang magbayad ng mga tao na madalas ay walang kinikita? 
Oh, ang, ang, ang programa po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yung pag-ibig po, hindi po ang, ang take-out mechanism po natin, banko, ang pag-ibig funds, ang gagamitin ko lang po para sa developmental, para to start, mga start po ng 60 million houses. Kasi po talaga hindi po kakayaan ng pag-ibig kasi kailangan po dyan, eh, mga 6 trillion take-out. So ang ginamit po nating uh, formula, gamitin yung capital market o what kind of crap, yung private funds na banko. Kasi po pag bankong ginamit ko, may ikot-ikot lang po yung pondo eh. Babalik din sa kanila, tapos ihiramin mo ulit, babalik ulit sa kanila. Kaya po, yun po nakita namin. Ang kailangan lang po namin talaga doon, yung interest subsidy. Kasi pag interest subsidy, lahat po nang maihirap, hindi naman, lahat po nang tatrabahan, tatrabaho. Janitor, lahat po ng waiter, lahat po ng uh, manggagawa, magkakabahay. Kasi doon po nakatutok yung programa para sa mga manggagawa. Kaya po yung mga blighted areas, karamihan po dyan mga manggagawa nandyan eh. Kaya ang focus namin doon sa manggagawa. Uh, salamat po, Sek. At dahil sinimulan nyo na rin uh, sagutin yung follow-up question ko, so... Kaya nga po nung nakaraang budget debates natin ay nagpanukala uh, ang ang disud para sa interest subsidy na magmumula sana sa Kongreso no sa sa ating gobyerno. At ito po sana kasi ang sasagot sa paano babayaran ng mga tao na mababa naman ang Baba. ang kinikita. Siguro susubok na lang tayong muli sa mga susunod na budget debates at mga susunod na taon. And really, best of luck sa pag-mobilize nyo ng, uh, sa loob ng capital market, yung mga Apo. private bonds o ano pa mang, mga instrumento para i-mobilize yung, uh, uh, yung, yung para sa construction talaga ng mga, ng mga bahay na ito. And of course, uh, sa plano po ninyo, yung mga bangko na ang bahalang maningil. Meron naman silang capacity, capacity na gawin iyon, ika nga. Sige po, tignan po natin. Sana po talaga ay uh, magka, mag, tu, matuloy po ito. Um, dako na po ako sa disud budget uh, proper. Ah, well, kaya rin ko tinanong yung nauna sec, Mr. Chair, tungkol sa pag-ibig funds. Kasi alam naman po natin sa karanasan sa track record ng NHA halimbawa, uh, kulang pa sa 30% ng pautang ang nasisingil ng NHA. So naghahanap po talaga tayo ng mas efficient opo, na sistema para yung napaka-ambisyosong plano ninyo ay talagang maipatupad pati on the side uh, ng mga magiging participant beneficiaries. So yun nga po, uh, sec, Mr. Chair, dako po ako dun sa DSUD budget. Um, gaya ng napag-usapan natin, ngayon, ngayon lang, humingi, humingi kayo ng 35 billion pesos. Humingi kayo kada taon 35 billion pesos sa DBM para sa inyong ambisyosong ang programa na mahabol natin, maisara yung housing backlog. Pero... Sec, Mr. Chair, sabihin po natin, if DBM grants only 4 billion pesos every year, uh, sabihin nila, sabihin natin due to a lack of fiscal space, no? Para sa interest subsidy, para sa uh, 600,000, kahit 600,000 lang na pabahay sa anim na taon, paano po yung magiging plano ng DSUD under your leadership sa ganyang pong senaryo? Marami po kami nga naiisip na financial instrument just in case yung national government wala maibigay na budget. Meron pang may tinatawag tayo dyan na uh, housing bonds uh, na pwede mag-float. Nag-usap na rin po kami ng uh, Department of Finance kung pwede gawin yun. Just in case lang na mahirapan po yung national government to give us the support of, of the interest subsidy. Ano pong sabi ng DOF? Pag-aaralan po lahat yan. Galing din sa property development, alam niyo na yung susi sa kita sa negosyo ay location, location, location. Mm -hmm. Yung negosyo ito. So sa totoo lang po, uh, actually napakaganda at marami ang magkaka-interes sa mga tinatawag ninyong uh, waterfront high-rise residences na itatayo para sa ating mga kababayan. Mm. Ang dati kong tinatawag ng mga danger zone mm. na location ay prime waterfront pala uh, kung maayos naman ang engineering at design. 
kahit malayo pa sa waterfront, wala na yatang 30 square meter condo unit ngayon na mas mura pa sa 3 million pesos kapag nagkabentahan. Uh, hindi kaya bitawan lang o isublease ng ating mga uh, kababayan itong high-rise units? Ah, uh, maraming pong issue dyan eh. Pinag-usapan na po namin yun eh. Ang tingin po namin sa mahihirap, lalo sa mga ISF, talaga pong uh, ma- may hihingi lang ng pagkakataon yun din yan. Eh. Siyempre, kanya-kanya pong uh, uh, suwerte talaga yung buhay. Kung sila napagtunan ng pansin ng gobyerno, napagbigyan po natin isang unit, talaga po pang unit niya pwede ibenta ng 3 million. Pero sabi, sabi nga po ng iba, sabi nga po sa akin ng mga may, ng mga, uh, may hirap, Eh, pagbigyan nyo naman, uh, bigyan nyo naman pagpakakataon na magkaroon kami ng tatlong milyon. At kami uuwi na ng probinsya. Pero, da- <laughs> Opo, pero dahil hindi nga ganun yung scheme ng 4 piece sa pabahay, uh, ang, kaya mas- napaka or masyadong ambisyoso yung plan ko uh-huh. kasi gusto nyong mag-generate ng pagkakataon na dito pa rin sila on-site or in-city. Oh, exactly. Hindi po sila alis po. Uh, Hindi po sila alis. Kasi sayang po kasi pagkakataon na po nila magkaroon ng property in-city. Mr. Chair, with the permission of Senator Antiveros, yes, just, uh, just an interjection, um, Secretary Acuzar, um, sana pag-aralan din ho natin yung mga past experiences ng pamahalaan. Pagdating ho dun sa medium rise type of uh, socialized housing. Kasi kung makikita nyo ho ngayon, I am sure marami ho dito sa kasamahan ko na laging dinadaanan itong pabahay sariles na um, sad to say ho, medyo eyesore na ho siya ngayon. Lalong lalo na na natayo itong skyway. Uh, hindi ho talagang magandang tanawin. Then in fact, uh, ang, ang appeal ko ho, Secretary, eh, baka pwede pag-aralan ho kung paano natin uh, marirevive at maayos itong um, bahay sariles dahil nga uh, coming from a uh, perspective sa for tourism ho na pag may mga turista tayo na papuntang norte ganong tanawin ho yung makikita nila yun lang po Mr. Chairman Thank you Sen. Nancy, Sen. Lisa Salamat Mr. Chair at Sen. Nancy uh, So Sec um, maganda din ang location ng mga bahay na malapit sa mga train stations. Hmm, tama. Uh, 50 yata ang magiging train stations mula sa Clark uh, hanggang sa Matnog. Tama. E eh kung magkaroon ng mixed land sa 50 of sa 500 meter radius mula sa train stations ay 500,000 na housing units daw ang pwede doon ayon kay architect Einsiedel. Einsiedel. Na opo, consultant po naman ng DOTR. Kung sa 1 kilometer radius ay 2 million housing units, siguro ang kasya. At kung 1.5 kilometer radius mula sa mga stasyon ay lampas-lampas na daw Tama. na 6 million. Yung target po <laughs> uh, ng inyong departamento sa loob ng anim na taon. Tama po yun. Tama po, po, yun. Tama po yun. Siguro may medyo ibang computation pa kayo. Pero uh, ang sa akin lang, the point is that the rail projects of Build, Build, Build offer low-cost city-connected land to this wood. Opo. So, parang isang halimbawa na magandang partnership posible sa pagitan ng dalawang departamento. Nag-uusap po kami. Transpo. Ah, so nag-uusap po kayo. Po. Maigi Sinabihan po. Sinabihan po ako ni Secretary Bautista na okay. tig- yung lahat ng istasyo ko, Secretary, uh, mag-land banking ka na. Mm-mm. Opo. Yun po. Uh, actually, dun din papunta yung tanong ko eh. Dahil Opo. sa ganyan pong po setup, di po ba may Tama. access din sa trabaho? At baka kung maayos yung deployment ninyo ng regulations at relasyon din sa mga LGUs, uh, alam ko tinitignan ninyo sa 4P sa pabahay na prime partner nyo rin sa plano, ay hindi mo man kakailanganin. Ito, ano ah, idea no. Hindi mo man kakailanganin ang support ng DBM. So, malakas ang interes at pandama ng mga gayang gaya ninyong uh, property developers sa ganitong oportunidad. So, yung Tama. tanong ko po, ano ang pwede ninyong gawin para yun ngang location, location, location na yan sa palibot ng mga infrastructure projects ng gobyerno ay maging asset Para sa housing for all. Nasimulan nyo na po dun sa land banking. Pero ano po yung mga susunod na mangyayari? Kaya nga kami magpo-plot ng bonds, land banking. Kasi yung, 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 kapuang gobyerno gumawa ng access road, 
at hindi nag banking. Ang nakikinabang po, privato lang eh. Tumakinabang din ang gobyerno. Kaya, pero kung wala naman po tayo pag-aaral mo pa at dumaan po yung uh, highway dyan, dumaan po yung train, hindi naman makikinabang ang gobyerno. Kaya sinasabi ko po sa department namin, dapat, kas kasabi kay Secretary Bautista, pag night na na pinpoint mo sa amin kung nasaan ang mga station, that's the time na mag-land banker. At ang makikinabang hindi po din lahat ng local government din. Ipapam out din namin sa local government. Pero kailangan po may mag-umpisa lang at para ma 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 hold lang po yung land banking. Salamat po, Sec, uh, Mr. Chair. Huling pagsako na lang po para ngayong hapon eh, tungkol dun sa uh, NHA illegal spending. Uh, please narrate to us the adverse findings of COA with regard to NHA's illegal spending in 2021. What steps have you taken already to address this? Uh, meron po bang ma makakasuhan? Yep. Uh, Pinag-uusapan po ngayon yan at uh, pagka uh, tingin ko po magkakaroon ng report sa amin po yan. Sino pong nag-uusap at mag-uulat po sa inyo? Yung uh, COA, saka po yung uh, management po ng NHA. Okay. Uh, sana po kapag uh, nailabas na yung ulat ay maibahagi nyo rin po sa amin dito sa Kongreso, both houses, kasi very concerned po talaga kami for the long term, yung tamang paggastos ng napaka-precious na uh, perang ito para sa pabahay, lalo na kung pinag-usapan ng isang ambisyosong plano tulad ng sa inyo. Opo, opo, opo. opo. Salamat, Sec, Mr. Chair. At huli, para sa akin ngayong hapon, uh, hindi po pala ang NHA... Uh, dito sa tanong kong ito, kundi ang private sector developer partners ng pag-ibig ang magtatayo ng mga bahay, kahit socialized housing. So ano na po ba ang magiging bagong misyon ng NHA? So moving forward na po, mag evolve po ba yung mandate niya? Pag-aaralan po namin ngayon yan, kung saan po sila babagay para isang uh, key agency ko po. Kasi po ang agency ko po, implementing arm ko po yung NHA, saka yung SAPC. So pwede ko rin batuhan po ng other development po yan, using the private funds. Alright, maraming salamat uh, Secretary. Salamat po. Best of luck pa rin sa inyong ambisyosong plano na una kong natutunan <laughs> ng budget debates at ngayon ay uh, mas napag-uusapan pa natin dito sa inyong CA hearing. Salamat po. Maraming salamat Mr. Salamat. Chair. Thank you, Senator Santiberos. Before we continue, the Chair would, uh, would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Francis Tolentino, likewise, uh, Congressman Virginel Fergbiron. The next uh, to ask questions or make a manifestation is uh, Senator Bongo. He's now with us online. Senator Bongo, you now have the floor. Unmute. Your audio, uh, Senator Bongo. Please unmute. Oh, no, uh, mute. Bong. Senator Bong. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, and uh, everyone here today would like to relay my <clears throat> earnest uh, support for the ad interim uh, appointment of Secretary Jose Rizalino Acosar as uh, Secretary of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Uh, during the term of former President Duterte, one of the goals of his uh, administration was to alleviate the lives of our kababayans uh, through resilient and comfortable housing. In fact, according to DISHUD, the agency was able to provide uh, and finance uh, 1,038,577 housing units from 2016 to 2021, built based on quality standards set by the government. Hindi po hinayaan ng uh, nakarang administrasyon na uh, substandard ng social housing na, na turnover sa ating mga kababayan. Ayaw po ni dating Pangulong Duterte ng uh, ganon. Gusto niya quality at uh, uh, spacious. Uh, President uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. encouraged the use of state-owned lands for housing projects patunay lamang po ng mga efforts ng ating pamahalan upang tugunan ang lumulubong numero ng ating backlog sa social housing. Secretary Akusar, full support po tayo uh, sa mga advokasya at mandato ng DISHUD. Salamat po for choosing to serve the people bilang public servant at palagi po nating unahin ang kapakanan at pangangailangan ng ating mga kababayan. Naniniwala po ako na during your time in the private sector, your experiences 
uh, their hub equip you with the skills necessary para po uh, makapaglingkod bilang ulo ng uh, DSHUD. Ipagpatuloy lang po natin ang uh, uh, nasimulan ng DSHUD at mas uh, pagbutihin pa ang uh, pagsiservisyo sa ating kapwa Pilipino. Naniniwala po ako na nakikita ninyo kung gaano kalaki ang pangangailangan ng ating mga kababayan for a sustainable and comfortable living condition. Hindi man po maging madali ang daan ang, sa pagtugo natin sa problema ng social housing. Napakahira po. Pero kasama niyo po kami uh, basta po para sa mga kababayan nating uh, Pilipino, lalong-lalo po sa mga mahirap. Sana marating natin ang ating uh, isang hangarin na wala na dapat na maging uh, squatter sa sariling uh, bayan. Uh, maybe ambitious po ito. Sana po pagdating ng panahon, wala na hong uh, uh, squatter uh, sa sariling uh, bayan. Sekretary Akusar, makakaasa po kayo sa aking buong suporta. Basta po sa kapakanan ng ating kapwa Pilipino. Salamat po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sir Salamat Bongo. Po. Before the chair, I would like to talk, would, uh, give the floor to the Majority Leader, Secretary Akusar, the de creation of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development is very dear to me. Being the principal sponsor of this measure during the 17th Congress, uh, um, we, uh, this was passed after more than 30 years no? uh, of deliberations. Hindi pumasa, pumasa. Uh, so after 30 years, natupad na rin ang ating pangarap na magkaroon ng isang tunay na departamento sa, para po sa pabahay. So a lot of this would rest on your shoulders. Napakabigat po ng ating mga, mga hamon, challenges. Is 6 million is no joke. But uh, you have to think out of the box. And I think you will be probably the right person for this kasi kakaibang inyong pag-iisip palagay ko magdutunungan tayo dito so uh, with that again I would like to uh, stress that the success of the program the housing program under your administration means that Congress we, um, we were not we, were, we are correct in pushing for the creation of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development so again this is very very very, very Close to my heart, as uh, we really toiled for about six, almost six years, just to pass, to be able to pass this landmark legislation. So, majority leader. Before the majority thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, leader. Yes, sir. Uh, just one, one, one minute. Lang. Okay. Manifestation as well. Yes. Um. Napakalaga po yung departamento mo, secretary. And I know you do not have to learn from the beginning. You are a developer yourself. You develop hundreds of thousands of homes all over the Philippines. And therefore, you know the problem from land acquisition, land banking, permittings. Dinahanan mo yan. Siguro nahirap baka is of you doing business as well. So now you can streamline everything and make it happen for our country. We have high hopes for the housing sector with you on the helm. And uh, we fully support your uh, confirmation. So yun naman po. We wish you all the luck. Sana po hindi katulad na ibang... Uh, uh, hindi uh, ko na, nakarang mga administrations, wala po kami nakikita masyadong malalaking housing projects with due respect, no? Uh, but now we'd like to see massive projects under your watch, massive turnovers of projects, at uh, talagang mabibigyan ng bahay yung walang tahanan dito sa ating bansa. Thank you, Secretary. More power. Mr. Chairman. Sir, ne, last na lang ho. Hindi, kasi huling panawagan na lang, Mr. Chairman. Kasi nabalita ho yung pag-ibig, baka magtaas ng contribution. Um, sana, Secretary, pag-aralan muna mo natin maigi dahil tumaas na yung PhilHealth, tumaas na yung SSS, eh baka uh, yung pag-ibig na yun. So, i-hold muna ho yung pagtaas. Apo, 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 apo. Okay. Mr. Chair, the 12-member House contingent honored our commitment not to ask questions, despite the fact that everyone is raring to ask questions and prepared questions, especially Congressman Lani. Uh, in the history of the 19th Congress, Mr. Chair, <laughs> this will be the fastest deliberation. But according to Spider-Man, <laughs> may I quote, Mr. Chair, with great power comes great responsibility. Wow. So, Mr. Chair, I would like to emphasize the swiftness of how we deliberated uh, the nomination of Secretary Akusar, we expect the same swiftness 
in the implementation of the housing program of our president. Yan lang po ang uh, hihangari namin sa inyo, Mr. Secretary. We support you. And uh, therefore, Mr. Chair, I move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Mr. Jose Rizalino Larion Acuzar, Secretary, Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. I so move, Mr. Chair. Second the motion. There is a motion to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Mr. Jose Rizalino Larion Acuzar as Secretary of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Is and duly seconded. So, there being none, the motion is approved. Mr. Chair, there be no other matters to discuss. I move to adjourn the meeting. On the motion of the floor leader, majority floor leader, do be second that there be no objection. The meeting is hereby adjourned.
alone uh, distinguished uh, members of the Commission on Appointments. The second meeting of the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development of the Commission on Appointments in the first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. Madam Secretary, Secretary, please call the roll. The Honorable Officers and Members of the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. Member Senator Marilurdas Nancy S. Binay. Representative Virginel G. Biron, MD. Senator Francis Chis G. Escudero. Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada. Representative Albert S. Garcia. Representative Greg G. Gasataya. Senator Christopher Bongo. Senator Risa Ontiveros. Senator Lauren Legarda. Representative Oscar Oka G. Malapitan. Senator Amy R. Marcos. Senator Grace Po. Represent Representative Lani Mercado Revilla. Representative Jordine Jesus M. Romualdo. Representative Manuel T. Sagarbaria. Francis Tol Senator Francis Tol N. Tolentino. Sen Senator Cynthia A. Villar. Ex officio members, Vice Chairperson, Represent Ramon N. Guico Jr. Majority Floor Leader, Represent Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villafuerte Jr. Assistant Majority Floor Leader, Senator Joseph Victor G. Ejercito. Assistant Majority Floor Leader, Representative Rodante D. Marcoleta. Minority Floor Leader, Senator Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano. Assistant Minority Floor Leader, Representative Johnny T. Pimentel. The committee chairperson is present. Also, the chairman of the commission, Senate President Juan Miguel Mix F. Zubiri, is present. Present. Uh, with 16 members present in person, including chair and two members present online, with a total of 18 members present, the existence of a quorum is hereby declared. The chair acknowledges, anyway, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, then. acknowledge that. Acknowledge. Secretary Balisakan, please take the designated seat. <laughs> Distinguished members of the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development of the Commission on Appointments, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon. The committee will take consider the ad interim appointment of Mr. Arsenio Molina Balisacan as, as Secretary of the National Economic and Development Authority, NEDA. NEDA is an important cog in the economic and finance teams in the cabinet. NEDA plays an important role at the forefront of the COVID economic recovery efforts. Secretary Arsenio Molina Balisacan returns at the helm of NEDA at this most crucial time to bring back the country to its pre-pandemic high growth trajectory, deliver rapid poverty reduction and reduce socioeconomic inequality. Secretary Villarica, please inform the committee on the status of compliance of the jurist Dictional requirements of the ad interim appointment under consideration pursuant to the new rules of the commission and the rules of the standing committees and other pertinent information relative to the appointee. Mr. Chairperson, your honors, the current ad interim appointment of Mr. Arsenio Molina Balisacan dated September 29, 2022 was received by the Secretariat on October 6, 2022. Secretary Balisacan's ad interim appointment was referred anew to the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development on October 6, 2022 by the Commission Chairperson, Senate President Juan Miguel Migs F. Zubiri, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. 
His ad interim appointment was published in two newspapers of general circulation in the Manila Times on July 28 and Manila Standard on July 29, 2022 and broadcast over PTB4 pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the Rules of the Standing Committees. The appointee, Secretary Arsenio Molina Balisacan, has complied with the submission of complete mandatory documentary requirements on August 31, 2022, pursuant to Section 24, Chapter 6 of the new rules of the Commission. Finally, Mr. Chairperson, Your Honors, Your Secretary has not received any opposition against the appointee under consideration. That is all, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. The Secretary is directed to please administer the oath to the appointee. Secretary Balisakan, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings? I do. So, you got. Mr. Chairman, the appointee is now under oath. Secretary Balisakan, you are uh, recognized. You may now proceed with your Introductory statement. Honorable representatives and senators, uh, members of the commission and appointment, ladies and gentlemen, good, good afternoon. I would like to thank the members of this venerable body for your consideration of my appointment as Secretary of the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA. Throughout my professional career, I've always considered it a distinct honor and privilege to serve my country, especially at no less than the highest levels of public administration and across several presidents. As our nation continues its full recovery and advances on its journey to prosperity, we are confronted with rapidly, rapidly changing market conditions and much uncertainty in the global environment. Challenged, yet unfaced, I commit to fulfill my duties and responsibilities as a member of the Marcos administration's economic team and to lead NEDA once more as it, as it contributes to the realization of the eight-point socioeconomic agenda and implementation of the Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028. Having said this, I humbly submit myself, your honors, to your consideration for my appointment as NEDA Secretary. Thank you. The appointee is now ready to respond to any questions, comments, or clarification from the committee members. So, Representative, uh, Johnny Pimentel, you're now recognized. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to put it on record that I'm not objecting to the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Secretary Balasakan. I believe that uh, he has the qualities, capabilities to head the department. But uh, let me take this opportunity to seek clarification regarding some issues, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Secretary, in 2018, um, COA investigated NEDA over the alleged misuse of 73.64 million pesos, which was used as incentives uh, given to NEDA executives during one year watch from 2012 to 2016. In fact, uh, the payment of the incentives was even called Cost Economy Measures Award, SEMA. And uh, accordingly, these incentives was taken from the savings from MOE. Now, DBM clarified that uh, they did not approve uh, the realignment. And therefore, finally, after uh, uh, investigation by COA, COA determined that the granting of incentives called SEMA to the NETA executives was not in accordance with COA rules and regulations, and therefore it was disallowed. And 
the NED executives were required to reimburse the incentives back to the government in the amount of 73.6 million pesos. In fact, uh, I think Kua ordered you uh, as the Secretary of NEDA and other officials of the agency to return to the government 73.64 million pesos in employee incentives, which was unlawfully granted in 2010 and 2012. Now, Mr. Chair, may I ask the good secretary, ano na po ang status nito? Did you reimburse the government regarding the findings of the COA? Before you respond, Mr. Secretary, I would like to uh, acknowledge the presence of Senator Cynthia Villar. You may now answer, Mr. Secretary, the question of the inquiry of uh, Congressman Pimentel. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, that uh, this all, all allowance pertained to the period 2010 to 2012, uh, Your Honor, and I was uh, appointed uh, NEDA in 2012. Uh, and so that uh, my the accountability that was um, or put on me was uh, for for that uh, 2012 per period. Uh, Your Honors, may I note that uh, in a COA uh, and bank this decision uh, dated uh, uh, January of this year, to, uh, January 2022, the COA found good faith uh, on the part of uh, the approving and certifying uh, officials, uh, including myself. Uh, and this is because uh, NEDA was never uh, forewarned about the defects of the grant uh, uh, of uh, SEMA as the previous grants uh, uh, thereof was uh, 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 not declared illegal or irregular, uh, Your Honor. So that's uh, the current, uh, that's the state of that case. But the Thank findings you. of the COA states that uh, um, you have to return the amount of 73.64 million pesos. So in short, uh, Mr. Secretary, actually you did not answer my question. Again, may I ask you, did you return the 73.6 million pesos that was disallowed by uh, the commission and audit? Because uh, based on the findings, NEDA failed to secure uh, approval from the president's office and the DBM. No, uh, the, 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 the um, uh, decision of uh, the COA, Your Honor, was that uh, the, the members, uh, the, those who received uh, 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 the benefits, the, the benefits uh, uh, which was found uh, uh, not, uh, not allowed by COA, uh, was to for the reimbursement of, uh, or for, the, uh, for this, uh, uh, the different recipients to return the, whatever they receive, Your Honor. So, in so far as uh, my, myself, I'm concerned, I, I was, as I said, I, I, I uh, uh, re received that, that uh, um, the same amount that uh, all others received, uh, uh, but only for the 2012, and that was what I would return, uh, uh, Your Honor. Uh, that was in the disposition of, uh, of Mr. the Mr. Secretary, again, let me rephrase the question. Should it be very clear to you? Uh, because the answer, you, the answer, your answer to my question is not very clear. Again, let me ask you, did you return the 73.6 million pesos that was disallowed? It's just a simple yes or no. Your Honor, because we uh, we uh, uh, submitted a, mem a, a motion for reconsideration on that uh, on that case, and uh, that uh, resolution of the case uh, was that uh, uh, all the member, all those who, uh, who receive uh, the, uh, the the the. Uh, that incentives uh, would have to return to the COA. So it's not just me, but all the other uh, recipients of, uh, of the incentive, Your Honor. So I, I was so let me clarify, asked, Mr. Uh, Secretary, with regard to this uh, this allowance, you submitted an MR to COA, that's, and that's, they said that okay, lang hindi nyo bayaran. Yes, that's the the the, the, the COA and bank. 
uh, decision on the MR, uh, Your Honor. Uh, uh, um, Do you have a copy of that letter oh, na, na ina-absuelto kayo ng COA? Yes, we could provide you, Your Honor. It's, uh, I, I, I think it should be in the website of the of COA. But, now, can you furnish this uh, body the copy of that uh, um, that letter or any document that could prove na inabsuelto na nga kayo ng COA because very clear dito actually meron pang isa eh uh, disallowance of the 160 million uh, 160,000 pala 200 pesos but uh, this is smaller amount compared to the 73.6 million pesos so do you, we just want to make sure you know you'll be the secretary and of course we would like to protect you pero with this blemish on your record um, it would not look good upon you since uh, you'll be returning as the secretary eh dapat siguro ma-resolve ba itong issue na ito so as per your uh, statement sabi mo inabsuelto ko but you know what um, Mr. Secretary I have seen uh, LGUs local government units who did the same no? pero humingi rin sila ng MR but I have never heard of any local government unit that was absolved of uh, uh, the disallowance with granting illegal incentives. Kaya uh, I am uh, surprised that in your case, uh, which is a bigger amount, 73.6 million pesos, eh, pumayag ang COA. Mr. Chair, can I just add? Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Secretary, uh, out of 73 million, ilang po yung portion sa inyo po? I forgot the amount already, sir, but it, um, uh, it's a very small but, uh, amount. Just for the record, uh, you returned the portion uh, that you benefited from. You returned it. Uh, it um, I, I, I recall that I, I, when that this, this uh, matter was brought to my attention in, in, uh, in 2012, uh, Your Honor, we... Uh, I, I immediately sus uh, terminated that practice. Uh, no, because uh, Mr. Chair, I, just I, for, I did, for I did clarification, lang, Mr. Chair. Uh, my qu the question of Congressman Pimentel is very simple. There was a disallowance, and the disallowance stated that the you, you and uh, everyone involved should return the seventy three million. My question, lang po, is very simple. Uh, magkano po ang portion you don at? Uh, Answerable by yes or no? Uh, did you return the amount uh, commensurate to the that that program? The incentive. Continue, uh, Mr. Secretary. We would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Bongo. You may now proceed, Mr. Yeah. Secretary. I would like to reiterate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, answerable yes. by yes or no? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, I did not immediately. I did not return the uh, what was due to. Uh, 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 the part that was compromised because the the uh, uh, the, the we issued uh, uh, your, we, we filed a, a motion for reconsideration, uh, Your Honor, and that's how it uh, got uh, again. Yeah, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, it's just answerable by yes or no. Did you return the amount? Para lang we can move on. No, Did because no, no, no uh, Your Honor, because as I said, we submitted the MR and the MR was... So the, the answer is you did not return it. You did not return the... the uh, I think that was the main question of uh, Congressman Pimentel. Uh, there was a disallowance. That you were asked to return. You filed an MR, but later on, uh, the COA said that uh, it was in good faith so that you did not return it. So I think uh, in addition... Uh, to what Congressman Pimentel's point. Uh, will, so that transaction was considered legal? Well, I respect the decision of... Uh, of, of, of uh, Mr. Chair, I think my question is on, only answerable by yes or no. Was, was that well, on the basis of the decision, uh, Your Honor, it was uh, uh, in... Um, that it was uh, we committed that uh, in good faith and and but uh, I I I have been uh, already uh, uh, so it was not sure. legal it was not legal yeah, okay. uh, yeah. Honor, yeah because okay. there are certain actions by local government and other agencies that are done in good faith uh, it, it might not be correct but uh, the court uh, sometimes absolves so in this case. Uh, 
the COA absolve you, uh, but uh, on the guise of good faith, but uh, the action was not legal. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And uh, we understand because uh, as government workers, sir, uh, you, you sometimes uh, do actions uh, in good faith, in the pursuit of uh, public service, but are later on uh, determined uh, as wrong, but uh, no accountability is meted out because it was done in good faith. I don't know. So, Mr. Secretary, can you provide, uh, provide the copy of uh, uh, the memorandum of uh, MR? Can you provide us the copy, uh, the, sec the Secretariat? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we actually have this. Uh, it's uh, in the decision decision number 2022-094 of COA. Okay, thank you. Congressman uh, Pimentel? Uh, may I proceed, Mr. Chair? Please, Mr. Proceed. Secretary, we would like to get a copy of that piece of document because it baffles me. While other small LGUs, Pag sinasabing uh, disallowed yung incentives nila, they repay or reimburse the amount that were given to them illegally, no? But in your case, uh, I cannot accept the fact that uh, the amount is 73 million pesos, absolved to kayo. So, yun lang po, we really want to know what is in that document, what could be the reason of COA, Absolve you, no? Kasi marami yung nangyayari dito na, and as far as I know, once a transaction is disallowed and no action has been taken by the government entity or LGU for that matter, within six months, that disallowance is forwarded to the ombudsman for appropriate action of the ombudsman. But in your case, 2010-2012 po yung transaction, it was disallowed in 2018, which is what was four years ago. However, no case was filed. So we really want to see that document that you have been saying that uh, co absorb you because uh, it does not uh, conform to the uh, rules and regulations of COA. So kung pwede po maibigay mo po ninyo dito, and then uh, if ever uh, you will be... Uh, confirm, but uh, if there is something wrong with that document, we can still uh, pursue this case against you, uh, Secretary Balisakan. No, kasi nagtataka talaga ako dito na but no action was taken by uh, the uh, o baka nak archive ito or what. Then we'll go to another matter, Mr. Che. I have another question. Um, there is another case. I think this is a plunder case which uh, pertains to the Metro Rail Transit Line uh, involving the Busan uh, Universal Rail Incorporated. Now, uh, as a INEDA secretary, you were uh, charged also by virtue of your position. I don't know why you were uh, included, but uh, this is a plunder case. Now, um, I think this was filed in uh, 2017 or earlier, could be earlier. Ang tanong ko po, um, Mr. Secretary, what is now the status of this case, itong plunder case, which you were included in the charge sheet? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I was included uh, um, on, on the argument that I was a, a part of the Government Policy Procurement Board, but... Uh, as a member of the policy board, I was not really a member. I was not a part of the executing agencies uh, or or any of the ex ex execution of the project. Uh, so the, uh, the the then uh, ombudsman uh, Conchita uh, uh, Morales dismissed the the uh, this case. Uh, uh, so I, I and uh, as you can see in the folder, uh, uh, Your Honor, that submitted to uh, uh, to the commission, uh, I was cleared uh, by by the uh, by the ombudsman and the office of the ombudsman and the uh, COA and all the other uh, 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 agencies. So Your Honor, they, uh, I was given clearance by all these agencies, uh, including the office of the ombudsman. 
Okay, yeah. uh, Senate President has showed us that you have a clearance. For Just for the record, we have a we have uh, the certification from the Ombudsman uh, stating that the gentleman, Secretary Balisakan, is has uh, no pending criminal and administrative cases with the Ombudsman. It's a certification for the okay, record. That is good enough, said the President. Anyway, Mr. Chair, I have no uh, other questions. Thank you, uh, Congressman. Uh, Reporter. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, can I be recognized? Yeah, yeah, I recognize Mr. Uh, Senate President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I've had the good fortune of knowing this gentleman for quite a long time. And and uh, you can see with his dedication for public service, he started government. I'd like to put this on record. He started government service in 1979 in, as a research assistant no? of the Cotton Research and Development Institute of the DA. And then he worked up his way to the rank, from the ranks, a science research specialist, uh, a cotton research undersecretary for the Department of Agriculture up to 2000, 2000 2001, undersecretary also for agriculture from uh, 20, 20, 2021 to 2023, all the way up to NEDA on May 12th of 2012 to June, January of 2016. And then he continued to be chairperson of the Philippine Competitive Commission from 2016 to 2022. It shows the dedication of this gentleman when it comes to public service. Not only is he uh, dedicated, he's also well-educated. He has a doctorate on economics. And uh, this is what I like, your master's in agricultural economics, C. Demian, uh, College of Development Economic Management. That's my campus in UPLB. So he's also a graduate of UPLB in his master of course. My point is we really need people like him in government who can help steer, especially now that we have a looming global economic uh, recession and crisis. I think he's uh, a welcome addition to the cabinet. And if it would be best that we confirm him uh, as soon as possible so that he may now focus on the task at hand which is to keep the country afloat from the, the global, uh, possible global economic uh, recession. Ayun lama po, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to throw in my full support to Secretary Balisakan. Thank you. Thank you. So, majority floor, you recognize? Yeah, I'd like to put on record that I support uh, Secretary Balisakan. No? Um, just like, just like some clarifications because you're part of the economic team, uh, Secretary. Um, the President uh, yesterday said that it was his idea uh, regarding the Maharlika Investment Fund and uh, the people should give it a try and it's really up to Congress to come up with a, a bill acceptable to the people with the proper safeguards. <laughs> Personally, I support the Malacanang Wealth Fund, Investment Fund, but most recently, uh, Raul Fabella, an economist, said that it's beyond repair. I totally, I totally disagree with him because I believe that anything, everything can be repaired with the right mindset. I'm just, uh, I was just uh, awaiting for the statement of the NEDA secretary to at least defend the statement of the president. Sir, maybe you have the floor. Maybe we can give, uh, you can put a few minutes of your time. Uh, are you in full support of the Maharlika Investment Fund, uh, Mr. Secretary? Uh, we are in full, uh, in full support, uh, Your Honor. In fact, uh, the recent statement of uh, uh, read by uh, uh, Secretary Ben Jokno was uh, a, a joint statement among us uh, uh, in the cabinet, in the economic team. Uh, so that's an expression of the, our full commitment to the. Uh, to the Thank fund. you for hearing that because uh, you know I think we should give it a try. I just like to give it the chance uh, to you know just counter. Uh, do you uh, what is your comment on the Raul Fabella statement that it's beyond repair? as the one of the member of the economic team? Well, uh, uh, as a member of the economic profession, uh, uh, Your Honor, um, I respect his view, uh, um, and um, uh, uh, but uh, my view also, personal view, if that's allowed, uh, is, is that um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, 
laws that you you passed, uh, the Congress passed, uh, are are good or bad depending on how uh, how you make it. Uh, and governance is is key to that. The the governance in uh, in um, a framework that you put into the into the law. That's what it's what makes it. Uh, 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 workable or not workable. Um, so uh, that's why I think uh, that um, uh, having to, that uh, proposal to uh, to Congress will allow us to debate uh, uh, the merits of the merits of the proposal and and uh, and uh, uh, put the appropriate uh, um, um, uh, assurance that uh, that it will work. And so it's all it's a, it's all about the, the design and and, and the fr framework that uh, uh, you put into that uh, 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 law, Iran. Uh, so it, it, um, in, in in short, um, uh, it it, it, uh, it can work and it must work if if it's designed properly uh, as it should. Few words, Lang Secretary. The public is listening. Majority of senators are here. Members of Congress are here. Uh, why should we support the Mal Maharlika Wealth Fund? Similarly, I want to support it, but we want to hear from you. You're the, one of the members of the economic team. In a few words, why should we support it? Um, Mr. What? Majority Leader, if I may also add a point to the same uh, topic. Um, when we debate something in Congress, we rely on <laughs> expert advice from the different departments as well as stakeholders. So if you were to look at this, and we were going to ask you personally, not as a collective decision of the economic team, what are the good points based on what you've read? What are the bad points that needs to be amended? Okay, when, when I... Before you proceed, I would like to acknowledge Senator Grace Poe, sorry. <laughs> Ma, Mr. Chair, with all due respect to my good friend, uh, Senator Grace, I think before he answers the uh, very good suggestion of, or question of uh, Senator Grace, uh, I, I will wrap up. I, I just want, want the public to hear, uh, through you, Mr. Secretary, why uh, majority of Congress, majority of senators, if ever, should support the Maharlika Wealth Fund. Personally, I support it, but we want to hear from you as one of the members of the economic team. Maybe you can articulate in a few words uh, before uh, uh, you answer Senator Gray's uh, questioning. Well, I, I believe, Your Honor, that, uh, uh, that it has the potential of, uh, of uh, a, a, a attracting fa funds into the, uh, a, a, and that are otherwise not... Uh, um, um uh used in a way that uh, um that addresses the 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 immediate concerns and uh, uh priorities of uh, of uh, uh, for, uh for national development um and and if uh, that 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 fund could uh, uh, could supplement uh, the uh, the limited fiscal resources that uh, that we have um uh, for example, it could uh, be uh, uh, used to uh, uh, to improve the at attractiveness of uh, PPPP projects, particularly for critical areas like uh, infrastructure. Um, uh, but th then again, as pointed out by several observers, uh, it, it, the uh, its potential depends so much on on how we design the. Uh, the framework. I must admit that uh, in the beginning, uh, when this was brought to my attention, I was not an expert on the uh, on sovereign funds, uh, uh, and I had to just like the rest of uh, of, of you, I, su I suppose, I, I would have to uh, uh, read on my own and ask my staff to uh, research on, 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 on that thing, and uh, and on that basis, I, we, we could form our own. Uh, um, uh, decision on whether to support or not to support the. the, the you just say sometimes it's not the message; it's the messenger. So my my point really is, if if no, he's the member of the economic team, madam. So what my question is, if let's just say for the sake of argument that it was approved today, X billions, what would be the first investment? the Maharlika Investment Fund will put into that will, you know, magkaroon ng bagong pag-asa sa Pilipino. 
I, I think that once you answer that, I think the negative issues will be erased. Yeah, well, well, I will. I'm here to help you. I just want the public listening now. If yeah. you have 100 billion pesos today, granted by Congress, where will you put it? That, that, that's just because uh, the, 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 you have to answer this. Uh, because while we are in support of this, not everyone here, I'm just speaking for myself, no? But for example, in the BGC, that used to be owned by government. It was privatized, sold. Can you imagine if the government retained even 10%? It's all, almost a million pesos now. The government could have made money and they could have reinvested it in hospitals, in roads. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I, that's why I believe in an investment uh, fund. Uh, like the Temasek of Singapore and others. But what I'm saying is, if you have 100 billion pesos today, granted by Congress, where should the government put it that will guarantee good returns for the Filipino people? Uh, I, would, um, I would recommend that, that uh, funds be prioritized for those... Uh, uh, critical uh, pri uh, development programs and projects that we have identified in the uh, uh, in the eight point agenda and the uh, Philippine Economic Development. Can you cite at least three infrastructure, for example? We have a very uh, 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 huge gaps, uh, uh, shortfalls in our infrastructure development. Uh, there are many viable, many profitable. Uh, yeah, can you be more specific? Uh, yes, I know. I'll wrap up. Uh, we want we 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 are railways, excited. for example, you know, on our railways. Uh, the, the president has already uh, announced that railways uh, and mass transit are high priorities. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. Start with that. These projects that you're mentioning are long term, huh? You're putting in the money, but that not that's not necessarily going to be earning. In fact. Maybe at the start, the government will even subsidize. So in terms of the fund and the interest that's going to be made out of it or the dividends, you're not going to see that if you're going to put it in, let's say, in infrastructure. I'm just saying that, that that's my analysis. Am I, am I wrong? Let's say, okay, you fund the Metro Manila subway. That's good. Normally, that comes from GAA. Okay? Pero kung sa inyo, kailan natin makukuha yung dividends nun? I would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of Minority Floor Leader, Senator Alan Peter Compañero Cayetano, sir. So you may answer, Mr. Secretary. Yes, I, 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 I'd like to see that the uh, investments in the, uh, in the Maharlika would be for long-term uh, uh, long-term investments, uh, Your Honor, like uh, um, infrastructure investments for agriculture, investments for our uh, even uh, for hospitals and uh, uh, health services. Um, uh, I, I, I think that's uh, where the, the longer-term uh, um, returns are coming from. Uh, it's not a, a I, I suspect that uh, that uh, that if those funds are going to be invested in areas where uh, uh, those are not identified as critical for our economic development at the moment, then maybe uh, you know uh, that doesn't serve the purpose as I see it. Uh, but uh, if it if these funds are used to meet uh, augment the uh, the very limited fiscal space that we have now. Uh, to meet our development priorities, then uh, uh, I'm I'm all for it, and that's what I, I was paid to understand. Uh, uh, that that's what the, those fans are. So, you know. uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, for example, you invest in rail. That's good, and I'm all for that. Okay, that's a long-term development. It's a long-term fund, but. The benefits that you're going to get there, better infrastructure, better tourism, uh, better connectiv uh, connectivity, that's all good. But that, that's all like, uh, what do you call this, um, the consequence of this infrastructure, but directly to the fund itself. Uh, normally, what do other, what's the, the practice of, let's say, the Masek Foundation or the ones from Norway, where do they put their money? Do they... Uh, do they invest in an actual fund already that's existing? Let's say, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not also an economic person, but let's say Berkshire Hathaway, okay? yung mga ganong classing fund, uh, or, or a startup that really has a direct dividend that will come in. Is that, 
part of the consideration? Yeah, I, I suspect that uh, I don't know how the, the 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 management is going to be structured in the fund and the, particularly the management of risk, uh, but I suspect that uh, for the fund to be sustainable, that there is a good uh, diversified diversified portfolio there. That's a good mix of long term and uh, and short term. Your honor, so that the returns of the funds are high. But uh, uh, still, I would like to see uh, that those projects, uh, pri priority projects, are for the long uh, long term development of. Uh, um, Mr. Chair, I just uh, want to be sure about this. I know that in the version of the house, if I'm not mistaken, it's a penalty for those who will misuse the fund or will um, be negligent about the fund. What we're trying to be careful here, ang nag-iingat tayo, hindi mapulitika halimbawa yung fund na yan na ibibigay sa mga malalapit na tao, halimbawa, may kilala lang dun sa board member at dun mapupunta. Kasi ilang beses na like, I think meron tayo sa National Steel Corporation, yung mga dati na, na misuse yung, yung fund natin na nalugi tayo doon, hindi tayo nakakolekta. So yun yung importante na walang, na talaga yung vetting process ay maayos, hindi lang dahil ah, kakilala yan, dyan natin ilagay. So talagang dapat merong moral ascendancy lahat ng mga nasa board. Y yun lang po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if I may, Your, uh, Your Honor, I completely agree with that. That's why I kept on saying that it, it depends on how it, it really boils down to the, the governance structure that we'll put into the in, into the uh, uh, law, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, uh, just as a wrap up, I support Secretary Balikasan, I support the Maharlika Investment Fund, but again, uh, it's incumbent upon you, Secretary, to please clarify uh, specific uh, uh, concerns of our people. Uh, when the president said, give it a try, we are all up for it. There's no harm in trying as long as the proper safeguards are there. At the end of the day, it's up to Congress to really come out with a, you know, a good measure. Uh, I think the House is uh, currently deliberating on this and uh, hopefully when we pass it to the Senate, uh, the refinements are already there. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the best way Affect uh, a law is an ongoing uh, debate and continuous uh, data to be provided by NEDA on why uh, this is important for our people. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Senator Apple, Senator Bongo, to you, Senator Hantiveros. Apple. Okay, okay. Just a uh, short manifestation lang po. Uh, I would like to extend my uh, utmost support for the interim appointment of uh, Secretary Arsenio Balisacan as Secretary of the National Economic and Development Authority. We are all well aware that uh, this post carries a lot of responsibility, especially given that we are experiencing unprecedented post-pandemic impacts to the economy. But with the Secretary Balisakan at its helm, I am certain that our country is on its way to economic uh, recovery. Secretary Balikasa, Balisakan is a well-regarded economist and uh, uh, he has previously held the same post from 2012 to 2016. That is why many have thrown their support behind his appointment to be the country's chief economic uh, architect. Mr. Chair, ako po ay tiwala sa kanyang kakayahan na magagampalan niya po ng buong usay at katapatan ng mandatong pinagkalob sa kanya. As I can personally attest to his competence and credibility when he became chairperson of the Philippine Competition Commission during the Duterte administration. Mr. Secretary, I appeal to you to look after, after the welfare our fellow countrymen, malaga po na maabot natin ang ating mga target para bumaba ang poverty rate, unemployment uh, sa bansa. Malaga po ang NEDA sa, sa paglatag ng mga plano kung paano natin parating ang full economic uh, recovery. Let us continue in our efforts in restoring normalcy and putting the economy back on track, particularly on programs that will give focus on balancing economic growth and poverty elevation. Uh, ilan po, uh, again, Secretary Arce, you have my uh, 
through trust and confidence. Thank you for your hard work, uh, dedication, and service to the Filipino people. Full support po. Mabuhay po kayo. Salamat. Senator Lisa Hantodores. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Actually po, at magandang hapon po, Sec. RC, actually yung akin interjection sana dun sa line of questioning din ni Majo. Kasi po, SEC, Mr. Chair, uh, nung sinasagot niyo yung mga tanong ng mga colleagues namin, uh, may nasabi kayo about the Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund na this is what you were made to understand about the Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund. Eh, meron, po, meron na pong at least Siguro kalahating dosen ng mga dating na the secretary who think that the Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund is a bad idea. Yung isa po sa kanila si dating na the secretary Esguera. Sabi niya maraming pag-uusap tungkol sa mga safeguards tungkol dito sa Maharlika Fund. Pero bago pa yung safeguard, yung rationale for setting up such a sovereign wealth fund, ni hindi pa yon uh, na establish Abagamat may mga ilang kasama kami sa Kongreso who say na yung ideya ng Sovereign Wealth Fund na ito galing sa uh, economic manager. So, sex, sa inyo ba talaga nang galing yung ideya ng uh, Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund na ito? Kasi prior this afternoon, you've been very silent about it. Sa inyo po ba talaga nang galing? Sa economic team po. Sa economic team po. Uh, well, let me... Mr. Secretary, I would like to Mr. acknowledge the presence of Senator Chis Escudero. You may not proceed. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, let Let me um, um, recall what at least what uh, I know about this uh, the the fund. What you know about it, po? Well. Yes. So, uh, nanggali, hindi po ba nanggaling? Well, uh, yeah, the, the president has mentioned last night that the idea came from him. And, came from and then, him. okay, uh, and then it was uh, toasted to, to the members of the, uh, of the economic team. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, the, the a technical group was formed among the uh, okay. uh, members of the, uh, the, uh, of the economic agencies. They... Uh, drafted something it uh, they presented to the uh, to the cabinet uh, to the economic team for discussion uh, okay. uh, and, and and it's then that i i uh, I, I became uh, uh, aware of what this uh, uh, full fund uh, this fund in 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 uh, much more detail huh? but but as i said uh, i am not an expert on this and so i had to also uh, is uh, Research on my own, do my my own uh, reading on this on, on this this thing, and and that's why I uh, I said that in the end uh, it it's going to be a, a, a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how we 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 frame it and we we uh, develop the governance. Uh, institution uh, infrastructure of, of the fund and there it's the, this whole business of uh, independence of the uh, of the management of the fund comes into play uh, and among other things so including the management of risk uh, so yun nga po, Sek, uh, whether it turns out to be a good thing uh, or a bad thing, hanggang ngayon, karamihan din po sa amin hindi expert dito, kaya kami po nagtatanong nito. And, um, you know, let me just say na if two agencies, for example, Banko Central and DOF, disagree about a Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund, then uh, I would wait for Neda's view on the matter. Sabi niyo po kanina, tinos ito sa inyo. Idea ni Presidente, tinos ito, so parang sinalo nyo lang. And ngayon, we're, uh, we're at this stage. Uh, did, did you, did NEDA formulate even just one section of this uh, Maharlika bill that is now filed in Congress? We would like to see it at that point, Your Honor, that it is a group effort, uh, group uh, in, uh, um, um, output that... that uh, because we all signed up uh, at the end, and we uh, we uh, we discuss it among ourselves, and at that point it became a collective. Uh, uh, so uh, it's a group support. bill, but yeah. yung ambag po ba ng Neda meron ba dyan na kahit isang section na galing po sa inyo? Uh, or if kung hindi saan ng galing yung bill, yung, um, yung draft? We were part of the technical. Uh, uh, group in BWG. Uh, uh, Your Honor, I'm not um, 
uh, aware now which what word or what sentence was uh, Ned as part, but uh, mm. yeah, in the end, uh, when it came to us, that's when we uh, asked at the, at the level of the cabinet of the members of the economic team that we uh, 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 we, we, well, we agreed to support or, uh, the the, uh, the whole thing. Just as my last interjection at this point, Mr. Chair, sec, ako, I would rather po na alam na alam nung isang body, kunyari yung government economic managers sa isang group project tulad ng isang bill o isang sovereign wealth fund, kung kani-kanino nang galing yung bawat feature o section, I rather prefer na yung mga executive agencies natin very jealous and watchful sa kani-kaniyang kumaga baby sa loob ng group uh, uh, group project na ito. Uh, para masigurado natin na in that push and pull, in that debate, really the best version of an idea will come out. Mapag-alaman nyo that as half dozen former NEDES secretaries think it's a bad idea, kayo na rin po magpapayo sa amin na abandon that, pursue other uh, other tracks. Kasi uh, in line with what another colleague was mentioning earlier, ayaw po natin mangyari na yung NEDA, napakataas na uh, um, agency para po sa amin sa ating gobyerno, ay magsilbing, well, deodorant lang ng mga polisiyang galing kahit saan, kahit pag galing sa Malacanang, mataas po ang tingin natin sa NEDA, SEC, Mr. Chair. Mataas din personally ang tingin ko kay SEC RC ever since, kahit na nung laban natin para sa reproductive health law. At aasahan, aasahan po natin sa sa inyo yung matalinong pag-aaral at palansyadong pagtimbang uh, sa mga alternatibong polisiya. Uh, upang kahit po ang malakanyang ay maliwanagan. So, salamat po, Sek, at marami salamat, Mr. Chair, at this point. Um, Senator Coyetano, you're now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, relatedly, may I also thank uh, the chairperson dun sa DOTR for the opportunity last time. No? Chair, uh, dalawang topics lang, no? Um, una dun nga sa investments, magandang hapon na uh, secretary. No? Una dun nga sa Mahalika Fund, no? Um, you know, maybe because it's a hot issue, but also I'd like to take advantage na si secretary po spent a lifetime on studies on poverty, on wealth distribution, on uh, equity. And isa sa pinakamalaking problema ng Pilipinas talaga yan, di ba, na Usually, our future is determined to whom and where we were born. If you were born in uh, Tawi-Tawi or in Batanes, uh, if you were born to a uh, um, a Juan de la Cruz or Juan uh, Santos compared to a crazy rich uh, Asian, um, na bunabanggit sa akin ni Senator Grace, yung parang kung saan ka pinanganak at kanino ka pinanganak really determines your future in the Philippines, no? Ito mga studies ni Secretary are long-term and when we talk about the Mahalika Fund, sumisentro tayo doon. So, you would agree siguro, Secretary, that sentiment is also such a big thing when it comes to the stock market and to funds, no? Yung sentiment at saka ngayon na maraming bullish pero marami din pong negative sentiments on this. Ang daming nagdududa kung ano talaga ang intention dito kahit maganda yung intention. So, let me throw an idea your way. Uh, tama yung majority leader that both houses naman will discuss this. But kung makikita mo, for example, yung Skyway, Avitex, uh, yung mga highway papunta sa Norte, so far ha, wala nakikitang nalulugi sa mga projects na yan. Sa mga huge infra projects na yan, no? And this is purely driven by the private sector. Pero kung hindi nalulugi, malaki yung returns, then why not get one de la Cruz into that project? So instead of getting money from SSS and GSIS and Pag-ibig, for example, na napakalaki ng mga investable funds, why not have a platform where they can invest in these projects and get a board seat So, halimbawa, kung gagawin natin na lahat ng mga projects na to, whether PPP, whether we bid it out, or whether yan ay unsolicited, let's say 10% or 20% uh, will be funded by a GOCC. 
Indian project naman yan, I will be vetted by the private sector, it will be run by the private sector, but since sigurado yung returns niya, or halos sigurado, as sigurado as can be, no? then you will have uh, the same result ng Mahalika uh, Wealth Fund or Sovereign Fund, but you will have the safeguards that have been uh, the test of time, di ba? Sa SSS, GSIS. Kita nyo ang publiko, wala namang problema pag sinabi mo SSS o GSIS mag-invest. Mag, uh, as long as it passes the stringent uh, test and way that the SSS and GSIS has over the what, 50 years or so being in investing, no? So kung ang intention is to unlock Kasi pag tinignan mo, katulad ng pag-ibig talaga eh, no? Um, pag sinabing love is the answer, pag tinignan mo yung pag-ibig fan, napakalaki. I think ko konting membro lang ang gumagamit talaga nito. So I'm one of those who are saying na why not unlock no, that resources. If you look at the Aquino time, grabe po yung paglaki ng stocks, ng stock market is a spot ng biggest corporations in the Philippines, whether it's Ayala, SM, Villar, etc. No? Pero kung titignan mo yung income ng SSS at GSIS, malayo doon sa stock market because of certain, siguro, um, what do you, how can you describe, certain uh, safety valves or reasons no? or conservative approach or baka tama yung time pag-buy, hindi tama yung pag sell or whatever, no? But in point of sec, the money is there and these projects I've mentioned and the projects that we want to do, walang talo eh. Uh, halos guaranteed yung, uh, yung returns niya, no? So, I, that, that's the first point that I just wanted to throw your way for consideration. No? Uh, yeah, Your Honor, if I may uh, answer uh, Mr. Secretary. Yeah, I, I think uh, 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 what the good senators just described is uh, very much uh, in the spirit of my advocacy, uh, Your Honor, to, to open up uh, more opportunities, but uh, investment opportunities for uh, uh, for low-income households, low-income earners, uh, and inclusive finance, inclusive investment is key to that. So I think that uh, uh, we need to open up avenues uh, uh, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, investments that, uh, um, especially those that uh, affect small savers, no? uh, um, I think that will go a long way in uh, in uh, reducing the that that uh, bad effects of high inequality, and eventually in the longer term, uh, we reduce that level of inequality. Because to be honest, uh, 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 your honors. Uh, I, I, I'm very bothered by our high level of inequality because we do know from our from our understanding of the economic history that eventually that high inequality will will backfire uh, in terms of uh, 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 our capacity to sustain a high level of of uh, economic growth. So we need to improve the the uh, access to opportunities of. Uh, of uh, the large majority of our people, um, and and inclusive finance is one of those uh, uh, access to opportunities that we need to to, to open up. To, to just uh, conclude that point, Secretary, kasi while it's true that investments are long term, yung infrastructure project immediate, di ba? Kasi uh, as soon as the money is in, yung construction, so may umiikot na pera doon. As soon as na mabuksan yung kalye, there's less insurgency usually there. Roads rather than uh, than bullets talaga, di ba? And then, uh, of course, alimbawa sa tourism, napakagaganda ng mga lugar all around the country. Pero wala nang infra papunta doon, no? So ang point, we might not be able to equalize uh, yung... Um, sweldo, resources, uh, investments, but just try to create more opportunities uh, for all uh, Filipinos. And maybe the Sovereign Wealth Fund can be um, funded 
from the private sector, meaning lahat ng supporters ng administration, you want to put in your money and long term to, then this group will run it. But as far as the short term, if you can get really the SSS, GSIS, Pag Ibig, uh, Land Bank, uh, to use some of its investable funds, ha? hindi yung hindi investable, but its investable funds for this infrastructure uh, program, baka win win win. Uh, siya, no? So I'll leave it there, Secretary, because other senators, like my good friend uh, Senator Escudero, wants to ask some questions there. Just one more point. Mas pang long term to, no? But, um, well, my seatmate and I have been in Congress since 1998. So, mahaba-haba na rin, uh, 24? So, next year, 25 years na kami na sa Congreso. And parati po kami may tanong, kasi sa 1987 Constitution, while it is true that the government cannot borrow without the monetary board approval, it also says that not a single peso or centavo can be spent without Congress appropriating it. But napansin ko, ang gagawin ng gobyerno, mangungutang, let's say, kung sa Japanese or Chinese or sa Koreans or sa Australians, and then, by the time na nasa GAA siya, eto yung pagsinisingil na so na yung grace period no so what happens is that we are forced to approve the the loan because if we go against the loan at any time before that most of the loans ngayon may arbitration clause na rin eh. so in a way no i mean uh, bringing the argument to the absurd diba yung uh, argumentum ad absurdum for our dear colleagues no example, we disapproved uh, 10 billion of swimming pools to be created all around the country. Actually, the executive department can go to Japan or China and borrow 10 billion for swimming pools, then have a two-year grace period, and then two years from now, or two years from now, andun pa lang sa JAA, and bringing it to the absurd, so halimbawa ang DPWH, if suddenly their whole budget is maintenance, Wala nang new roads, for example. Binago natin sa Congress, ginawa natin panay new roads. Theoretically, they can move to zero the DPWH budget of 800 billion. And theoretically, they can borrow 800 billion. And then two, three years from now, uh, sigurado na yung approval. Eh, no? So, I know this is more legal than economic. And uh, the argument that, um, you know, when you have a good admin, there's not enough to borrow. When you have a bad administration, kahit piso, dapat hindi mo utangin. So I'm aware of that. But since you're a person who've always looked long-term and you had the privilege of uh, being the NEDA secretary of uh, the biggest political rivalry in the country, no? the Aquinos and for the Marcoses. So this is something I just wanted to put uh, on your desk and to think about then and for Congress to also consider. No? Kasi think ko hindi masyadong magandang practice na bawat cinco we scrutinize pag nag-appropriate tayo but the executive can actually borrow only uh, and spend it and we're forced to approve it later on. No? It's up to you, Sec, if you want to comment or study it muna. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities to discuss them on that issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Chis Codera, you're now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm at the I'd like to state that I support the confirmation of Secretary Balisakan, but just some policy issues so that it can be placed on record and the public may be made aware as well of the position and direction of the Marcos administration headed by its chief economic planner, of course. On the Maharlika, um, fun, sir. Um, tinanggal na ng Congreso as of now ang GSIS at SSS as a source of fund. And GSIS is supposed to be the biggest funder initially as planned at $125 billion. So, your thoughts, sir? Saan ko kunin yung pe pera at pondo sa ngayon kung hindi kasama ang GSIS at SSS? So, I'll be more specific. Are you in favor of um, utilizing our gross international reserves as NEDA? Uh, no, um, uh, Your Honor, but That's I think the, 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 what we are uh, 
thinking is the dividends because that's the dividends that were remitted to the national government anyway. Uh, the dividends from the Banco Central. From the Banco Central. But uh, we still owe the Banco Central. In fact, uh, part of the unappropriated funds includes a 10, 10 or 50 billion fund in order to capitalize the Banco Central. So, I mean, one. Two. Are you in favor of using lowering the reserve requirement of banks and allowing banks to, if at all, invest? Because we have, we have one of the highest in the world. I think a reserve requirement for private banks is at 12.2%. America is at zero. Europe is at 1%. Kaya hirap mag-withdraw ng pera sa America. So, as NEDA, are you in favor of utilizing the um, reserve, lowering the reserves of banks and opening up that money? held by banks to be invested in the Maharlika Fund? I think the serve requirement, Your Honor, and so far as I remember my macroeconomics is, uh, is part of the uh, tools, uh, macroeconomic tools of uh, Banco Central, of the uh, Central Bank. Again, sir, as I said, America uh, uh, has yeah. zero reserve requirement yeah. for banks. Europe, as a general, EU, yeah. has a 1% reserve requirement for their banks. Yeah, I, so you're not in favor of it too. And I'm not, I, I'm not saying that I'm not in favor, you know, but, but yeah, I guess it depends on what you are trying. For example, if now that the, you have uh, uh, high inflation uh, and if you believe that uh, it's uh, uh, it's partly because of the high, high liquidity. Over liquidity. Because, yeah, that, that's uh, one instrument that uh, you, you can yeah. do. I would not want Banco Central to lose that part of the instruments, uh, uh, Your Honor. I completely agree, sir. Third, DBP and Land Bank hasn't been removed from the list in the proposed bill. But there are Banco Central regulations that any bank, whether DBP, Land Bank, or any bank, cannot put all of their eggs in one basket. Will um, these two banks filling in the gap of the supposed investment of GSS and SSS, would you favor that um, the uh, limitations on putting the bank, the money of banks into one basket be set aside in order to put up the Maharlika Fund? I, I, I don't think that is a good idea, Your Honor. As again, the portfolio of the, the bank has to be diversified enough to, to allow it to absorb. Uh, so that they would be immune from shocks in exactly, one sector. Exactly. I agree, sir. But I think that uh, what the fund could do is to uh, to uh, diversify its possible sources of uh, of. Uh, the Maharlika Fund can do that, sir. Yeah. But it's not advisable for either DBP or Land Bank to put such a huge amount in the Maharlika Fund, right? And not, not to the extent that it's overexposed. Says, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so it has to manage its portfolio too, Your Honor. As my final question on this, so as NEDA, where would you recommend that we get the 250 billion that is being targeted to come up with this Maharlika Fund? I think we have to build it over time. I don't, uh, for example, I was just, um, Toying of some ideas, for example, you know, uh, no, I, sir, I was told I, by... So I won't belabor the point. Um, so we have to build it over time, I agree. Now, there's another proposal. Put in $25 billion from the GAA in this fund and let the, fund, let the Maharlika um, Corporation invest it. But isn't it better to spend the $25 billion to actually build the bridge already today? Then to put yeah. the 25 billion, invest it in a fund, and hopefully it will earn. And then you get the dividends in the percentage a year or three years or five years after. It depends, on, I guess, on where you are getting that from what part of your... Exactly. Of the GAA, uh, it's a zero-sum game, sir. May mabawasan kang budget ng department. Obviously. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. I'll leave that as it is, um, Secretary. I hope um, they can come up with... Um, the economic team can come up with a more comprehensive plan on how to present it to Congress for its consideration. My second point, Mr. Chairman, is we discussed it, I discussed this with Secretary Balisakan earlier, is BRICS. BRICS stands for the first letter of the five countries that initially set it up. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And apparently Saudi Arabia, Arabia is applying. And when Saudi Arabia goes, where Saudi Arabia goes, OPEC usually goes, which controls about 82% of all exports. BRICS basically believes in using lo utilizing local currency to settle imports and exports between countries. For the longest time since World War II, the world economy and trade was governed 
dictated upon by the U.S. dollar. Now, my problem with the U.S. dollar is the U.S. Fed dictates on what to do with the dollar based purely in their own domestic interests without any consideration whatsoever to its effect on other countries, including ours. Should the time come, Mr. Secretary, and that option is made available to us, as I told you earlier, about 23%, 22% of our ex imports are from China. But all importers, whether here in this room or outside, cannot settle any goods they buy from China utilizing RMB or Yuan. They, they can only open an LC in dollars. Whatever rice we buy from Thailand, and we will be importing, according to USDA, a little less than 3 million, the biggest ever metric tons, next year in the course of the next one year and a half. We still have to pay Thailand using dollars. In fact, to my colleagues here or businessmen, you cannot even open a letter of credit in any other currency other than the US dollar. Would that be correct, sir? Can I open a letter of credit in Thai baht if I want to buy some rice from Thailand? Can I open a letter of credit in RMB if I want to buy something from China? Is that even possible in the Philippines right now? Okay. To your knowledge, sir. I'm not quite sure. Uh, uh... It is not available, sir. Simply because we do not have enough reserves in RMB, we do not have enough reserves in baht, we do not have enough reserves in, rubo, in rupee, whatever it is we want to buy from other countries. But the principle behind BRICS is you pay us in whatever you buy from us using our currency. We pay you for whatever we buy from you using your currency. It's basically getting out of the U.S. dollar dominance of imports and exports. Um, what is the position of NEDA with respect to that? The president is going to China next year, early next year. President Xi Jinping visited Saudi Arabia, and that's precisely what he asked of from Saudi Arabia, that they settle payments with respect to Chinese exports in RMB. What if that question is asked of our president? What would be the recommendation of NEDA B? I'm not a member of the Monetary Board, Your Honor, but my 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 view is that uh, we should be open, uh, and uh, what should matter is the national interest, uh, and, and and that's it. As we advance our relationship with other countries, but if it is for our advantage to hold multiple currencies, so we should do, we should do that. And I and I don't think that um, that uh, the, the, that we can avoid uh, that possibility that there may be become an acceptable international medium of exchange. Uh, I completely yeah. I completely agree with this, sir. I hope that sense of openness, sana mahawa niyo po yung mga ibang opisyal, ibang miyembro na economic team, because I think that is where the world is headed towards in the next five years or three years, and we should be ready and open to um, that possibility, and not simply do the same things as we have done for the past more than 70 years since the advent of World War II, when this dollar-denominated international trade was actually hoisted upon us, and we've been living under that regime for more for nearly for more than half a century. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That will be all. Uh, Senator Lisa Hunteberos, you are now recognized. Salamat, Mr. Chair, at muli magandang hapon, Sec. Uh, RC. So pagkatapos nung interjection ko kanina, I just have uh, three more uh, subjects to ask you about, Sec. Una po dun sa structural transformation of the Philippine economy. Galing mismo sa inyo. In 2015, you were already talking about the structural transformation of our economy. You said that investments would drive the economy rather than consumption. You also said that the future trajectory of the Philippines should mimic that of the Thai economy, where food processing, uh, food manufacturing absorbed the unemployed workers from the rural areas. You said that seven years ago, pero hindi pa po nangyayari sa ngayon. So, aside from our lack of electricity supplies, traffic gridlocks on our roads and ports, and the detachment of tertiary education from uh, the needs of industry, will there be other things that will hinder that structural transformation you have been advocating? I, I think they're just 
to many of those now that uh, we should really uh, 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 address, uh, 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 Your Honor. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the, these huge backlogs that we have in infrastructure, uh, which has made uh, the cost of, uh, of uh, transport, for example, quite high in this country. Logistics uh, cost is very costly in this country. The uh, infrastructure with respect to power, uh, to energy, and 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 to and and also water, uh, 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 your honor. And then you have uh, um, uh, uh, problems with with so many regulations or these regulatory barriers that uh, inhibit uh, investment, not just domestic investment, but even more importantly, foreign investment. Uh, your honor, we have a lot of policies to to. to to work on um, uh, 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 policy reforms to work on to 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 uh, uh, ensure that these uh, are the policies that would uh, attract uh, uh, investors to, uh, to our country and uh, in, in, increase our uh, productivity. Uh, as you may be aware, Your Honor, uh, our hu human development is also now a a major victim of our of the. Uh, pandemic, the socioeconomic scarring that occurred uh, in the last two years uh, is so deep that uh, we really need to to to, to uh, uh, move quickly uh, uh, um, uh, address those those uh, that scarring uh, uh, so that uh, the long-term effects on the economy will be uh, minimized uh, um, so I, I, I believe that the the Philippine Development Plan that we are uh, presenting to the President on Friday, the 2023-2028 plan, addresses uh, uh, these concerns, both the short term and the medium uh, term, uh, to uh, number one, to uh, address these um, uh, sh uh, short term issues and discovering uh, including food security, access to, uh, uh, to, to uh, social protection, uh, and at the same time addressing these constraints to, uh, to uh, poverty reduction and job creation in the, in the medium term. Thank you very much, Sec, uh, Mr. Chair. And how will NEDA make itself useful in the next year or two uh, amid all these so many roadblocks? NEDA useful in removing these roadblocks, creating that policy framework, um, helping grow new flesh and blood beneath the scarring? Uh, well, we will do our part. Uh, Aaron, as you uh, may know, NEDA is uh, is the central agency that uh, coordinates the coherence of our uh, uh, policies and and uh, monitor the implementation of our programs. Uh, uh, NEDA is involved in assessing, evaluating major uh, projects, particularly infrastructure projects, and uh, the best that we can do is to improve our processes so that this. Uh, uh, so many project proposals uh, can be evaluated uh, uh, rapidly, uh, quickly. I, I we know that the, the the what the business community is saying that uh, we are so slow and uh, our processes are, uh, are are so Jurassic and 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 so this whole business of digitalizing the bureaucracy is very important to us. I, I think that will improve uh, the e efficiency of our uh, our government. Salamat, Sek. Um, sana itong uh, coordination, assessing, improving processes, even digitalizing, uh, won't be ends in themselves, pero paraan din, uh, because I think one way that NEDA can continue to be and make itself even more useful in the next years is sa ilalim po ng leadership nyo, ma-recover niya yung original mandate niya. I seem to remember that the original um, concept for NEDA was not just to churn out the dati medium term ngayon Philippine development plans every six years per administration. Pero na kayo talaga, yung NEDA talaga, ang kumbaga ka, ka-pingpong ng Office of the President to really flesh out vision uh, programs and strategies. And that's also why I mentioned earlier na gusto ko nga na yung bawat ahensya, lalo na ang katulad ng NEDA, will be very jealous of its, not just its inputs, but its voice. 
its voice in the important debates that we are um, in, in the middle of right now. So, uh, uh, sa so pangalawang uh, remaining subject ko po, sec, Mr. Chairman, yung PPP projects under the administration. Uh, when you shared your view, sec, about the administration's new policy of direct government support uh, in the financing of public-private partnerships, you seemed worried about favoritism and cronyism. So, please give us kahit couple of examples lang na mga PPP projects in the pipelines that government might directly support. And please tell us specifically how we can be assured that that government support will be just right. Sakto lang, di labis, di kulang, that it is indeed not more than what is needed to trigger private sector investments for our infrastructure needs. Uh Yes, the, um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the um, the public-private partnership uh, uh, framework of uh, uh, the Philippine government um, has um, um, provides uh, uh, safeguards uh, and also ensures that. Uh, uh, that the uh, PPP uh, that that project uh, is attractive for the private sector, while at the same time uh, safeguards the interests of uh, of the of the public sector. Um, and, and so the the vetting process for the uh, PPP uh, um, is such that uh, there are various checks and uh, there are, uh, and various uh, approval processes. Uh, there are technical. Uh, committees, and then they, are, they have the uh, cabinet level, and then the uh, all the way to the uh, NEDA board, uh, which is chaired by the president. And um, there are clear um, um, uh, metrics that are that need to be satisfied, and these metrics and and procedures are uh, based on uh, an international practices or on the best practices uh, that we find. Uh, anywhere in the world. That's why when it is a big project uh, and sophisticated like railway uh, or airport for that matter, we secure the uh, the uh, advice uh, a, an advisor uh, for a technical advisor advisor from from international uh, in the international community uh, if you don't have that expertise within the within the Philippines. Uh, so there's a, that kind of uh, Assurance, and in terms of the government support, uh, uh, the most uh, basic one is so uh, when um, uh, when the project uh, itself is not financially viable, uh, fully financially viable uh, for the proponent, private proponent, but is economically and socially. Uh, important for government, just for example, hospitals, uh, part of, if these are regional hospitals, for example, specialty hospitals, uh, then the, the government can, uh, can, uh, uh, can, can provide the, 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 the subsidy for, uh, for that. Uh, again, that subsidy is based on a careful uh, uh, assessment of the of the uh, of the project, its uh, uh, flow over time, and 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 and, and so on, and uh, uh, but for many of the other projects, especially those that are uh, uh, financially viable from the point of view of the uh, private sector, the government exposure there may be just in the uh, right of way. Uh, many of these projects, uh, the current projects. Uh, Current PPP uh, projects now are, are are or have that kind of uh, exposure by government uh, government uh, assuring the that this uh, right of way will not uh, be a, a, a right of way issue will not be a, a, a major uh, concern for the uh, uh, for the proponent um, and in such cases the government may just be the one uh, uh, buying the land or buying the property. Uh, uh, as its uh, share in that uh, uh, PPP arrangement, but there is a, a, a good enough assurance, and we are making sure that the uh, those uh, 
uh, arrangements are also transparent. Uh, we are making our websites, uh, all these uh, guidelines. Uh, just uh, two weeks ago, Your Honor, we just uh, uh, approved the, the 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 guidelines that uh, uh, will uh, the appro um, guidelines for the approval of. Uh, of projects, uh, the processes that uh, we go through uh, in the various uh, uh, decision stages of the project, uh, from the technical uh, working group to uh, to, uh, to the NEDA board approval, with specific dates and how or number of days and how long should that uh, project stay in one office? Because we don't, we want to avoid the sweet situation in the past where a project is uh, held hostage in one office and and, and stays there and un unattended. Um, um, so I'm, I'm hearing how you're going to approach um, arriving at that proper uh, balance of the government participation in the PPP projects. Uh, and hopefully, uh, not just in terms of protecting the public interest, because protecting the public investment, but also preventing yung parang uh, inaalala nyo noon when you started talking about it, yung inaalala nyo favoritism and, uh, and cronyism. So any two examples of specific examples of those PPP projects in the pipeline, maaring sa rail or sa hospital or other, other sectors? Oh, there are many now uh, airports. Um, uh, ONM and airports. Uh, of course, you have the the uh, the Bulacan uh, International Airport and uh, and even those railways that we are building. Uh, uh, Your Honor, the ONM, the operations of those may be in the form of ONM too. Uh, uh, um, so, uh, we are also um, I, I, there are also proposals for uh, create uh, for establishing more uh, regional and specialty hospitals. Uh, for example, uh, uh, UP has uh, this uh, PPP uh, proposal for uh, the setting up of a uh, at another PGH in uh, Diliman or to make uh, to make uh, uh, hospitals even more. Uh, uh, accessible, uh, particularly for, for the poor. Something to look forward to also, Sek. Salamat. So just for my last question for this afternoon, um, dun sa, buti nabanggit niyo yung railways kanina, yung huling pagsako po yung Mindanao Rail. Uh, in earlier uh, hearings, Sek, you promised me that you will study the prudence of the investment in the Mindanao Rail and also promised to keep me in the loop Kasi po, um, at the stage of detailed engineering design, the cost of the investment just for the first segment, basically from just 37 billion pesos, rose to more than uh, 70 billion pesos. And have you reviewed the cost-benefit math of this, Secretary? Uh, the burden of proof is on you to show that even as the income from the train's ridership is unchanged, this project is still a priority, even after this uh, halos doubling of the cost. Um, and this is related, finally, this is related to yung sinabi ko kanina na sana uh, never na ang NEDA magsilbing deodorant lang sa kahit aling ibang uh, ahensya. Um, this one, this yung tanong ko po sa cost-benefit math sa Mindanao Rail, it's a test of the professionalism of NEDA, uh, Secretary, Mr. Chair. We want to know if we can rely on the technocrats uh, who are part of the second Marcos presidency to defend the public interest. I, I can assure you that, uh, uh, Your Honor, uh, as um, you may know, I did not seek for this job. The president asked me to fill this job, and so if I feel that I uh, uh, that I uh, um, um, uh, the public interest is not, uh, uh, I, I I I I I don't I don't have to stay. <laughs> uh, uh, but I assure you, uh, uh, Your Honor, that we will uh, do our best as the government's. Uh, uh, and and the, and the president's uh, um, ears and uh, and um, eyes on the uh, various projects that we implement that uh, that this uh, uh, meet all the 
the criteria and particularly for net the, the basic criteria is is uh, is uh, um, the viability uh, if the project is not economically viable it should not be pursued because it's it uh, it strengthens the the pie rather than expands it uh, if the project is not sustainable, uh, then there has to be a better uh, 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 justification on why it should be supported. Uh, maybe there are uh, social considerations, maybe there are political considerations, but if it is, uh, 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 if the project is uh, presented as a, an economic project, then it has to be an economic project passing the economic, uh, economic test. And that's the call, our call at NED, that's to ensure the press to the president that the projects that we uh, submit to him for approval are properly vetted uh, and uh, evaluated. Well, I certainly hope, Sec, that you will always, in the next six years, have the president's ear. Kasi may ilang beses na rin sa nakaraan na you um, echoed to your principles kung ano yung nararamdaman nyo rin at nararanasan ng uh, ating mga mamamayan. So marami salamat, Sec, and the best of uh, luck po to you. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Risa. May, may I just add my manifestation of support for the confirmation of uh, Honorable Arsenio Balisacan as uh, Secretary of the National Economic Development Authority. He is not new to, the, to NEDA. Dati na siyang secretary nito. He is a well-respected and accomplished economist. The President needs him in his economic team. Uh, I therefore manifest my strong support for the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Honorable Arsenio Molina Balisacan as Secretary of NEDA. So, Mr. Chair, yes, ma'am. I second the motion for the confirmation of Secretary Arsenio. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I, I, before before you second the motion, I, I I support your nomination, Secretary. But I just like to make a request. Uh, when we were drafting the Public Service Act, it was very difficult to get a representative from the NEDA who really had the knowledge and the authority to make decisions. I hope that if we have something here, a hearing, you will always prioritize sending someone. Otherwise, our bills might not be as effective. That Number two, please just submit to us uh, oh, your, your basic uh, projects that you will support immediately. Marami kasi magagandang mga proyekto, pero nababara sa NEDA ang approval, kaya hindi na i-implement ka agad. Yun lamang po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Grace Po, uh, Representative uh, Pelz Biron. You're now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in the interest of time, no, uh, I would want to uh, ask this very, very important uh, uh, question, uh, Mr. Secretary. Magandang hapon po. Uh, we are all aware of the situation in the in the country today with record high inflation, devaluation of our peso, which burdens our foreign debt payments, etc., etc. And um, before you articulate the uh, Philippine Deve Development Plan uh, from 2023 until the term of President Bongbong Marcos ends, may I know, Mr. Secretary, if you have any model? Of economic development somewhere in Asia that we can perhaps adopt. Because after your 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 response, I will share with you a very phenomenal economic development of one particular country in Asia. I think the uh, um, uh, context is very very important, uh, Your Honor. Our country is so different from. Uh, our, our neighbors, but I think that there are many lessons that we can learn from uh, from our neighbors. I would like to think that Thailand is a good uh, uh, model for in some respects. Uh, Singapore is another one, but the most recent one that I really like, and I've been studying this for a while, is is Vietnam. Why Vietnam has been able to move so quickly in in uh, uh, making it making the country a, a super grade, investment grade, and everything seems to go the right way. Uh, from human capital, human development, to infrastructure, to investment, climate, uh, there, 
and, and they are late comers in the game. Uh, uh, Your Honor, they only, as you know, as you know in, in the, in, they only opened up in 1989. Now they have over, overtaken us already in terms of GDP per capita. It's really a shame. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mm. Uh, well, those these three countries are part of ASEAN, and we are all aware of how they struggled in the last 30 years. But let me share with you the economic development of Bangladesh. In 1991, 31 years ago, the poverty rate of Bangladesh was 44.7%. Almost half of the population is poor. Today, the poverty rate is 12.8%. And by the end of 2031, nine years from today, Bangladesh, one of the most, one of the poorest, if not the poorest country on earth, is now getting out of that bondage and will now be considered as an upper middle income economy. With 178 million people, like the Philippines being, well, it's the eighth most populous country in the world. Ano kaya ang sikreto nila, Mr. Secretary, na pwede natin sundin dito sa ating bansa? Mr. Secretary, before you proceed, I would like to recognize the presence of Senator Jingoy Estrada. Secretary, you may now answer. It's a topic that I really would love to talk about, Your Honor, because in the 80s and 90s, I used to go to Bangladesh to consult and actually was uh, in, in in some ways uh, a consultant of that country for a while uh, and two things that have uh, that really made a, a huge difference in Bangladesh one is their focus on agriculture the, you know Bangladesh is a flood prone country uh, uh, but uh, they they and it used to be one of the biggest importers of of food uh, but now they uh, uh, they have transformed their uh, their agriculture massively, and, and, uh, and so that's one. There's they, they they have addressed um, the, the agriculture, uh, the food security issues through very rapid development of uh, agriculture. Uh, they they focus on the right things, um, investing in irrigation, investing in in varietal development, investing in uh, in uh, inclusive finance, and that those all sort of things. Uh, the second that the second element, major owners, they they they. they they, they, they um, took advantage of what they are uh, good at, labor, and they open up their, their economy to investment in, in manufacturing, particularly initially with garments, textiles and garments. And, and now they're the biggest, uh, uh, one, at least top three biggest uh, import, for big, exporters. For, uh, yeah. for global brands, yeah, they're global, number one. Global brands, yeah. And uh, and and that's a, a, a combination of of many things. They've kept their um, their labor cost low. They've kept their competitiveness high by uh, providing this uh, uh, this uh, uh, you know, addressing those ease of doing business issues. Uh, and uh, they they open up their markets to international trade, uh, allowing their their garments and. Uh, and the manufacturing overall to, to increase, of course. And I, I must say that uh, also, the, Your Honor, that, that they, the, the, uh, Pakistan and, and India used to be very much richer uh, than, than Bangladesh, but now they've overtaken both countries in terms of GDP per capita. And if you are not, uh, if you don't work hard, how much harder? Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'll make an appeal. I'll make an uh, appeal to the Secretary. I have sessions at four. Uh, we still have uh, 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 dozens of uh, DFA officials. Uh, may we conclude the statement of uh, the secretary? And I hope I can appeal to my colleague from Iloilo. Na okay, na. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. After, uh, can I, can I, Mr. Mr. Chair, can I? I am on a SP. <laughs> 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 Mix.
Majority of people are leaders. Thank you. After uh, a lot of questioning, that was uh, answered by our nominee, Mr. Chair. I move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Mr. Arsenio Molina Baliksakan as Secretary of the National Economic and Development Authority. I so move, Mr. Chair. I second the motion. I second the motion. There is a motion to recommend the, the plenary motion. for the commission of to confirm the ad interim appointment of Mr. Arsenio Molina Balisacan as Secretary of the National Economic and Development Authority, NEDA. Is there any objection? There, there being none. none. The same is thereby approved. Mr. Chair, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn the meeting. Congratulations, Secretary Balisacan. Adjourn the meeting. Adjourn the meeting. There being none. Adjourn. Okay, adjourn. <laughs>of the Committee on Foreign Affairs of the Commission on Appointments. The first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The Honorable Officers and Members of the Committee on Foreign Affairs, Vice Chairperson, Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Vinay, Representative for Janelle G. Biron, MD, Senator Christopher Bong Go.
Senator Loren Legarda, Representative Rodante D. Marcoleta. Loyata si Marcoleta. Representative Lani Mercado Revilla. Representative Jose Gay G. Padernos. Senator Francis Tol N. Tolentino. Members, Senator Francis Chis G. Escudero. Representative Albert S. Gasataya. I'm sorry, Albert S. Garcia. Representative <laughs> Greg G. Gasataya. Senator Risa Ontiveros. Representative Oscar Oka G. Malapitan. Senator Amy R. Marcos. Senator Grace Poe. Representative Jordine Jesus M. Romualdo. Representative Manuel T. Sagarbaria. Senator Cynthia A. Villar. Ex officio members, Vice Chairperson Representative Ramon N. Guico Jr. Majority Floor Leader Representative Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villafuerte Jr. Assistant Majority Floor Leader Senator Joseph Victor G. Ejercito. Minority Floor Leader Senator Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano. Assistant Minority Floor Leader Representative Johnny T. Pimentel. The chairperson is present. Also, the chairman of the Commission on Appointments, Senate President Juan Miguel Migs F. Zubiri, is present. With uh, 18 members present in person and nobody present online, there is uh, existence of the existence of a quorum is hereby declared. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Chair, I move to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the meeting held on December 7, 2022, and consider the same as approved. There's a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting and consider the same as approved. Is there an objection? There being none, the reading of the minutes of the meeting held on December 7, 2022 is dispensed with and the same is considered approved. Esteemed members of the Commission on Appointments, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today, the Committee on Foreign Affairs will deliberate on the nominations and ad interim appointments of the following foreign service officials in the Department of Foreign Affairs, listed according to ranks and dates of complete submission of the mandatory doc documentary requirements, namely, number one, Manuel Antonio Javier Tijanqui. Permanent representative of the Republic of the Philippines to the World Trade Organization in Geneva, Switzerland, with the salary and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Class 1. Number 2, Irene Susan Barreiro Natividad, Chief of Mission Class 1 as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Federal Republic of Germany. Number 3, Bernard Lamadrid B, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Swiss Confederation with concurrent jurisdiction over the Principality of Liechtenstein with the salary and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Class 1. And they had interim appointments of Lemuel Cusi Lopez, Foreign Service Officer Class 2. Is he here? Is he here? Present online. Elizabeth Picard Ramos, for Foreign Service Officer Class 2. All right. Catherine Flores Alpay, Foreign Service Cla Officer Class 2. Okay. And Nadine Rosario Minieke Morales, Foreign Service Officer Class 2. Madam Secretary, please inform the committee on the compliance of the jurisdictional requirements and other pertinent information regarding the nominations and ad interim appointments under consideration. Mr. Chairpersons, your, Chairperson, your Honours, on various dates, your Secretariat received the nominations and ad interim appointments oh, of the seven Department of Foreign Affairs officials under consideration today. Their nominations and ad interim appointments were duly referred, respectively, on November 7 and 23, 2022, to the Committee on Foreign Affairs by the Commission, Chairperson and Senate President Juan Miguel Migs F. Zubiri, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. Likewise, Mr. Chairperson, Your Honours, the nominations and ad interim appointments under consideration were published on various dates in two newspapers of general circulation, the Manila Standard and the Manila Times, and broadcast over PTV4 pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the Rules of the Standing Committees. The, com the nominees and appointees have each complied and submitted complete mandatory documentary requirements pursuant to Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission. The Commission Secretariat has not received any opposition on record 
against any of the nominees and appointees under consideration. Mr. Chairperson, Your Honors, the Secretariat is also in receipt of letter request from DFA HRMO Executive Director Marsoli J. Melejor, dated November 12, 2022, requesting for the waiver of appearances of the Foreign Service officials who are at their respective postings and performing official functions abroad. The request is in line with the government's austerity and safety measures in connection with the COVID-19 pandemic. These officials are, however, present online in today's deliberation to respond to the queries of the committee members, if any, namely, one, Lemuel Cusi Lopez, Foreign Service Officer Class 2, two, Elizabeth Picar Ramos, Foreign Service Officer Class 2, and three, Nadine Rosario Minieke Morales, Foreign Service Officer Class 2. Mr. Chairperson, your Ambassador Manuel Antonio Javier Tihanki is also appearing online today, whose request for waiver of personal appearance was approved by the committee during its previous meeting. That is all, Mr. Chairman, your honors. Thank you, uh, Thank you uh, Secretary Myra. Before that, may I ask uh, Lem uh, Mr. Lemuel Cusi Lopez to turn on your video? Or else we will not confirm you. She's not present. She's not present. No. Is that a girl or a boy? Is she a boy or a girl? Maybe you turn on your video, please. Even Ojo is not. Uh... Are you are you with us, Mr. Lemuel Lopez? Bukang wala. Baka nag number ano. Anyway. Well, well, let's give him, Mr. Chairman. Maybe, Mr. Chairman, we can give him a few more minutes. Maybe he stepped out to use the toilet. All right. But we have others that we can interview now. Before we All recognize right. uh, our resource persons, may I just like to put on record also that we have with us the Vice Governor of the Great Province of Isabella, no other former Governor of the Province of Isabella, uh, Vice Governor Bojidi, is also here in support of his uh, nephew, the future amb uh, the ambassador. Switzerland. Okay. Thank you, uh, said President. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairperson, I move that the letter from the FAHRMO Executive Director Mersole J. Melehor dated December 12, 2022, requesting for the waiver of personal appearances with the concerned appointees for the reasons stated therein, and as reported by Secretary Villarica, be approved. I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there an objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. Madam Secretary, please administer the oath to the nominees and appointees. Ambassador Tihanki is under the same oath administered to him in the previous uh, hearing. There is no need for Ambassador Tihanki to take the oath again. Uh, Mr. Lopez, this is our last warning to you. Kindly turn on your audio because you have to take your oath. Mr. Chair, I propose that uh, since uh, Mr. Lemuel Lopez uh, is not present uh, even on audio, uh, I suggest that the nomination be deferred. Well, do we, may we find out? Uh, oh. May we find out from the DFA? Is there anyone that's a ranking official of the DFA? Can we find out where he's he's posted right now? He might be in Afghanistan, or he might be. <laughs> You know, somewhere in the desert, Azerbaijan or something. Yes. And uh, we find uh, where uh, may, may I, um, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair. Um, I, I think we, if I may suggest, uh, respectfully suggest, to be uh, extra uh, patient with uh, technical issues. Uh, he is in the Middle East, I think. Saudi. Um, I'm not sure. In the Middle East. And... Um, they, I am certain with the professionalism of our DFA, they would want to be online. I'm sure it's a technical issue. So in behalf, I don't even know uh, Mr. or Ms. Lopez, I don't know if it's a female, but I am certain that that's a technical issue. So but if we they, may give them the chance to reconnect. But uh, with the, would you respect to our Senate President Pro Tempore, hey. I'm being told by the Secretary that there has to be, he has to take his oath. He or she, I don't know, even know if it's a girl. It's a he has to take so. So let us maybe uh, forego first, for the meantime, Mr. Lemuel Lopez, until he can find a good spot, a, a better internet service, and then give him his oath later. 
before we adjourn session. If he does not respond uh, before we adjourn, we will have to defer him. Yes, okay. Okay. Fine with it. Madam Secretary. All those present and those online, please stand and raise your right hands. Those who are online, please open your microphone so that the committee will hear your responses. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings? So help you, God. Um, your honors, your honors, I, I do apologize. I have uh, oh, had uh, technical issues. I'm here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. I had to turn on my virtual private network uh, to connect my WebEx to, 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 to the hearing. I do apologize, your honors. So, what is so the, I'll give so, you a so Can you turn on your, your video, please? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. There you go. Okay. I do apologize, your honors. You it's okay. Here, we understand. We understand. Can you respond? I do. Yes. yes. Can you ask him to respond? I do. To the oath? Can, you, can you respond to the oath, please? I do. I do, your honors. I do. All right. All right. Mr. Chairman, all the nominees are appointees and appointees are now under oath. Thank you, uh, Secretary uh, Myra. Okay, may uh, I first call on uh, Ambassador Tihanki, since uh, he was deferred during the last uh, hearing, and uh, there are some questions from our colleagues here, especially Senator Risa Ontiveros. Senator Risa, you, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Ambassador will not be making an opening statement. I can proceed. Ah, uh, Ambassador you, Tihanki, do you have an opening statement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Please Thank proceed. you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Honorable Chairman, Vice Chairs, and Members of the Committee on Foreign Affairs. May I extend warm greetings from Geneva and our mission here. I thank the Chairperson and the Committee for this opportunity and welcome any questions that the Honorable Members may have about our mission's work in the WTO that I have been privileged to head over the past four years upon the kind endorsement of this committee and the consent given by the Commission on Appointments last March 21, 2018. I present myself today humbly again to the committee pursuant to the reappointment and renomination that President Marcos has accorded to me in the interest of continuing the advocacy of Philippine priorities at the WTO in Geneva. I wish to acknowledge before the committee that the accomplishments we have had here in Geneva has and has was only made possible with the sterling teamwork and interagency coordination between Manila and Geneva by the Technical Committee on WTO Matters chaired by the DTI. And of course, by the team here at the mission in Geneva composed of officers and staff from the Department of Foreign Affairs Department of Trade and Industry, and Department of Agriculture. Maraming salamat ho sa lahat ng kasama ko dito sa WTO and interagency. In recent years, amidst growing geopolitical crises and increased protectionist sentiment, questions have been raised about the relevance of the WTO and multilateralism in general. Emerging economies like the Philippines, along with our ASEAN partners, have underscored the need for stable and transparent multilateral rules, a credible dispute settlement system, and open markets in order to foster economic development and growth to the benefit of our citizens. I am pleased to report that there has been a palpable shift in mood in the past year, which coincided with the appointment of our new Director General, Dr. Angozi Okonjo Iwala in 2021. While divisions remain, WTO members were able to successfully work together and craft the Geneva package and come to a successful outcome at the 12th Ministerial Conference held just this past June of this year after two postponements due to the COVID pandemic. The cautious optimism for renewed multilateral engagement coincided as well with the unprecedented mandate received from the Filipino people by our new president and his administration. So if permitted by the Honorable Committee and the Commission, I will be most privileged and pleased to remain at the service of the Filipino people and government to champion our interests and advocacy towards a prosperous and developed Philippines. Maraming salamat ho.
Thank you, Ambassador uh, Tihanki. Senator Risa, first in line. Salamat po muli, uh, Mr. Chair, at magandang umag Magandang umaga po doon, o oh, dyan, uh, Ambassador T. Hanky. Good morning. Um, thank you, sir. So, to my first subject, yung service record as permanent representative to the WTO, uh, as the ambassador referred to in his opening statement. The World Trade Organization was established for the purpose of negotiating agreements aimed at reducing the obstacles to international trade and ensuring a fair and equitable playing field for all nations, thus contributing to economic growth and development. The balance of trade in goods is the difference between the value of exports and imports. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, our trade deficit widened to $4.82 billion in September 2022 from $3.81 billion dollars in the corresponding period last year. So it seems our country has been running an annual trade deficit due to high imports of raw materials and intermediate goods. Among the largest trade deficits were recorded with Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, Thailand, and South Korea. So my first question, uh, Mr. Ambassador, is what is our country's current balance of trade? Our current balance of trade you mean for the the past year? Yes, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, due to the pandemic, our statistics are still pending, but it is at around the same uh, rate of over a billion. Over a billion U.S. dollars, Mr. Ambassador. Yes. In deficit, Mr. Ambassador. Yes. Uh, however, as uh, as noted, um, our balance of trade is only one indicator, given also. We have also receivables coming in through our remittances from foreign workers, which of course is a very sizable amount. And of course, uh, deficits uh, vary from year to year. But it would be fair to say, Mr. Ambassador, that year on year, we've been running a deficit. And uh, based on the PSA data, uh, our deficit widened further between 2021 and 2022. Tama po? Salamat, Ambassador. So we are confirming the trade deficit. What factors contribute to our current deficit? And which countries, uh, from which countries do the bulk of our imports come? Our, our imports, of course, come from uh, our main trading partners, which is China, Europe, the United States, and of course, as pointed out by you, our energy imports from the Middle East. And of course, we have a very uh, very healthy uh, trading relationship with our ASEAN partners as well. And what factors contribute to our current deficit, this more than 1 billion uh, US dollars? Of course, we have uh, agriculture and food supplies imports, and of course, raw materials. So these are still our main imports, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, pero ano po yung factors kaya current deficit ang niraran natin year on year? The main factors, of course, would be uh, over the past year with the pandemic, there were supply chain disruptions. Mm -hmm. And of course, as we restore the supply chain, uh, and of course, also one of the major factors is, of course, the energy uh, crisis, which has resulted in a large increase in the cost of energy. And of course, the mentioned inflation that we are experiencing. So that is indeed one of the largest factors is the energy crisis due to the Ukraine-Russia uh, conflict. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Um... Well, considering the length of your tenure so far, we believe it's proper that this commission evaluate your past performance in this role before confirming your third appointment as permanent representative uh, to the WTO. Thus, we'd like to hear, even if a summary, a summary of your accomplishments in that role during your tenure, how have we utilized the trade mechanisms provided by the WTO, how have we utilized them for the benefit of our country? 
thank you, uh, Honorable Senator Risa. Of course, as reported and uh, mentioned in my opening statement, one of the efforts we have been undertaking to keep markets open and the WTO relevant during the past uh, three years and was the postponement uh, two times of our MC12. The ministerial conference at the WTO is one of the most important multilateral uh, agreements can be reached during the ministerial conference. And the deliveries we have made during this uh, positive step last June is the delivery of the fisheries subsidies agreement. The set, this became the centerpiece of the Geneva package, which is the first WTO agreement focused on environmental sustainability and will prohibit subsidies to fishing of overfish stocks, fishing on the unregulated high seas and illegal and unregulated fishing. The Philippines was constructively engaged in these negotiations over the past three, four years, and perhaps owing to this has been identified as a prospective beneficiary of a new WTO fisheries funding mechanism. This is quite important for our fisher folk. On agriculture, while members remain divided, the Philippines continues to maintain a balanced position that supports the reduction of trade distorting subsidies from developed agriculture producers, while emphasizing the need for a special safeguard mechanism and public stockholding to ensure price stability and food security which is one of the most important agenda points for the current administration. We also have been able to deliver the TRIPS waiver as part of the pandemic response. And I believe you were one of the advocates of this uh, TRIPS waiver for the Philippines to join with India and other countries to reach consensus on improving coordination for future pandemics to ensure the smooth movement of essential goods. And the WTO indeed took this milestone step last June in delivering the troops, TRIPS waiver and is considering further expanding the waiver to diagnostics and therapeutics. On environment and climate change, an, an issue quite important to the Philippines, we have been involved in, on many, in many years on this issue. And I'm also pleased to report that environmental sustainability is firmly now in the WTO's agenda, and there's real pressure for members to examine what role trade can play to help facilitate a clean energy transition. The Philippines has been participant in several joint statement initiatives, uh, among them the fo those focused on e-commerce, which is very important in the global digital transformation. We are also participant in the investment facilitation for development JSI, as well as recently the services domestic regulation for which we are undergoing domestic processes. Our participation is important because these smaller groups are creating new rules that address the most pressing of trade issues today, including making our policies more investor and business friendly. The Philippines was at the forefront of the WTO program for MISMIS or micro and small medium enterprise initiatives. And we are seeking to create new avenues where MISMIS, including women led companies, are able to take advantage of cross border and digital trade. It is important that the international trading system not be only for large corporations, but also for small businesses. On WDO uh, issues regarding dispute settlement, the Philippine Mission has also been actively involved in discussions for institutional and dispute settlement reform and advocating ways to ensure that developing countries like the Philippines continue to be better able to raise our cases and seek solutions to trade disputes. I hope that is uh, of uh, assistance in explaining what the Philippines has achieved in the lead up to MC12. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for that uh, concise but uh, rather substantive update on your uh, accomplishments in your current role, uh, spanning fisheries, the environment and climate change, agriculture, uh, the intellectual property, uh, rights, energy, uh, and the uh, 
cooperation with other countries, including uh, other developing countries and f our fellow ASEAN countries as well, O plus MSMEs and uh, dispute settlement. Earlier, we were talking also particularly about balance of trade. What is your mandate with respect to our trading relations, especially regarding our trade deficit? Given that the uh, economic team is at the forefront, actually, of uh, uh, encouraging exports and balancing trade that is in line with the economic team and the finance team. Our main role here at the WTO is involved with ensuring that the markets remain open and that the multilateral trading system is governed by fair and equitable rules. So uh, we are mainly at the forefront of monitoring trade developments and trade restrictions so that in markets uh, that are subject to increased restrictions, we are able to in dialogue with our trading partners to keep their markets open and assist our businesses in penetrating those markets. So indeed, uh, a good chunk of our work relates to new rules or new trends in international uh, eco economic situations such as in e-commerce and digital trade. So while uh, keeping our mandate to its limited extent as uh, the balance of trade is subject to the financial department of finance and NEDA, our main role in this, in this strategy is to continue to identify new markets, potential markets for the Philippines and increase the openness of markets worldwide, as well as ensure importations, needed importations to the Philippines continue to flow, such as in agriculture or raw materials, so that, that they continue to be inputs of production for our economy and enterprises. So uh, our role is really to ensure uh, a fair, balanced, and open uh, trading system. Thank you, uh, Ambassador. Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Yeah, of course, Mr. Uh, Ambassador Tihanki, may, may we request that you answer uh, briefly, concise, concise and brief? Salamat. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before yes. that, uh, uh, the Majority Leader has uh, an urgent appointment at four o'clock, and and uh, <laughs> Not time, my and he wants to be excused, so. I request the uh, Deputy Majority Floor Leader to sit beside me. That is the spirit of Christmas, Your Honors. I love it. Pabuhay ang Pilipinas. Pabuhay ang Christmas. I had to leave so you can sit with your brother. Maybe, tabi na kayo. 7 is up, sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's all right, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Ambassador, um, I'm particularly interested in what you mentioned about, uh, well, what we were talking about, balance, our balance of trade, and the, the mentions you made of agriculture and dispute settlement. Uh, it's interesting for me that you should mention those uh, this afternoon. I seem to recall a complaint we filed in 2008 about Thailand's custom valuation of Philippine cigarette exports. In 2010, the WTO decided in our favor, ruling that Thailand violated the WTO Customs Valuation Agreement, or CVA. Following this ruling, Thailand brought further new WTO inconsistent customs valuation measures against the Philippines exports and even filed criminal charges for undervaluation. In 2018, the WTO compliance panel again, a second time, ruled in our favor and found that Thailand's new customs valuation measures violated the CVA. Ambassador, what is the current status of this trade dispute? Thank you for the question. I am pleased to report that the Philippines and Thailand have continued to dialogue and entered into an agreement 
to continue dialogue towards a full resolution of this dispute. I'm also pleased to report that Philippine exports of cigarettes to Thailand have continued unhampered uh, into Thailand and our market share has been preserved. So through the increased dialogue with the Thai government, we conducted a one-year discussion with our interagencies, including the Department of Justice, to be able to respect each other's sovereignty and move forward on the cases. While it is not yet fully resolved, we have decided to establish the dialogue mechanism and it has resulted in some positive results. Just uh, last May, uh, the large fines, uh, the fines that were being imposed on affiliates of our exporters were reduced by 90%. There are still some pending individual and a lot uh, the acquittals uh, of uh, the so-called mentioned criminal matters you have mentioned have also resulted in acquittals. There is still some pending acquittals, uh, pending appeal, but that is uh, currently undergoing the judicial process, which the Philippines, of course, through our justice system also respects. So we are closely monitoring this but we are hopeful of a complete resolution and I am pleased to inform of the so far positive developments. Thank you, Ambassador. But uh, um, I, I need to ask, uh, what is our agreement? Let me start with the, the broader question. Kasi meron na tayong dalawang panalo uh, from the WTO itself. And then we went into this dialogue uh, to agree, we agreed to dialogue towards a full resolution. What is the substance, substance of the commitments made by the Philippines and Thailand uh, under this agreement to continue to dialogue? The substance is the, the, the dialogue is to ensure the full compliance with the appellate body and WTO resolutions and uh, so where there is still continuing issues uh, pending before the courts of Thailand given the independence of the uh, judicial bodies there the two governments are continuing to ensure that it will lead to a uh, compliance with the WTO mechanism so it is uh, it is aimed at resolving fully the dispute through a joint mechanism of dialogue between the two countries. Uh, Ambassador, what is our... Kasi po, it seems that there was already a process at the WTO level. May dalawang panalo na tayo doon. Now there's also a process in the Thai courts dahil kinasuhan nila tayo. So uh, we are in this... We have an agreement and we're in this dialogue process. What is our agreement with respect to this dialogue mechanism and is this mechanism uh, embodied uh, is it in black and white is it embodied in written documents kasi i, I imagine yung dalawang panalo natin sa WTO are in black and white they're in written documents uh, what, what is our agreement with respect to this dialogue mechanism and is this mechanism even embodied in written documents Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, one, uh, as background, uh, on our second win, we have, uh, the Thailand had filed an appeal. But as we well know, the appellate body of the WTO has been uh, gone dormant because of the United States uh, of a blockage of the appointment of the new appellate body members. So as of this moment, over the past three, four years, the appellate body or the appellate mechanism of the WTO has been suspended. So we are caught in a catch-22 situation where there is a pending appeal before the finality of our second win against Thailand. In the spirit of resolving uh, 
the, uh, up, the situation pending the restoration of the appellate system, uh, the two parties have agreed to do their best without prejudice to their legal rights. And so, as mentioned, uh, our trade has been coming in. Uh, positive developments have happened in the case because uh, the finality of the second win has has not reached finality. So, Ambassador, it's, sir, Ambassador, it's all right. We don't need to repeat the parts of our um, interpolation that we've already gone through. But it's all right, Ambassador. I, I'm just uh, trying to be mindful of our time on this end. So is, the, is this um, dialogue mechanism that we are agreed to, is it embodied in uh, any written documents? Yes. Uh, it's called an it's understanding on agreed procedures. Understanding on agreed procedures. So words are comprehensive. Yeah. And the words. A comprehensive settlement of the dispute. Similar the to words. Others. Comprehensive settlement of the dispute. So outside the WTO pa ito. Kasi ang understanding ko po. No, no, no. This, is, this is within the WTO. It's an official. Within the WTO. With, within and, the WTO. Given the special right. situation we are in. This was similar well, to another understanding uh, in the uh, earlier procedures when we had an understanding on how to handle the appeal process when there was still uh, an appellate body. Thank you. Well, I, I don't know how special it is, Ambassador, considering that may dalawang panalo na nga tayo sa WTO. Kundi yun, kumbaga yun ang pinaka mataas na international body on trade. In fact, you're our ambassador there uh, right now. What was the role or participation of your office in the negotiation and execution of this understanding on agreed procedures? Uh, we facilitated the discussions between the two capitals and reported to our ministers of trade uh, on both sides. And so this was uh, coordinated between, we acted as coordination between Manila and uh, Bangkok. All right. Salamat, Ambassador. So what was the rationale? behind the decision to no longer enforce the rulings in our favor rendered by the WTO's own dispute settlement system. And lalo na put, we are actually running a trade deficit with Thailand. Uh, wouldn't enforcing those rulings uh, have given us more leverage should we have decided to suspend concessions or even implement retaliatory measures? So, ano po yung rationale? hindi na lang i-enforce yung mga ruling na yon. Uh, that was the rationale what, that we have preserved uh, our right to retaliate uh, while at the same time, the right to retaliate is requiring as well the appellate body or the WTO to approve the retaliatory measures. But we were caught in a catch-22 uh, on two points. One is that the appellate body wa was suspended. And second, uh, if we retaliate, we would also be subject to uh, countermeasures or affect our imports. So at present, that is the current situation because of the suspension of the mechanism at the WTO to authorize the retaliation. It would seem to me, Ambassador, na on the strength of the two rulings alone, na in the Philippines' favor, ano, yamado na tayo. Um, the, the presence or absence of the appellate body, it seems, would not have affected the enforcement uh, of those rulings. Uh, so, uh, uh, the way the the way um, our interpolation is going, it it's seeming like we are trying to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Uh, what are Thailand's commitments under this understanding on agreed procedures? Uh, what are their com what what are, what is what are her commitments, and how do we ensure that those commitments will be honored? Uh, the agreement. Ex I will definitely. Uh, refer uh, and these questions to our in the capital instructions which we get from the interagency committee and of course 
we will arrange a briefing for you as well. Uh, as these very issues you have raised were valid uh, points being discussed, not necessarily by our mission alone, but through the committee of the interagency committee under the Department of Trade and Industry. Definitely, we will uh, put forward your questions. At the same time, the undertakings of both parties are non prejudicial to their rights, to all our rights of retaliation, and Thailand's undertaking to abide by all the rulings of the WTO. So we have those in the agreement, which is merely a dialogue mechanism. So well, at any point, if uh, the, the instructions are to retaliate, we have preserved that right. But that's well, a decision from capital. Well, I guess that would have to, that would have to remain to be seen, Ambassador, uh, in, the, in, in the text of this understanding on agreed procedures and how it would actually be operationalized. And in the event it becomes necessary, could we still have those original two decisions in our favor enforced, such as by taking retaliatory measures or even suspending concessions? Yes, Your Honor. Even despite this understanding on agreed yes, procedures? Yes, Your, yes, Your Honor. Ambassador, could you please provide this commission with a copy of that understanding on agreed procedures towards a comprehensive settlement uh, with Thailand so we can study whether or not the substance thereof is actually prejudicial to our country's trade interests? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Could I you please? Thank you, uh, Ambassador, Mr. Chair. However, um, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I need to make a motion uh, because I believe we should be furnished with a copy of this uh, understanding on agreed procedures with Thailand before further proceedings, that we should study it before further proceedings are conducted by this Honorable Commission relative to his appointment. Also, so as not to prejudice the other DFA officials who are for confirmation today, so, uh, Mr. Chair. I so move. Uh, with you. I would uh, petition, uh, yes. Honorable yes, Chair, I think yes, the Ambassador Chiaki. wants to be yes. recognized. You want to respond? Yes. Do you want to respond, Ambassador? Yeah. Honorable yes. Senator, I, uh, yes, if I may respond, since this, we are acting only under instructions and these are matters of the Department and Trade and Industry, I would uh, request uh, Senator Reese's uh, indulgence uh, and, and my assurance of a full brief for her. Uh, but I... I request that uh, I not be deferred uh, further, and I, I undertake to completely brief your office uh, with the Department of Trade. Because, uh, Mr. Uh, if if possible, only of course you you have your right to, to but uh, I do request that I have tried to the best of my ability, as I promised to you during the last confirmation hearing, to do my best during my performance here. And uh, I humbly request your indulgence, Senator. Mr. Chair, um, I hear the, the manifestation of the good ambassador. Uh, I respect his uh, request. However, we all also respect that our ambassadors are charged to uphold the national interest. And this is a very particular understanding on agreed procedures that seems, as I mentioned earlier, to be snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Dahil ito ay sumunod pagkatapos ng dalawang winning rulings for the Philippines uh, from the hands of the WTO. And it seems that it is uh, harmful to the national uh, interest. That's why I uh, made an earlier motion uh, to give the committee, the commission time to receive and study the substance of this understanding uh, before we proceed further on this right. confirmation, Mr. Chair. I Thank you, uh, Senator Riza. There is a pending motion by uh, the Honorable Senator Riza uh, to defer the uh, confirmation of Ambassador Tihanki pending the submission of the needed documents uh, before the committee. Any other, any objection? They're hearing none, the, confirma or the confirmation of Ambassador Manuel Tiahanki is hereby deferred. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Uh, next in line is uh, sec uh, Ambassador Su ano? Irene Susan by May I may I make a motion, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman? Senate President. So we take them up already in mass. All right. Anyway, we vetted out, as far as I'm concerned, we vetted out all their um, uh, their CVs. They're all in front of us. We've studied them. I personally have no question with with any one of them. As a matter of fact, I fully endorse all their confirmations, and um, uh, at the soonest possible time. Particularly, my dear friend Bernard D, who's the who's been a mayor, he's been a dear friend of of uh, of many of us, and uh, all these men and women here will do uh, justice to the Philippines, bring the face of the Philippines all over the world, and uh, we can. Uh, it's safe to say, you no, know, the sooner that we. Uh, uh, confirm them the sooner that they can bring uh, goodwill to their uh, to their countries of where they will be serving for our nation for our people thank you mr chairman thank you uh, said president congressman uh, johnny pimpton just a short manifestation uh, mr chair i'd like to manifest my support to ambassador bernard Faustino la madrid d he comes from a long line of politicians uh in fact uh at the moment, he has three cousins uh, who are members of the uh, 19th Congress, uh, Congressman IND, Congressman Paustino D, Congressman Ino D. And uh, his uncle, who is my good friend, former Governor uh, Boji D, and now Vice Governor of Sabela, he has other uh, relatives occupying uh, various uh, positions in the government. Uh, he was the son, or he is rather the son of the late Governor Benjamin D. And more than that, Mr. Chair, he is my fraternity brother in the fraternity of free and accepted Masons of the Philippines. So therefore, uh, the Masons are really uh, proud of him. Um, he has already served uh, as a public servant he, he was, when he was mayor of Kawayan. And when he was a, a mayor of Kawayan, he was one of the most outstanding mayors in the Philippines. So I certainly believe, Mr. Chair, that he would really be an asset in the Department of Foreign Affairs. So therefore, we give our 10,000 percent support to uh, Ambassador Bernard D., Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman Pimentel. Senator Nancy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a manifestation of support as a senator from the great province of Isabela. I fully support the nomination of Ambassador Bernard D. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sir Chair, Francis. Just, just, a, a, just a manifestation of support, likewise, to Ambassador Bernard D. With the added uh, job description that you will not just be an ambassador representing the country, but an ambas the first sports ambassador. Although not, that is not part of your paycheck, <laughs> because all of the governing bodies in sports starting from the Philippine, uh, the International Olympic Committee, including the World Boxing Federation, the FIBA, the FIFA, the FIDE, the Cycling Federation, Handball Federation, Gymnastics Federation, are all based in Switzerland. And as the ambassador there, you will likewise be the ambassador for sports. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Francis. Congressman Sugarbaria. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Likewise, I would like also to support the confirmation of Bernard Madrid B as ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary to the Swiss Federation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Congressman Gisataya. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, in the same vein, I'd like to manifest our support for the confirmation of Ambassador D, who was a colleague in the Nationalist People's Coalition, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Congressman, uh, our vice chairperson, Congressman Guico. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Excuse me, Congressman Biron. Yeah, thank you. Likewise, Mr. Chair, I wish to manifest my uh, support for the confirmation of uh, uh, former mayor, now Ambassador Bernard Lamadrid D, um, considering that yung uh, niyo po no? uh, is a good friend and a uh, fellow public servant. So this representation supports your confirmation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Christopher Bongo is recognized. Full support po kay uh, Ambassador Bernard uh, Faustino uh, D. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Go. 
Uh, Senator Lani Mercado Revilla. Ah, Congressman Lani. <laughs> Congresswoman Lani. Thank you very much for. <laughs> Baka ano ba ang katotoo niyan po? Delikado. I would like to express my uh, uh, my uh, support and manifestation to the to uh, Ambassador Bernard La Madrid D who uh, hails from uh, Kawayan Isabela. Uh, kababayan po siya ng aking uh, mahal na mother-in-law who's ibanag together with uh, Senator Nancy Binay. Congratulations. Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Uh, soon to be uh, Senator Lani. Congressman Aguico. Uh, this is a manifesto of support to Bernard Postino uh, La Madrid D. Uh, his father is my uh, good friend in Isabela. So, salamat. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Any other uh, uh, manifestation of support coming from our colleagues? I move to approve the other nomination, Your Honors. If uh, you can make the motion. Hi, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, brother, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Uh, the good, chairman would like to. The good one is recognized. Thank you to the chair, the better one. I know that uh, there have been a lot of support. Uh, Incoming ambassador, soon to be ambassador Bernardi, but uh, he has been a brother in the Junior, Ch Junior Chamber International Philippines. We have uh, just like uh, Kong Chikiting, we were we became both national presidents. Our path was almost the same. We both became mayors. Di ko alam kung sinusundan niya ako. Tapos kami rin ay naging T out, uh, the outstanding young men, ten outstanding young men awardee, public service. At ang nakabihag po sa amin ay pareho rin Cindy. So, kaya pareho ang aming pat and I know him for to be a very good public servant and more than that, they has international experience being a JCI um, executive vice president. No, um, He has gone around and uh, served the international committee for a long time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator JV, can, uh, Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. Chair, I move that the com committee recommend to the plenary for the confirmation, to give its consent to the combination and to confirm the other appointments of the six foreign service officials as listed in the agenda. I so move, uh, Mr. Chair. I second the motion. Again. There is a motion to, re to recommend to the plenary for the commission to give its consent to the nominations and to confirm the ad interim appointments of the following foreign service officials listed according to ranks and dates of complete submission of documentary requirements from the Department of Foreign Affairs. Number one. Irene Susan Barayo Natividad, Chief of Mission Class 1 as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the, to the Federal Republic of Germany. Number two, Bernard Lamadid D, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Swiss Confederation with concurrent jurisdiction over the Principality of Leich Liechtenstein with the salary and emoluments of a Chief of Mission Class 1. And they add interim appointments of Lemuel Cusi Lopez, Foreign Service Officer Class 2, Elizabeth Picard Ramos, Foreign Service Foreign Service Officer Class 2, Catherine Flores Alpay, Foreign Service Officer Class 2, and Nadine Rosario Minieke Morales, Foreign Service Officer Class 2. Is there any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. Congratulations. 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 Mr. Chair, there will be no other matters discussed. I now move to adjourn the meeting. Motion of the Majority Floor Leader, uh, Senator Hersito and Julie Seconde.